Okay, hold on. Oh my god. And we're here. Hello. <laughs> oh my god. I slept for so long. I'm like, why did I sleep for that long? I don't know. I was just like having some kind of interesting dream, I guess. I don't fucking know. Anyways, hi. Hello. I'm here. I'm ready for more investigations. <laughs> ah, let's fucking let's fucking go. <laughs> and probably one again. Hey, I thought I paused the damn music. Anyways, ah. What is this incredibly overpowering sweet scent? It smells like flowers. Uncle Bad, is this it? Hmm? Isn't that Detective Bad and Kay over there? It looks like she managed to escape the bailiff. No, that's not quite it. Aw, too bad. But it's so pretty. I think you're still a bit too young to be wearing that. Since you found it, I guess I can let you keep it. Thanks! I'll treasure it always. Those two seem to get along rather well. Oh, here! I've got something else for you. Yay! Thank you, Uncle Bad! Earlier, I ate one of these with gummy. Gummy? Oh, you mean gumshoe. Gummy is... <laughs> He was trying to be nice to me because I was going to get in trouble and then he got in trouble because he lied to protect me. Gummy... <gasps> I know he didn't kill Daddy! Don't cry. Faraday would be sad if he saw you crying. I'm not crying! Okay. Oh! It's the mister from before and the lady too! Don't you think it would be a good idea to go home for the time being? You're not involved in the investigation, so it's not it's it's for the best if you do. Um actually, I'm Uncle Bad's assistant. So I'm related to the investigation. Is that so, Detective Bad? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? You were just scolding us like kids to not mess up with the crime scene. And now you let this child run free. Why? People are free to investigate things outside of the actual crime scene. You also had a few things you wanted to look into. Got a problem with that? Uh -huh. I don't have a problem with that, but I am curious as to what Miss Yu was, is looking into. Uncle Bad, I'm gonna go look somewhere else now, okay? Alright, I'm counting on you. Oh, well, that's right. Hey, mister. Hmm? Yes, what is it? I know Gummy really isn't the bad guy. I mean it. So, please, find the real bad guy, okay? I won't forgive whoever did this. But in the, in the absence of the perfect place of testimony and evidence, there is no one else who could be the true culprit other than Detective Gumshoe. Hmm? She wandered off while I was pondering. The fucking... <laughs> While I was pondering, okay. Okay, Edgeworth. <laughs> okay. Come on, I don't know what to do. Okay, I need to talk to Detective Bad. Oh. oh, good thing that that fucking cup was empty. My god. It really has to be 200% at all times. <laughs> Victor Bad, what exactly was Kay searching for? A thing that concerns you, boy. Oh, and I suppose it has something to do with Kay. It does, because she's Faraday's daughter. Anyway, hurry up and get to the point. I don't have time to waste. It sounds like he'd rather be left alone. I have something I'd like to confirm with you once again. I don't have anything to say to you. 
Don't do that! Hmm, be that as it may, we still have questions that we need answers to. Now then, first of all, what is the overpowering smell that is permeating this room? Upon entering this room, I thought I was going to suffocate. It's that ultra-strong perfume you wear. You wears. She spilled some of it. I was having a bad time of it myself. I didn't think twice and opened the window. But that smell's still here. Perfume, huh? So the sweet scent in the air is perfume. Well, it's giving off quite stench. I bet it's some cheap no-name brand. She said it's a famous brand from overseas. <laughs> it's a knockoff. Yes, definitely a knockoff. <laughs> no disrespect, but she forced one of those bottles on me. Here, little girl. You can have it. Hm. I was born for a much more expensive and refined perfume. However, seeing as how you just happen to have a spare, I suppose I'll take it. <laughs> this guy's like, I don't fucking want this. I really, I really want it. I really want it. But like, I'll take it from you. Like, sure. Like, <laughs> not that I want it or anything. But like, I'll take it from you. Sure. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, you will hold on to this bottle without fail. Uh -huh. Why can't she ever be honest about her wants? <laughs> I definitely do not want it. <laughs> so now we have the perfume as you wears. Just fantastic. Is that all you wanted to talk about? If so, I'm going back to investigating. Actually, I still have a few other things I wish to inquire about. <laughs> so you were in this room the entire recess? Like I said... I made a call to the precinct to get that big lug down here. But other than that, I was waiting for the recess to end in here. At least your story is consistent. Earlier you stated that you were in this lobby with Miss Yu. Yeah, I ran into her in the hallway. She said she wanted to talk to me about something. So we came in here. Then what you're saying is that until Detective Gumshoe is arrival... <laughs> You and Miss Yu were in two different locations? Hmm, I guess I am. Interesting. Speaking of that lawyer, she seems to have a great list dislike for you. Oof. Let's see. Miss Yu is the sister of the victim of the KG-8 incident. And as I recall, Detective Bad was the lead detective on the case. I wonder if the reason for her disdain isn't simply because you failed to guard Cece. But because you were the lead detective on the case. You knew? Hm. I also know that today's trial involving the Kodopian Embassy staff member is being referred to as the second KD8 incident. <laughs> he really loves to like pretend to be smart. I love these parts because they give Edgeworth so much more personality and you can like see where like where he like stemmed from and it's amazing i love it now then detective i believe it's time you were honest with me and told me the truth behind your relationship with miss you and mr faraday and the kg8 incident if you already know that much i guess it'd be all right to tell you now then i'd like to ask you a few questions about the kg8 incident and i would like to take a sip of water Not exactly a happy story. Other than the people who were directly involved, you two will be the first to hear what I'm about to tell. The honest truth behind the KG8 incident. It was a lollipop. <laughs> this entire time we were like made to believe that he just like has a <laughs> Edgeworth lore the game. <laughs> Pretty much though, like Pretty much. <laughs> For a day, you and I. As you already know, we three were involved with the KG-8 incident. For a day and I, we were originally on the trail of a smuggling ring. You mean the smuggling case involving one of the Amano group's secretaries? Hmm. That trial was just a front. A facade? Yeah. But the case became tainted. 
or because the witness who was going to testify about the Amano group's ties to the, to the smuggling ring, CCU, was killed. And what became of the secretary who was arrested? His name was Colin Devere. Oh, he was a secretary, not the director. Sorry. Obviously, Ernest uh, Amano is the director. To be honest, the guy didn't know a thing about the smuggling ring. But he confessed to knowing about it anyway. Devore was probably being intimidated by the big boss man. Just another scapegoat. The boss man of the Amano group. He can't seriously mean Mr. Ernest Amano. That can't be right. It's probably just Detective Bad's personal hypothesis. What is he trying to do suspecting Mr. Amano of being involved with smuggling? I suppose it would have been quite difficult to secure an acquittal after he confessed. But the man who killed CCU, Manny Cochin, was a completely different person. But since he's already been acquitted once of her murder, Mr. Faraday, how could you have let him go? If I remember correctly, I heard that Mr. Faraday had an important piece of evidence stolen from him. That wasn't Faraday's fault. It was mine. I wasn't vigilant enough. Faraday, Cece, I was supposed to protect them both. Monsieur did mention that as well. About how Detective Bad was supposed to guard her sister. But even I, who was supposed to protect them, fell into their trap. What kind of a trap? Hmm. <laughs> the holes in this jacket are a testament to that trap. You mean, you were fired upon? Y you were shot at, at many times in one gunfight? No. Only about half of these are from that case. But, the reason I continue to wear this jacket is to remind myself of the lessons I learned from the KG-8 incident. I see. I couldn't protect CZU, and the suspect was not was found not guilty. We had hit a brick wall, as far as the law was concerned. And that's when she came to the courtroom, the victim's sister. That's when I first met Callisto Yu. About when you first met Miss Yu, it was on the day the verdict of the KG-8 incident was handed down, was it not? Yes, Faraday and I, we apologized to her from the bottom of our hearts. It was all we could do, but just saying you're sorry won't bring my sister back, she said. And then she gave me a hard slap across the face. Well, she certainly had a lot of self-control to stop at just a slap. If it was me... Not even a hundred lashes would have been punishment enough. I suppose not. You said it herself. That she never wanted to see either of us ever again. But after that, you've seen her many times over, correct? Yeah, Faraday and I, even after the KG-8 incident had come to a close. We continued to hunt down the smuggling ring and got involved in a variety of cases. But, it was no use. We cracked so many different cases. But the result was always the same. We couldn't find the real mastermind behind the ring. Is the ring really that big? It was in the pursuit of the ring that we met you once again. It was during another trial related to the smuggling ring. Faraday was the prosecutor, and I, as the lead detective, took to the witness stand. You, she appeared out of the blue as the defense attorney. Her client was related to the smuggling ring, and she was defending them? Yeah. You was pursuing the ring as best as she could as a lawyer. I think she defended well at this time, for the same reason. Come to think of it, Miss Yu did say something to the same effect. I have my own agenda. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth, I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to, to Rel was to be his lawyer. I had no intention... 
god, reading this is so awful because it goes so slow sometimes. So I'm like, I had no intention of covering for him ever. Yes. <laughs> so don't you dare suggest I was going to. Huh. It doesn't matter what her reason is. Helping a criminal is just despicable. You're so naive, little girl. I could have stolen this lollipop from you. That's how naive you are. Uh, how dare you insult the daughter of a Von Karma? Just like us, you felt that she had hit the limit of what the law could do. That's all. The law is merely a tool. There is no limit to it. Only the skill of the craftsman. You too are still too young. But one day you'll know what I mean. But enough sidetracking. What matters is that we met you again in pursuit of the smuggling ring. That's all. So what was your relation to Mr. Faraday? You even seem to know Kay fairly well. I met him when he was a rookie prosecutor. I've known him ever since. And Kay, I've known her since the day she was born. Faraday and I, we cracked quite a few cases together. <laughs> Everything gets a backstory for sure. <laughs> hmm. You two seem to have made no progress at all in the Atagarasu case. Did we touch a nerve? Hmm. <laughs> I only have one thing to say to you. No one knew more about the Atakarasu than me and Faraday. That's why I was called upon to testify in today's trial. To prove that Vel was not the real Yatakarasu. Which I would have done if he hadn't turned around and accused Faraday. After the accusation, I was asked to testify, but this time, to prove or disprove the accusation. But I guess I won't be doing that either. I sense that there is more to that statement than meets the eye. Perhaps a bit more digging into the Yatagarasu is what's necessary. You claim to know much about the Yatagarasu. Would you care to share what you know with me? Hmm. What you two should be looking for right now is proof of the murderer's intent towards Faraday and Rel. I agree. Which is exactly why I'm asking you about the Yatagarasu. What? The KG-8 incident and the second KG-8 KG-8 in incident with the two dudes who were that were both accused of being the Atagarasu. Hmm. They sure were. But also, who calls themselves the Atagarasu nowadays? Both of these cases are tied to the smuggling ring. And in both of these cases, the witness who was to testify about the ring was murdered. However, there is one point in which they differ. And that is the presence or absence of the great thief Yatagarasu. Mr. Val claimed to be the Yatagarasu. However, in the middle of the trial, he suddenly declared Mr. Faraday to be the real Yatagarasu. And during the recess, they were both killed. Don't you find that to be the least bit odd? Miles Edgeworth, stop beating around the bush and just spit it out already! I believe that there must be some reason that the two men suspected of being in the Atagarasu were both killed at the same time. <laughs> oh, look, you, you have the same brain as Edgeworth. <laughs> you share a brain. A reason, huh? And so, in order to catch Mr. Faraday's and Mr. Bell's cold-blooded killer, we are so in sync. <laughs> I feel that I need to learn as much as I can about the Atagarasu. But you share you share a brain with Edgeworth and I share a brain with Phoenix, obviously, because <laughs> if we will help you solve this case. And I'll tell you. I'll tell you the reason why we've never caught the Yatagarasu. What was that sudden outburst for? You almost made me whip you by accident! Oh, we have two halves of a whole idiot. Oh hell yeah! Let's fucking go. My ears don't show up properly. There we go, that's better. <laughs> it's still accident it's still accidentally with me anyway. There are three main reasons why the Atagarasu will always be one step ahead. First, 
but Yatagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. Second, Yatagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. Third, the Yatagarasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind, ever. I see. So those are the Yatagarasu's special traits. Sounds like an incredibly elusive thief. The Yatagarasu has never been caught on tape, never tries to draw anyone's attention, and would never do something as slow brow as commit murder. That's how I knew that Rel wasn't the real Yatagarasu right away. But you can't use that sort of logic on its own to prove that he wasn't. Hmm. Listen, little girl. I'm not done talking yet. Uh huh. What's different about this time was that evidence related to the smuggling ring it was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kodopian embassy, the Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu sent the evidence? Until now, the Yatagarasu would always publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I, and a select few others knew about. In that case, how can you be so sure that it was the Yatagarasu who sent it? It's easy. A special card that only the Yatagarasu uses was attached. That's how I can be so sure. And just what sort of card is it? Here, take a look at this article. Whenever the Yatagarasu wants to publicize something, a white card is sent along with the stolen information. But when we questioned Rel about what was sent along with the white card, Rel had no idea what it was. Ah, and that's how Detective Bad knew that Mr. Rel was a phony. Thank you very much. I have a much better understanding of the Yatagarasu now. Hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? His Honor would like to transfer the evidence from today's trial over to you. So if you could please head over to the courtroom, I'd be much... It'd be much appreciated, sir. Understood. I'll be there shortly. Detective Bad, what does the law mean to you? Finding the answer to that question is the only reason I'm still alive. I became a prosecutor to find the answer to that question myself. To play a part in ensuring that all criminals everywhere are found guilty. Oh, it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh. It appears that his honor is still a bit dispirited. For the first time today, I experienced what it's like to stand at the witness stand. Uh, I now have a greater appreciation for just how hard it is to give testimony. Well, there's no reason for you to be all depressed about it, Your Honor. As a judge, no one expects you to think about anything other than the verdict. Francisca, there is no need to further depress His Honor. But I'm not trying to, Miles. Your Honor. Eh? Your Honor, I've come to collect the evidence that was to be transferred to me. He. Your Honor, the evidence. Hi. Your Honor! Oh! You! Yes, can I help you? I'd like to collect the evidence now, sir. Your Honor, do you think you can stay focused long enough to at least do your job? Y yes, I'm sorry. I, mean, I would expect that the defense attorney has yet to arrive. She's busy with the investigation. So let's keep this brief, shall we? Very well. In that case, please confirm that all the pieces of evidence are present. Furthermore, the evidence that was used in the murders of Mr. Faraday and Ms. Arell are also included, so please go ahead and use them in your investigation into their case. Understood, Your Honor. Uh, why, why am I always, like, just so... So, what's, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Huh. The pieces of evidence that were used in the murder of these, those two men. This could be a very good chance for me to get new leads regarding their case. Maybe even something that will finally lead me to the truth. 
I've placed all the evidence over at the prosecutor's bench for you. I see. Thank you very much. I'm going to confirm that, that they are all accounted for. This is the evidence related to today's Kudopian embassy trial from Mr. Faraday's bag. You mean the evidence bag that was on the table in lobby number two, right? Yes. <laughs> Finally, we can now take a look at the evidence itself and not just data, ab data about them. Let's be sure to thoroughly examine them while we have the time. Agreed. I want to take a good look at all of the evidence from the embassy murder too. Why is that? Because I still don't fully understand what today's trial was about. <laughs> don't point your crop at me just because you don't know some don't know something. Ugh. And don't you try to order me around just because the park chose you today. I see someone is still sore about not being picked by Mr. Von Karma. It's also real to see the knife up close. So we have the knife, the gun, an envelope. What's this organizer doing here? Oh, that's right. I completely forgot to tell you. About what, Your Honor? They found Mr. Faraday's personal organizer inside that evidence bag of his. Detective Bad requested it be passed along to you. He said it would help the investigation. Detective Bad said that. What a strange stroke of luck. Well, never look a gift horse in the mouth. We might as well flip through it, too. I won't rest. Okay, cool. It's the knife that we used to kill Mr. Faraday. Who would have thought that such a beautiful piece of art could be used for such a cruel act? It's never crossed your mind that you were... that you used your writing crop for the wrong purpose? It is a writing crop, so for sure. Francisca is horse, horse girl. Never look gift evidence. <laughs> This gun, it was originally used to kill the Kodopian embassy staff member. When the crime was reported, the responding police found Mr. Bell still holding it, which led to his immediate arrest. And then, this gun took the original shooter's life. How ironic. Indeed. There doesn't seem to be anything else we can learn from this piece of evidence. What about this? Mr. Faraday's organizer. It appears he was in the habit of using it. It looks like he wrote his, his strategy for getting Mr. Bell convicted down in here. I've collected the evidence I need to prove that Rel was the killer. Between the handgun Rel had on him when he was arrested and the surveillance tape, I should be able to prove that he was the one. It appears that Mr. Faraday honestly believed that Mr. Rel was the killer in the case. The sound of his handgun going off was recorded on, with superb quality on the surveillance video. I also have evidence that I can use to prove that Rel is not the real Yatagarasu. And it also appears that he had proof that Mr. Rel was not the Yatagarasu. No matter how he may try to play it, as long as I have the Yatagarasu's key, I can prove he's a phony. If I present it to him in court, I should clear everything up. Hmm, and he apparently also had a very definitive piece of evidence. It's been a long battle, I hope that this will finally bring it to an end. As I believe that Mr. Faraday was well prepared. To discredit any claim Mr. Rel may have made about being the real Yatagarasu. And he had a way to prove that Mr. Rel was the guilty party in the embassy murder. This organizer is a clue straight from Mr. Faraday. I'll have to take my time and give it a thorough read later. Look! There's a picture stuck between these pages here. It appears to be... a key. And a rather ornate one at that. Let's look at the design on the handle. The craftsmanship is superb. Could this be the Yatagarasu's key that Mr. Faraday mentioned in his organizer? The Yatagarasu's... Key? Detective Bad said something earlier. What's different about this time was that the evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kodopian embassy, the Atagarasu. A tasty snack! <laughs> who are you, Maya? <laughs> the Atagarasu sent the evidence. Until now, the Atagarasu would always publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time 
was something only Faraday and I, and a select few others knew about. Mr. F Mr. Faraday must have tr been trying to keep this secret key safe. As a prosecutor, I'm both a yet to get a sue and smuggling in cases. That's to be expected. Hmm. That's odd. What is it? So Faraday didn't mention anything about a knife in his organizer. That certainly is odd. <laughs> Our flashbacks from like five minutes ago were really necessary. <laughs> I mean, I forget things all the time. But yeah, it's a bit it's a bit over the top sometimes. <laughs> The weapon that was used to kill the Kodopian Embassy staff member was the gun. But if that's the case... Then where did the knife that was used to murder Mr. Faraday come from? I isn't it obvious? It was brought into the courthouse by Mr. Rell. That's the only logical conclusion, right? No, because it's not that easy to smuggle a weapon like that in here. Every person who enters the courthouse doors is checked thoroughly for contraband. Furthermore, the suspect was handcuffed making it impossible for him to bring a knife as large as this inside. In that case, how do you suppose this knife ended up inside the courthouse? I need to think carefully here. There is nothing related to the knife written anywhere in Mr. Faraday's organizer. However, it is a fact that this knife came from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. Conversely, there is one item listed in Mr. Faraday's organizer that no one has claimed to have seen today. So in order to solve this mystery, I believe I will need to take another good look at the evidence. Miles Edgeworth, can I take the fact that you have yet to answer me, to mean that you don't have an answer for me? Actually, I do know the answer, Francisca. What? Then what is it? One of the pieces of evidence we've been holding has been hiding a secret of its own. And it was through this piece of evidence that the knife was brought into the courthouse. Uh, it's the key. This is Yatagarasu's key, Mr. Faraday mentions in his organizer. This is how the knife was brought into the courthouse. You're not making any sense, Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> you just need to look a bit closer, Francisca, to see what I mean. The color and ornament ornamentation of the key's handle remind you of something? They do remind me of the knife. Very good. Both the Atagurus's key in this photo and the murderer's knife have this very unique design in their handles. Furthermore, even though Mr. Faraday mentions the Atagurus's key, the only object we found at the crime scene was the knife. You don't seriously mean to say... It appears that you've finally caught up. And yes, I do mean to say that these two pieces are in fact one and the same. But that's impossible! Even if that is what you believe, we should still investigate this possibility. Uh -huh. Now then, let us examine this knife in a little more detail. Ah, uh, what? I can't believe it turned into a key! To think there was such a trick to this thing! So the weapon used to kill Mr. Faraday is actually the key the Atagarasu stole. This piece of information is more critical than anything we've learned up until now. Frankly, I'm shocked! Mr. Faraday only mentioned the key aspect of this piece of evidence in this organizer. It's possible that even he had no idea the key was hiding a knife blade inside. If that's true, then only someone who knew about the key to knife trick could have killed Mr. Faraday. Even among law enforcement, this key was top secret. We're looking for someone who knew more about the key than even Mr. Faraday. Meaning that the only person it could be is the one who sent the key in the first place. The great thief Yatagarasu. Then maybe Mr. Rell really was the Yatagarasu. And he was the one who killed Mr. Faraday. Isn't that one possible scenario? No, not really, especially since Mr. Faraday was absolutely convinced that Mr. Vell was not the Atagatasu. Besides, as Detective Bad said earlier, 
but when we questioned Rel about what was sent along with the, the white card, Rel had no idea what it was. I see. All right then. I guess the person who knows the trick behind this key is someone else, and that person is the real Yatagarasu. Yes, they do. <laughs> hmm, it seems that this key is truly the key to solving this case. I took a quick look through these documents before the trial started. Well, I wasn't afforded the opportunity to skim it. Hmm, I suppose I should explain it to you then. Yes, you should. Perfectly, and in its entirety, if you please. On the night of Sep September 8th, an embassy staff member was killed in front of the embassy. The staff member died of shock due to being shot in the heart. His name was Dead Man. <laughs> Mac Rell was brought in that night as a suspect and thoroughly questioned. Because the murder weapon was found on him, for which he was arrested on the spot. A simpleton of a man. That's what he was. Hmm. Perhaps he was. For the weapon wasn't the only incriminating evidence we've ha we had. Mr. Rell was caught in the act on film by a security camera. He was an even bigger simpleton than I thought. I can't believe he didn't notice, notice a security camera. The Kodopian Embassy security system is supposedly very well designed. He may have simply not been aware that there was a camera in the area. So, have you seen the contents of the video for yourself? Yes, the surveillance video the security camera took was played during the trial by Mr. Faraday. You can clearly identify Mr. Rell on it, even the sound of the gunshot was crystal clear. So the footage included sound, huh? I don't think I'd ever want to see the moment of someone's death in real life. Me neither. That's odd. A short one piece of evidence. And the piece that's missing is the surveillance video that was played in court. The surveillance video? How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? The video showing the moment in which Mr. Rell committed the murder. Where could it have gone indeed? Are you done with your inspection of the evidence? Yes, I'm finished. However, Your Honor, I am missing a single piece of prosecutorial evidence. Your Honor, were you derelict in your duties? What? No, I dare not lick my duties. What do you take me for? Where did it come from? Where did it go? Listen, I make that joke so many times! <laughs> no, Your Honor. The most important piece of evidence in today's trial. The surveillance video is not amongst the evidence you laid out for me. Hmm. But I brought Mr. Faraday's whole bag with me from the crime scene. Maybe the tape is still somewhere at the crime scene. There's something wrong here. Something about this missing piece of evidence. It would appear that for me to find the answers I seek, they will have to pay another visit to the scene of the crime. Defendant lobby number two. <laughs> hmm. This is Detective Bad, but who is he with? I've never seen that officer before. Oh, that music can only mean one thing. So, did you find it? Not yet, and I've looked everywhere. I see. Well then, please continue with the search. Understood. We'll continue the search. Heh. <laughs> so you're the one running the show. Prosecutors like you shouldn't be allowed at crime scenes. Dare you? Just who do you think you are? But what's that all about? And who was that man just now? Whoever he was, I've never seen a more impudent officer in my life. So you even know that we're standing right here behind him? I know you're standing right behind me. What do you want, kids? It looks like you were paying attention after all. 
Of course I was. I have eyes in the back of my head. Ah, so that mirror isn't for vanity's sake. It's for him to keep an eye out on who or what is behind him at all times. So tell me, Detective Bad, who was that rude man just now? The guy came here from the Republic of Zheng Fa to study. He's Agent Lang. He's trying everything he can to revive the lost honor of his family. He's traveling the world to study different philosophies of attainment from scratch. They're visiting various police departments around the world. He has a lot of dedication. Everything really is connected. God, wait until the fucking next game. It's insanity. Oh my god. Still just a rookie cop, but I sense a strong grudge of some sort from him. The guy's more useful than Gumshoe. Even if he is rude. Well, he sure has a lot of guts to come to this country and give prosecutors a hard time. I agree. However, I can think of one young lady that statement also applies to. <laughs> Edgeworth was so much more fun, like, when he was younger. Like, damn, what happened? Like, this is after the childhood trauma. <laughs> he just, like, became, like, really cynical. He isn't quite there yet. He's just, like, Fong Karma Jr. right now, but, like... <laughs> Anyway, what was that the agent looking for, Detective Bad? Well, to be fair, they just kind of ran into... Agent Long here, so... It would make sense why they wouldn't know each other. What's the agent looking for, Detective Bad? Earlier, that little girl was poking around in lobby number one as well. Like I said before, it's got nothing to do with the two of you. Hmm. I highly doubt that it has nothing to do with me. Hmm. Fine. If this is the game I must play, then I will take this opportunity. To draw up what he's been hiding and what happened in this room straight from him. Okay. Earlier, you were in lobby number one, and now you're here in lobby number two. You are quite the busy man, Detective Bad. Multiple returns to a crime scene brings about success. That's what we detectives say. I see. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I asked you about what happened again, right? Correct, I mean? I don't have anything left to say to you, boy. Mm -hmm. Boy? You'll see. I will draw my answer from you, one way or another. Would it kill you to help us even a tiny bit on our investigation? Gave Faraday's notebook to the judge earlier. That's help enough, don't you think? Uh -huh. Please, we are asking you for just a bit more of your cooperation. Don't push me, kid. I'd like to ask once again about what happened around here at the time of the crime. I refuse to answer. Any more investigating you do would be a waste of time. Besides, how am I supposed to answer questions about things I don't know about? Things you don't know about? But aren't you supposed to know everything? You should. Wait, is it possible? Maybe he doesn't know that trick behind that piece of evidence. I should try showing it to him. It may prove to be the key to getting some answers from Detective Bad. Oops, wrong button. Here we go, present. Detective Bad. Do you know of the existence of the item in this photograph? Hmm. Of course I did. It's my job to know everything related to the Atagara suitcase. In that case, let me ask you something. Did you know that the knife that killed Mr. Faraday and this Atagara key are one and the same? What? That's impossible. It looks like he didn't know after all. This piece of evidence, which we call the Atagara key, is actually a well-camouflaged knife. 
Mr. Faraday was planning to use this Yatagarasu's key to prove that Mr. Rell was not the real Yatagarasu. Isn't that correct? I guess so. However, Mr. Faraday had no idea that it was in fact a knife. Yeah, I have to admit, neither one of us knew that fact. And if neither of us knew, then no one in law enforcement knew either. How did we miss something as big as this? I noticed that since a little while ago, you appear to be searching for something. I presume that this key is what you were searching for. Yeah, that's right. And why were you searching for it? Because I promised Faraday, I promised that I'd protect that key with my life. But after he was killed, the key disappeared from Faraday's evidence bag. Who would have thought that the key is what took Faraday's life? Detective Bad. So that we may find the truth, please testify for me once more. Alright. But it doesn't matter how many times I tell you about what happened. Nothing will change. Detective Bad, I ask that you please testify once more. About what happened in lobby number two and what you, you, what you experienced in lobby number one. My answer is still the same. This is the last time I'm going to do this. That's fine, because I only need one last time to clear everything up and find the truth behind this case. I was in lobby number one, talking with you. Not with you, but with you. What's her name again? Uh, Callisto you. Not you, you, but Callisto you. <laughs> You were talking about some trivial things. I heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to reconvene. When we heard it, you and I immediately dashed out into the hallway together. Again, not you, you, but... but. <laughs> you and I, I wasn't there. No, not you. I mean Callisto. You and I immediately, immediately dashed out into the hallway together. I saw Gumshoe goofing around there, and, well, and then we all ran into lobby number two. It sounds like the exact same story he told us before. Indeed. However, I feel that we have yet to draw out all the information that we can. Also, I... Ah, oh, my, my, my curtains died. I just left them on because there was a little battery left. Anyways, I forgot to turn on my light in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, pink. There we go. <laughs> Not that it actually makes any difference, but... <laughs> However, I feel that we have yet to draw out all the information that we can. What happened? Oh. I was in lobby number one. Okay, I already did this. Press statement three. Cool. Until you heard the gunshot, did you notice anything else that was out of the ordinary? I didn't hear any other strange sounds until that gunshot. The gunshot Detective Bad heard was really the one from the murder. That would give that other piece of evidence an entirely different meaning. I ask you please amend your testimony with that statement just now. Sure. Didn't hear any of the other strange sounds until that gunshot, but what about the balloon? Stick to bad. Does this balloon fragment remind you of anything? It's the same color as the one Kay was holding. Oh, so you knew all about that girl's balloon? Yeah, I was sitting with her up in the gallery. During the recess, just before we split up, I filled that balloon up for her. Well, as you may already surmised, may have already surmised, this piece did indeed come from Kay's balloon. So, what about the balloon? I wonder if you might remember hearing this balloon pop at some point. What are you getting at? Hmm. This fragment was found in the hallway, right in front of lobby number two. 
Furthermore, it was the sound of this balloon popping that the judge mistook as a gunshot. Oh? The sound that the judge heard was not actually a gunshot, huh? On top of that, his honor said that he heard the balloon pop about 20 minutes before the trial was to reconvene. Yes, which means that his honor heard the balloon pop in the hallway. When you were in lobby number one, Detective Bad. And if you were in lobby number one at the time, you were close enough that you should have heard the balloon popping as well. So? Don't give me a so! We just proved that there is a flaw in your testimony. The crackling of the truth is louder than the sound of your sweet naivete cracking. Since you kids don't seem to know, let me fill you in on something. Do you ever stop to think why the doors and walls of this place seem so rugged? It's because they were designed to keep secrets from being leaked. What is that supposed to mean? The doors and walls are super thick. The window panes are double layered. To top it all off, even the curtains are made of a special sound absorbing material. Then you mean... Since I was shut up inside lobby number one, there was no way I could have heard that sound. N no Nark! <laughs> I knew that's what he was going to say. Then that means that Scruffface's testimony is completely useless! Wait, this way. Edgy's noises. <laughs> If the rooms are soundproof, then of course he wouldn't hear any sign of a struggle. <laughs> That's also why it's only natural that I didn't hear the balloon popping. Now do you get it, kids? Miles, I thought we were supposed to be the ones finding flaws in his logic. Not the other way around. The other way around? It's not possible to hear the sound of a balloon popping if one were in lobby number one. However, if we examine the situation in reverse, the person standing in the hallway should not be able to hear the real gunshot either. And yet Detective Gumshoe claims to have heard it while he was standing in the hallway. Detective Bad, if that is the case, how exactly did you hear the gunshot? <laughs> so you have the same brain? <laughs> What do you mean, how? I just did. Hmm, it would appear that you have yet to realize the contradic contradiction in your own words. Oh, how so? If the rooms are, sound are as soundproof as you say they are, then how did the sound of the gunshot enter your ears? I see what you mean. I guess I'm more out of it from Faraday's murder than I had thought. Which means what exactly, Miles? In the end, what does it all bo boil down to? It boils down to this. There must be a reason as to how Detective Bad and Gumshoe heard a gunshot they theoretically couldn't have. It looks like we need to examine the state of the crime scene again, huh? The state of the crime scene? Wait, can it be? It's an ultra-strong perfume you, you wears. She spilled some of it. Whoa! Way too noisy. The surveillance video. How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? I see. It's simply not possible for the killer to have escaped through bar barred, barred, <laughs> barred windows. And yet, the fragrance of the perfume managed to escape from defendant lobby number one. Of course, incorporeal things can move freely through these open barred windows. Now then, what else besides a smell can go up both in and out of an open barred window? The answer is... Sound! So no matter how careful the killer was, if the windows were open, the jig would be up. 
And since the windows in both defendant lobby number one and the hallway were open, that explains how the sound of a gunshot could be heard in both locations. You get it now? The missing piece of evidence is a video that shows the moment in which Mr. Vell killed the embassy staff member. The sound of the gunshot left quite an impression on me when it was played during the trial. The video should have been returned to Mr. Faraday's evidence bag for, for the recess and brought back here. If it appeared, if it disappeared after that time, then it's possible that the tape is still here in this room. Eureka! The evidence that the missing evidence the evidence that the missing evidence created for me is the gunshot that no one should have been able to hear in the first place. Miles, what have you been thinking about? Stop wasting time thinking, and let's start looking again. It's not a waste of time to think, for I have figured out where we should look. And where would that be? I believe we should examine the television. TV? Well, you kids have fun. Go ahead and examine whatever you like. It's a video player. And there seems to be a videotape inside. Ugh. It looks like it. The tape must have stopped on its own when it reached the end. This tape? Could it not be the missing surveillance tape? I suppose, but... Think too bad. Would it be alright if with you if we verify the contents of this video? Sure, knock yourself out. Alright, then let's rewind this and see what we have. If I remember correctly, the footage of Rel killing the embassy staff member should be at about the 30 minute mark from the start of the tape. Understood. This should be about right. Now then, let's see. This is... This is the footage of Mr. Rell shooting the embassy staff member. I knew it. The missing piece of evidence, the surveillance video, was here all along. The sound. What's the meaning of this? It appears that Detective Bad has figured out the true source of the gunshot he heard. With this, I think we can figure out the trick behind this double murder. <laughs> do you mean that you figured it all out then? Yes, all I have to do now is show what the gunshot detective detectives bad and gumshoe heard was and through where they and through where they heard it from. Mm, fine. In that case, show me what you've deduced. I need to show what the gunshot detectives bad and gumshoe heard was and through where they heard it from. Yes, let's go... Surveillance video. If the door and windows of the crime scene, namely this room that we're in, were closed, the killer could have used the gun and no one would have been, no been the wiser. That's true. This courthouse does seem to be well designed for such a thing, as it were. However, what happened in reality was... Detective Gumshoe, Detective Bad, and Miss Yu, all three of them heard the gunshot. Well... The windows in lobby number one, number two, and the hallway were open. So naturally, the people in those locations could hear it. Ah, but then, why would the criminal open the window in the first place? To allow the gunshot to be heard, I suppose. Correct. That's the only logical conclusion we can draw from this. But why was that necessary in the first place? I want a real answer, Miles. I demand satisfaction. Very well. I believe that the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of a certain fact. What was it that the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of? When the crime took place, the killer wanted to fabricate the time of death to their precise wishes. And they used the gunshot in the surveillance video to do so. So that's why the tape was left running. You mean the gunshot I heard was from this video? Yes, which means that the murders really occurred at an earlier time than we thought. It must have been during the recess, but before Detective Gumshoe was on guard duty. 
someone who has no alibi for that time period, and plan this crime out in advance. That person is the real killer. Stradgeworth. Yes, what is it? Miss Yu was asking for you. She is in the courtroom. She says that she's identified the murderer, but that she wants to clarify something. Looks like Miss Yu is still investigating something. Understood. Please tell her that I will be right over. I'll come along. I want to hear what she has to say. It would appear that the time has come to uncover the truth. Yeehaw, here we go, fucking last, last part of this episode. Yeah, that was one chapter. It took me one hour. So, well, almost one hour, I guess. Okay, what are you doing here? Oh, hello, mister. I am still investigating. But the object you're looking for is already... Okay, don't mind him. Please continue with your investigation. Okay, you got it. Detective Bad, haven't we already found what you were looking for? It means I can keep her in the dark just a little longer. Any little task will do. Oh, you're more sympathetic than I thought. Hmm. I've been waiting for you, Edgeworth. I was even waiting for the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest. The moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest. Wasn't that when we placed Detective Gumshoe under arrest? I think we more than solved this case already. <laughs> Don't you? Well, see, it all depends on whether or not your logic holds. Oh, I see. We even have a viewer in the gallery. And why, even Mr. Bat is here. A, a viewer in the gallery? Oh, no, a gallery. Why, why would it give her American accent for some reason? I don't know. I'm probably just a bystander. I have a duty to see this case through to the end. No matter how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, I know, they're just like... <laughs> uh... No, we need to do this as professionals, alright? We need to go to our stance. <laughs> oh, is that right? Anyway... I thought you might like to hear what I've slaved away to find out. I've taken statements on every single person's movements. During the time when our suspect was in the hallway. I also confirmed that there is no possible route of escape from lobby number two. Therefore, the killer must without a doubt be Detective Gumshoe. And that's all you have? Yeah, that's all there is to my conclusion in this case. Sorry, but I beg to differ. In a trial, there is always time for a rebuttal. And we are standing in a court, court of law. It'd be more than appropriate to follow the rules of court in this case, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely like a rookie to think such a thing. But all right, I'll play along and give you a proper testimony. If my logic is correct, then I've already won. All I have to do now is to prove it by showing who the real killer is. Everyone says the suspect has an alibi from for when the gun went off. Furthermore, the areas around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? I also confirmed that there is no possible escape route from from lobby number two. It was a they was route, yeah. Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion that the that the, the, the detective Gumshoe is the killer. <laughs> I can speak. <laughs> now that you have your testimony, I expect a good rebuttal, Edgeworth. Hmm, but of course. There is no need to confront her logic head on right now. I should instead focus on drawing out any trump cards she has up her sleeve.
I need to press everything. The suspect. But I thought the Detective Gumshoe's alibi has already been proven. Are you joking, Edgeworth? I assure you, this is no joke. Look, I know you heard from the judge earlier. That the detective was in the hallway with Mr. Faraday's daughter eating a Swiss roll. Yes, that is correct. But see, that was 20 minutes before the real gunshot went off, right? And the problem is, there's no one else who can corroborate what he did since the snacking. Hmm, I see she's done her research well. Which means that I should focus on drawing out whatever trump card she's withholding. I am. And whether they have been thoroughly investigated or not is for me to decide. Eyebrows and lines on your forehead or back. Anyway, even if you believe it hasn't been exhaustive, uh, the crime scene, lobby number two, has no way out other than the hallway Detective Gumshoe was standing in. And because he claimed to be there, that makes him the only possible suspect. But isn't it also possible that someone escaped through a window and into the garden? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the first place everyone looked silly. The police aren't a bunch of lazy bums, they looked into every possibility, you know. Isn't that right, Mr. Bad? Yeah. There wasn't a scrap of evidence to suggest someone used one of the windows. There also weren't any footprints or anything in the courtyard garden. I suppose they really did check everything they could that could be relevant to the case. Are you absolutely positive that there are no possible routes of escape? Of course I'm sure. And why are you so certain? This is a courthouse, the place where criminals are brought to be judged. If there were, were an escape route, I'm sure every criminal would be using it to escape. It's just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I suggest you use a bit more of it in the future. <laughs> But okay, he keeps taking so long. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> it gives character, I guess. Hold it. You may think that it's unshakable, but to me, there are still too many unanswered questions. For example, who was it that placed the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand? The only one still wondering that. The Detective Gumshoe probably had no idea which hand Mr. Faraday used to write with. Even if you know someone, it doesn't mean you'll know which hand they write with, right? I mean, it's I certainly don't care about that sort of thing. <laughs> hmm. I'm not about to let her get her vice out of me with such a flippant statement. Hmm, I suppose we really reached the end now. I already have my trump card ready. All that remains is to play it. But before I do, I think I should inquire into a little something about her argument. You said earlier that you confirmed the alibis of every person other than the suspect. However, I don't recall what either Francisca or myself speaking with you about the su subject. Ah, but there were witnesses for you. There's your mentor who gave you an alibi. I see. As for the little Missy... <laughs> she came to the courthouse during the recess. <laughs> and was stopped by a security guard at the door to the hallway. She gave him quite a whipping for that, or so I heard. I'm the daughter of Manfred von Karma, and I will not be forcibly stopped by a guard or a bailiff or anyone else. Wait, so basically the only reason Francisca bothered to show up today was because she found out that I was to be the replacement prosecutor. By the way, Miss Yu, what about everyone's alibis before Detective Gumshoe was assigned to guard duty? What about them? Have you looked into what people were doing during that span of time? What kind of idiot do you take me for? It doesn't matter when the killer went into lobby number two. From the time we heard the gunshot, to the time Mr. Bad and I arrived on the scene as we dashed from lobby number one, the only person who could have committed the crime was Detective Gumshoe. Yes, let's talk about when you and Detective Bad heard that gunshot, shall we? I suppose that if we go by your logic, then Detective Gumshoe is the only one. Sorry, I'm just thinking about that 
that, that, that one anime episode again. Where she finds those dolls and one of them is like wearing red and she's like, oh my god, it looks like you. <laughs> my heart. Why is Francisca so cute? Help. <laughs> However, what if the crime had all what if the crime had occurred at an entirely different time than when it when that gunshot heard went off? What then? Well, technically she, like she refers to him as her little brother. Which I think is really funny. That gunshot was a trap meant to manipulate our perception. Sadly, your explanation is very lacking, Edgeworth. The gunshot we heard in lobby number one. Care to explain how that could have been fab fabricated? Uh, video. That tape! Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. And this is the surveillance tape of Mr. Vell, the prosecution presented in today's trial. This was found loaded in the video player in lobby number two. That was connected to the large television that had its volume turned all the way up. You can't honestly mean that the sound we heard was a gunshot in the video. Ah, but I do, which leads me to my next point. The murders occurred much earlier than when anyone heard the gunshot. It's the only thing I can think of too. After committing double homicide, the killer took the surveillance video out from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag, turned, out, turned the television's volume all the way up and left the video to play. If played from the beginning, it would take 30 minutes for the gunshot sound to come on. And since we now know that this method of time manipulation is possible, it opens up the possibility that the killer is someone other than Detective Gumshoe. Sounds from a television doesn't amount to much here. But of course Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth and Little Miss Von Karma already knew that much from the very beginning, right? Oh, of course we knew! Didn't we, Miles? Yes, of course. We know about the soundproof quality of this courthouse's rooms. Of course, I'm not about to admit we had no idea until only a little while ago. <laughs> That's right. And if the rooms are soundproof, then we should not have been able to hear it. And yet, we heard the gunshot cl clear as day. And? And? That's it. End of story. Hmm. But it's not. How should I explain why she was able to hear a gunshot from a soundproof room? The window was open! There was a hole in the wall! <laughs> there is actually one common point between lobby number one and lobby number two. And it is that despite the, the fact that both rooms have air conditioners installed, a window was open in each. Now we know that the window in lobby number two was opened by the killer. However, a window in lobby number one was also opened. Objection. It's probably just coincidence that they were both open at the time. Hmm. It was no mere coincidence, I assure you. Why was the window open in lobby number one? The answer is that a certain person did something to cause the window to be opened. And the person who triggered that action, that person is the real guilty party. The real killer in this double murder is... You were right, it's you. Miss Callisto, you! I hereby formally indict you as the murderer, as the murder of the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I just like, oh, the, the, the fuck? <laughs> what? Francisco has not been following along. Y you indict me? Are you serious, Miles? Why do you think she is the killer? I don't understand her motive just yet, but of course I'm serious. Bad as shook. Because she is the only one who could have done it. Well, monsieur, do you still feel like laughing now? Uh-huh. <laughs> of course I do, Edgeworth. My argument must not be tight enough yet. Although, I never thought things would spiral into this. But I'll have you know, I'm enjoying this dance quite a bit. I guess this means it's time for my own rebuttal now, right? You argue that the window was open, however, do you have proof that it was I who did that? Furthermore, do you have proof that, that the tape was used in committing the crime? Frankly, I'm shocked that you are you for going around accusing people of murder like this, especially with logic as full of holes as yours.
Says you? <laughs> this is where it really starts. I mustn't let my guard down for even a second, or the truth will blow away. Now is the time to put the patented Von Karma perfect proof to the test. <laughs> there were too many peas in there. <laughs> Where the hell is the perfume? Perfume. Here we go. I'm sure you've seen this before, haven't you, Miss You? Aha! Edgeworth, I never knew you were into wearing that kind of perfume! It's not exactly what I'd recommend for boys, you know. But, uh, this isn't mine! That's right, it's mine, and I received it from the bad, you see. The detective. Why can't I not say detective? Detective! It's you. You can pretend all you like, but we know at least this much for sure. That this bottle of perfume was given to Detective Bad by you. <laughs> because it gets really strong really fast. So, what about the perfume? While you were in lobby number one, you made a big show of spilling some of this perfume. That's according to Detective Bad. Oh, I know. You also knew that if you spilled it, he would naturally move to open a window. Come now, I've already told you that it's just a big coincidence. After we opened the window in lava number one, I just left it open, you know? So maybe it was just dumb luck that we heard the gunshot through the window. The timing of when you were going to spill the perfume is something you could control. And the most important fact about this case is when people were made to hear the shot. Furthermore, it would have been pointless if you didn't have an alibi for yourself at the time. I mean... It's you. You were the one who called Detective Bad into lobby number one. When you saw him bring Detective Gumshoe into the hallway. Is that correct? All of today's premeditated events could only have been thought of by you, Miss You. <laughs> Miss You! <laughs> you, Miss You! Ha 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 ha. You accused me of murder on the fact that I spilled a little perfume? Well, allow me to say this much. I couldn't have killed Mr. Faraday. Would you care to testify as to why? <laughs> Look, I've had a lot of fun today, really. But I grow weary of this game of cat and mouse. Let's make this the last testimony and wrap up this absurd case once and for all. Oh yeah, we're actually almost done. Though it seems that this part is rather long. Accusing someone of murder over a spilled bottle of, bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. In any case, it simply could not have been me who killed Mr. Faraday. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. Miles, her testimony is flawless. Yes, no matter what sort of trick she may try to pull, she won't escape me. And if I'm lacking in information, I'll just draw it out of her. Come on, we gotta get to statement number four. <laughs> get to statement number four. There we go. And then press. There we go. At this rate, she will inevitably escape. But if she really was the one who killed Mr. Faraday, she must have known about the existence of the knife. I'm sorry, Miss Yu. Maybe you weren't aware. However, the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday was taken from his evidence bag. Miles, what do you think you're doing? Hmm. I'm drawing the truth out of her. That's what I'm doing. Huh? But I don't recall a knife being presented at the t trial earlier today. Well, I suppose that's because the evidence was something Mr. Faraday had yet to use. Ah, so that's what you're trying to do. Look, why don't you cut it out with the lies? I've already figured you out. There was no knife inside Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. The only evidence he had yet to present was the key the Athagarasu had sent. And unless the key can magically turn into a knife, you really don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Did you really think you could trap me? Come now, be honest. <laughs> I never intended to do such a thing. It was all a misunderstanding on my part. In any case, I wonder if you might append what you just said to your testimony. Sure, why not? I'll even say it is 
Aisle? <laughs> That's a double I. I'll even say it as many times as you'd like. There was a key in his evidence bag. Okay. Knife, 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 knife. You can't kill anyone with a simple key. Stop doing the winky thing. I don't like it. Miss you, I wonder if you might take a look at this photo for me. This is a picture of the key the Atagarasu sent to the police. However, while it may look like a key at first glance, it in fact has a secret ability to, in to transform into a knife. Which means that what was inside Mr. Faraday's bag was both the Yatagarasu's key and the murderer's knife. You knew that the key was inside Mr. Faraday's bag, did you not? Yes. Well, with the Yatagarasu's key alone, it's more than possible to kill Mr. Faraday. <laughs> you understand now? Just knowing of the existence of the Yatagarasu's key. You knew? <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't had a good look at it. Showing it to me from that far away, you could be lying for all I know. You would, even now, still feign ignorance. <laughs> I'm not feigning anything, but we can't have you accusing me of a crime with false evidence now, can we? I mean, Mr. Von Karma, I've heard some very interesting rumors about him. <laughs> Are you mocking my papa? Don't you dare sully the good name of my mentor. Sir. <laughs> Just give it a few years, give it like five more years and, and, and you will know. Well, technically four? Yeah, four. Holy shit, four. <laughs> good name. <laughs> I'll take a good look. This piece of evidence is more than real. Wow, who knew there was such a trick to this thing? Good name, it doesn't have one of those. The only good name he has is Piss Baby. Are you satisfied now? But of course you knew from the very beginning, didn't you? You knew that the knife and the Yatagarasu's key are one and the same. Otherwise, someone like you who isn't a member of law enforcement and who would never have been private to this trick would have never known about it to begin with. Furthermore, there's something that the Yatagarasu sent to the police. How did you have knowledge as to what it was? Actually, I heard it from Mr. Faraday. Just before he dragged Mr. Bell off, he told me. Oh, that's right, I almost forgot. He also told me about the key turning into a knife at that time. But he didn't tell me about how the key actually transforms. What you are saying is simply not possible. Oh, and why not? Because Mr. Faraday himself didn't know about the hidden knife within the key. For within these pages, he mentions nothing about a knife. <laughs> I'm not sure he would have written everything in his organizer, you know. Wouldn't something of this importance be better left to oral communication? Objection. Unfortunately, that is also impossible. Because Detective Bad didn't know about the knife aspect either. <laughs> what would have been highly classified information, even within the police force, and is something that even the lead detective on the case didn't know. Why wouldn't Mr. Faraday have felt the need to share such information with the opposition? <laughs> yeah, I guess he wouldn't have much of a reason to. <laughs> Looks like I gave a pretty lame excuse, huh? <laughs> Can you laugh at a time like this? She probably just realized the flaw in her logic and is actually in a panic over it. But that's not something we need to concern ourselves with. I need to fucking sneeze. <laughs> I am surprised that it was only one sneeze because usually it's like four to five in a row. <laughs> Miss you. I'd like to state that I also know how you know the real nature of the knife. <laughs> Do you now? Well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and show me? Oh, I will, and I'll wipe that smile off your face by the time we're through. This is it, the moment of truth. The secret behind the Yatagarasu's key. Only one person could have the ha w would have had the knowledge of it from the get-go. Who would know from the start that the Yatagarasu's key could change into a knife? Well, the Yatagarasu, obviously. 
There was only one person who would have known about the dual nature of the key. <laughs> and that is? And that is the person who sent the Yatagarasu's key to the, to the police. That is to say, the Yatagarasu herself. Are you saying that this lawyer is the great thief Yatagarasu? Miss Yu, you used Mr. Rell to lure Mr. Faraday into a trap, didn't you? You who profess to bear a grudge against criminals. Why? Why do something like this? <laughs> Who would have thought that you... A stupid rookie rookie prosecutor would see through me. You're sending the biggest chill down my spine right now, Edgeworth. This feeling of thrill is even greater than when I sneak into some place. You. You. <laughs> you killed Faraday. Why? Answer me, Callisto, you. <laughs> Callisto, you, huh? That's not my real name. Because my real identity is, yes, the great thief Yatagarasu. Let me tell you something, Edgeworth. Mr. Faraday was one difficult man to deal with. For you see, he had discovered my true identity. Which is why I had to erase him from the world of law. I made Re Rel an offer, an acquittal for a little favor in return. All he had to do was accuse Mr. Faraday of being the Yatagarasu in court. But once we entered the recess, Rel was dragged off by Mr. Faraday, which threw my plan into a complete mess. I chased after them and eavesdropped on them through a crack in the door. That Rel caves to only two things, money and authority, just as all thugs do. I feared my plan was going to be ruined if Mr. Faraday held on to Rel any longer. Plus, if I had let them continue on the way they were, I would have been found out. That's why I had no choice. I had to kill them both. But didn't you say that you despised criminals? But, but do I really? You. Have you forgotten about the KG8 incident too? Maybe. What sort of woman would... So then, was it your plan to kill Mr. Faraday with the very evidence that you sent? <laughs> well, I had a good idea of what Mr. Faraday was going to do. I anticipated that Mr. Faraday was go going to prove that Rel wasn't the Yatagarasu. By using this Yatagarasu's key as evidence, and that he would bring it with him. Which is why I thought to use the knife portion. With a weapon as well disguised as this, no one would be the wiser. Because who in their right mind would think something like this would be a weapon? I casually entered lobby number two on the pretext that I had to talk with Mr. Faraday. And in order to get in, get in with him, I pretended to be worried about something. He then let me hold the Yatagarasu's key, just like that. He never noticed that I had changed the key into a knife inside the plastic bag. And he didn't have the chance to take note of the knife that took his life. How could you kill him? I knew him for a long time, you know. At the very least, I thought to give him a quick and painless death. But if you killed Mr. Faraday first, there was no need for you to kill Mr. Bell as well. I believe I mentioned why when we were placing Detective Gumshu under arrest. Something about having accidentally created an eyewitness. How about and how that led to the killer, led that, and how that led the killer to think about setting them up as though they'd killed each other. And the trick with the surveillance tape. Yes, I hadn't actually planned to use a gun. The risk was too high that I'd be caught. However, that's when I remembered the existence of that surveillance tape, which is why I had Rel help me set up the crime scene. And after all was said and done, I rewarded him for all his hard work with the bullets. You, you're a defense attorney, aren't you? How could you, how could you betray a client? <laughs> client? If you want to talk about who was a client of whose first, it was me. I was the client in the murder of the Kodopian Embassy staff member, Dead Man. You criminal? Y you ordered a hit job. <laughs> you still haven't figured it out, Mr. Bad. I had Dead Man killed because he was about to give away info about the smuggling ring. 
Now, who exactly do you think would benefit from such an assassination? It can't be. You. You're... That's right. I'm a member of the smuggling ring. Could this... You don't mean... You're working with Manny Cochin too, do you? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I guess you'll never know. You're... The Yatakarasu claims to be noble, but you're just another cold-blooded murderer. <laughs> oh, that's right, little girl. The Yatakarasu is just another killer. Quiet. You. Yatakarasu. You can run from the law, but you'll never escape it. So just humbly accept the judgment of this court. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. Did you know the Yatagarasu has three legs? Do you know why that is? <laughs> no? Well, let me tell you. It means that the Yatagarasu has more than one razor sharp way to do her work. You really are too naive, Edgeworth. You even handled the Yatagarasu's key. Write to me without a second thought. Everything may not have gone according to plan, but I'll still gladly take it. Mm -hmm. You mean the key was your real target? <sighs> and even after I gave you such a great advice, didn't I tell you to always keep a good eye on a criminal? Or you may regret what comes of your negligence. You too, get down! <laughs> uh, my body can move. Hey, mister, to your right! You! You're right, Francisco. I'm perfectly fine, Miles. Her voice is shaking. But it looks like she's unharmed. Hmm? Where did Kay go? It's a gunshot. Sorry, but it looks like she got away. They call the precinct. They should have a per perimeter set up soon. Detective Bad, are you alright? I heard a gunshot. I'm okay. Just got another hole in my jacket. He may say he's fine, but he looks quite shaken. But more importantly, boy, I mean Miss Regworth, Miss Von Karma. Are you too hurt? I, I'm absolutely fine. I'm also all right, thanks to Kay. Speaking of Kay, where is she? Hmm, I don't know. She just sort of disappeared. Hmm, I'll go look for her. Oh, and... Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Detective Bad, sir. I'm sorry, I doubted you. Don't worry, sir. It's not your fault. I... Well, I lied to you guys, too, after all. I heard about what happened. From Kay. Lying while giving testimony is still unforgivable. But in this case, you are protecting Kay and her feelings. Looks like you just might have what it takes to be a real detective. Don't you, uh, don't you lose that detective spirit, okay? Y you got it, Pops. Pops? Watched one too many detective dramas recently, have we? I need to single-handedly destroy that cheery atmosphere with one snarky comment. I should get back to the investigation. I swear, I'll catch you if it's the last thing I do. Be careful, Detective Bad, and take care. Thanks. Well, I'm off. Maybe we'll run into each other again someday. Um, so, uh, thanks a bunch, pal. You're the best. You really did find out the truth behind everything. Yes, well, I'm glad we solved everything before you were taken to prison.
I can't believe how much trouble I caused you with my testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, with no problem, really. <laughs> I mean, I lied too, so I didn't help anything. It's really not your fault, Your Honor. Well, even if we didn't have His Honor's testimony, I think that lawyer would have been found guilt found another way to get you convinced on her behalf. Yeah, I can't believe I was about to get fired during my first week as a detective. Hmm, well, so long as you're not fired. You should work hard, give all, the, give all that you have, perform your duties well. Oh, and one more thing, Kay left a present for you with me. She did? Well, what is it? What was it that Kay left for me, the proof of their friendship? The Swiss roll! It's... It's courthouse special Swiss roll! C can I really have it? Yes, it's a present meant for you after all. Thanks a bunch! You have no idea how happy this makes me, pal. I'm gonna eat this right now. Sure, go ahead. The Swiss roll Detective Gumshoe and Kay bought together. Well, the one case saved never reached her father. It would appear that her sentiments have touched the heart of this detective. He's so happy. It's as though he's having a welcome back celebration of his own. Well, I was asked by Kay to give it to him. Whoop, that was good, pal. I can't believe I got to eat two of these delicious things in one day. It's like I'm in Swiss roll paradise or something. I've got to thank Kay myself. Hey, wait, where is she? He only noticed just now. Was this mine not present when we discussed her earlier? Detective Bad left to go search for her earlier. Maybe you should go join him. Yeah, you betcha, pal. I'm gonna go help him. Well, but first... You know what, pal? Actually, I guess I shouldn't be so rude to you anymore, huh? I'm gonna stick right by your side from now on, Miss Redgeworth, sir. <laughs> I sense nothing but a most troublesome relationship from that ominous statement. We should go home too, Miles. We have to hurry and report what has happened to Papa. Agreed. And I'm afraid we must be going now, Detective. Roger, sir. And don't worry. Don't you worry. I'll investigate the next case we're on real well. Or <laughs> Like, I've been, like, thinking about, uh... What you said last night. About how Francisca has a sibling. I actually don't think so. Because it was just something... Karma said, like, it was a hypothetical scenario, you know? Like, I don't think he actually has any other children. And I don't know, like, about. about Francisca having, like, staying with her mother either, because surely she would have mentioned her. Like, mom sends her regards or something. Maybe she is, like, in Germany. And, like, a, oh, what's it called? Like, a private school kind of thing. You know? That would make sense. But that is very extra. Living in America and going to school in Germany. I think it was just a hypothetical scenario, like it's on karma. You sure they would have brought up that other, other like kid then in that case, you know? Roger, sir, and don't you worry. I'll investigate the next case. We're on real well. I'll um be counting on you. The scent of trouble is definitely in the air. Thus, like a bad dream, my first outing at court came to a disturbing end. A few months later, I was finally able to properly stand in court as a prosecutor. Oh, okay, so it was his first one. But the detective in charge of the investigation was, as I dreaded, Detective Gumshoe. After that, he became my direct subordinate. I have tried, but words fail to describe the immeasurable suffering he has caused me. Edgeworth, <laughs> please! But I suppose that's just how things are. As for the little girl who suddenly disappeared, she's now.
So, do you remember now? Yes. I remember everything. Okay. It's been a while. I don't know if you, like, watched the ending of this case, but basically, um... Kay called Gumshoe Gummy, and, and he was like, Gummy? And then she gave uh, Edgeworth back his jabbit, cravat, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Which I, I think is, is kind of strange. <laughs> like, holding on to a piece of cloth for so long. Though, I suppose, he did say that she could borrow it. But it, it, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Pokemon X and Y anime. Where it's like uh, one character meets Ash when she was like a, a, a kid and they went to like a fucking Pokemon camp together. <laughs> and she holds onto it for years and just shows up. She sees him on TV and just like finds him. And then she's like, oh yeah, this is yours. And he's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Just because he fucking lent her a handkerchief once when she fell in the forest and got hurt. <laughs> That's so fucking weird. None of the fuck are you exactly. Though I guess uh, technically it should be Dada the fuck are you. <laughs> because Dada means who? <laughs> who the fuck are you? Dada? <laughs> Okay, it's been a while. Okay, you sure grew up a lot. Of course. But thank goodness, I thought you two had totally forgotten about me. You know, I was really worried about you after all that. Where have you been all this time? <laughs> Gummy, I didn't know you cared. After my father died, I went to go live with my mother's relatives. Okay, so she does have... Mother's relatives? Where the hell is your mother? <laughs> we lived really far away, so I wasn't really able to come back here all that much. Well, is that what happened? Well, I'm just glad you're all right. <laughs> so, does it, does it all make sense now? You betcha it does. Well, you know what? I was going through my father's bookshelves recently, and... Actually, there are still a number of things that don't make sense, Kay. Huh? First of all, why did you come all this way to see me? And second, why are you calling yourself the Yatagarasu? The Yatagarasu is Callisto Yu, the woman who killed your father. No, you're wrong. The real Yatagarasu was my father. M Mr. Faraday was the Yatagarasu. Like I said, I was going through my father's bookshelf recently, and I found a secret diary hidden among his books. I have no regrets in choosing to walk the path of the Yatagarasu. That was written in his diary, and that's how I know for sure. But that's... that's impossible. What's with that look? You don't believe me? It wasn't just the expression on my face. I clearly said it was impossible just now. Alright then, how do you explain this? It's a way of disarming any security system with the user's cho of the user's choosing. Yep, that's Little Thief. Truth be told, this is the Atagarasu's greatest secret. And this little gizmo was used by my father. Whoa, Mr. Faraday wasn't just a great prosecutor, he was really a great thief, huh? Yeah, my father worked really hard to steal the truth. But he was killed. And the Atagarasu was no more. But despite that, the Atagarasu has been spotted again recently. Someone other than you. Here, Mr. Edgeworth. Take a look at this article. The Atagarasu sends cards to embassy. Yatagarasu sent the embassy. A calling card. Yeah, meaning the person's a fake. I'm almost certain that Callisto Yu lady is behind this. Because the real Yatagarasu would never send something like a gaudy card out. But the Yatagarasu did send a white card along with anything to be publicized. That's what Detective Bad told me seven years ago, if memory serves. Well, as soon as I heard the news, I got all wound up and I knew I just couldn't let it go. So I searched you out. That I could, so that I could obtain the truth behind the Yatagarasu. Because if anyone can help me find it, I figured it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. So you're saying that I have your father's and Miss Yu's identities backwards? Yes, because the real Yatagarasu is noble to the end. And I want to revive the real noble Yatagarasu. If I don't, 
My father will never be able to rest in peace. Kay. Kay, you're so honorable. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'll always be here to cheer you on, pal. Even if you are honorable, a thief is a thief. And if you are plotting to commit a crime, then I'm afraid I can't be complicit. Mr. Edgeworth. Mm -hmm. You guys are not making it easy for me. Who am I supposed to support now? Mr. Edgeworth. What I want from you is not to steal something. What I want is to is the arrest of the, that evil woman. That evil woman? You mean Callisto Yu? I think it's too hard for me to catch her all by myself. But I thought that since you were able to expose her for who she is, that maybe... Please, Mr. Edgeworth, won't you help me? Come to think of it, I do believe I owe you. Huh? Owe me for what? When Miss Yu made her escape, it was you who saved my life. Furthermore, you helped me with the investigation today. I am not so rude as to leave favors unrepaid. Th then you mean... Yes. That case has been weighing down on my soul ever since that fateful day. Perhaps the time has come to settle things once and for all. If you don't intend to sully your hands in a crime, then I believe I can help you. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you. Yay, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Isn't, it, isn't that great, Kate? Yeah, it sure is, Gummy. Even though he had completely forgotten about her until just now. Aww. Uh -huh. What is with their chummy relationship? The Great Thief Yatagarasu. After all that time, the true identity of the thief sank back into the darkness. Burn Faraday, Kalisu Yu, and Kay Faraday. The phantasmagorically changing identity of the great thief Yatagarasu. And the Yatagarasu's real goal. It would all come to light the day after I made that promise to Kay. Last case, last case, last case, last case. Turn about a blaze, turn about a blaze. Last case hype. I'll just see how, how far I get. Technically, I should probably make like the 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 lower LCD screen a bit bigger because it doesn't quite line up right now but it's even worse on on my screen <laughs> because both screens are just like the same size and it just looks really strange anyways whatever it's fine i like this layout it looks like a ds <laughs> Two cards, one of the black raven, and one of the white raven. A country torn in two, one to the west, and one to the east. And those which were split were, are made whole again. The truth will reveal itself. It's the Atagarasu! The Atagarasu is here! You... Accursed Atagarasu! K, you. It's so nice, almost dreamlike, to finally have the chance to relax and sip some tea. <laughs> God, especially after that, what a whirlwind the past few days have been. On my return flight, I was dragged into a case involving an Interpol agent's murder. The next day, I investigated a kidnapping and a murder at the Gatewaterland theme park. Later that night, a detective's dead body welcomed me back to my office. 
along with a thief who was out to pilfer files related to a case from 10 years ago. How did I manage to find myself in the middle of so many cases back to back? Well, at least I have today. All I, can, all I ask is that I be allowed to spend it quietly. Mr. Edgeworth! Oh no, it's... Damn it! This is big! Big, I tell you! Hey, what's wrong with you? Where's your enthusiasm? And suddenly the phrase, the fragility of dreams, comes to mind. What are you talking about, fragile dreams? Come on, let's go! The fake Yatakarasu isn't going to just find herself, you know? Well, if you must know, it's possible that I was paid a visit last night by your fake. Say what? Unfortunately for us, the thief managed to escape. But even now, we're still looking for this criminal. However, I must warn you that we've only had a few hours to search so far. So I must insist that you be patient on this one, Kay. What's with you today? Are you sure you aren't sleep-talking to me right now? Anyway, I've got something much more important that I want you to see. Oh, and that is? Take a look at this! March 14th, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. That's quite a bold declaration to send to an embassy. I suppose it was inevitable that a newspaper would catch wind of this. The date of- the date the cart mentions is today! Today, huh? Oh, we gotta hurry! The embassy awaits! I suppose it is quite an urgent matter. However, do you know which country's embassy we should be investigating? Well, it's some really special country and I'm actually really fuzzy on the details. But never mind that! We're all- where's all your energy? Why are you so lackadaisical today? I'm not, Kay. You're just too wound up. Well, then you should get too wound up too. Because this just might be our chance to catch that woman. You mean Miss Hugh. The woman who killed Kay's father burned for a day seven years ago. Callisto Yu. She claimed to be the great thief Yatagarasu. And then disappeared from the courtroom. Ugh, she makes me so mad, the phony. Everyone knows that the real Yatagarasu would never send something like a calling card. Until the company's underhanded dealings are made public. The target is always totally unaware that the Yatagarasu has paid them a visit. Who is she? Mask the mask? <laughs> That's what makes the real Yatagarasu so awesome! Hmm. The Yatagarasu's card that's shown in this article. It looks to me as though it could be genuine. See? That's the thing. Whoever it is, that person isn't the real deal, but has knowledge of the Yatagarasu. If this isn't a clue that that woman's involved, then nothing is. Come on, Miss Regworth. Out the door you go. Wait, there are a few preparations I must make before we go. There's something interesting about this card we found last night here in my office. It's of a different color than the one in the article, which makes me wonder why. What's up? Any reason why you're boring a hole through the newspaper with your eyes? No, no reason at all. Very well, seeing as how Miss Yu is also someone of a special nature to me, I agree there is some merit to be found in investigating this. I knew you'd come around. No, I want to check the chessboard! <laughs> Damn it! Whatever. Theatrum Neutralis. Okay. By the light of this night's glorious moon, we are ready. Ready to embark on our nightly outing. And this is where our tale begins. Heh, <laughs> what a coincidence. Who would have thought that a steel samurai stage show would ever be held at such an elegant theater inside a foreign embassy? Yeah, the climax was really awesome! Steel Samurai, Sushi Slice! I got chills down my spine when, when he pulled that move out. I suppose it really is more impactful to watch a show in person than on television. I have to say though, this embassy is set up kind of funny. I mean, they have two countries sharing the same building. 
Unless you said yourself, this place and the countries it houses are very special. Even this theater is special in that it has it is a neutral zone shared by the two com com countries. Hmm. So, um. So let me get this straight. The Steel Samurai show just now is being sponsored by one of the two countries. The one that's called the Kingdom of Alabast, right? Yes, it would appear that the Steel Samurai is very popular in that country as well. Seems that way. But you know who I'm really into? The Jammin' Ninja. The Republic of Babal is sponsoring a Jammin' Ninja stage show. Something for fangirls like me. You totally gotta see that too, Miss Redworth. The Jammin' Ninja show is gonna kick the Steel Samurai show's rear end. You know, ever since I first met this girl, I've always had this inkling. And what she really wants to be. It's not a thief, but rather a ninja. So anyway, about today's event, um, what's it called again? The Kingdom of Alabast versus the Republic of Babal Goodwill Ju Jubilee. 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 <laughs> In the small European countries of the Kingdom of Alabast and the Republic of Babal, these two countries used to be a single entity that was abundant with nature. And it was called the Principality of Cordopia. Hmm? Is everything alright, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I'm alright. Moving on. After a period of civil unrest, the country split in two. Those signs of their past remain. For example, their flags pres preserve the flower and the butterfly motives to this day. Cordopia, huh? The KG-8 incident in what was referred to as the second KG-8 incident, in which an embassy staff member was murdered. Both of these cases were related to the Principality of Kudopia. In the seven years that have passed, the country may have split into two. However, the Yatagarasu still sent a calling card here. What could it all mean? Mr. Edgeworth, I know you're thinking about something. Oh, excuse me. What, 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 what were we th talking about again? Uh, if you could please stop spacing out on me. Anyway, we were talking about the Alabas versus Babal Goodwill Jubilee. Two countries have had a pretty bad relationship with each other. But supposedly, they've been trying really hard to make up recently. That's why they decided to hold this event. If that's the case, then why the verses? Also, both countries claim to be the real Primadex statue. To own the real Primadex statue, a natural treasure to both. They're planning to have them publicly evaluated today to see which one's the real deal. Okay, need I remind you to take care and not succumb to your thieving desires. Well, when it comes to treasure, I can't help myself. You know that. Mm -hmm. She had better be saying that in jest. Hey, I can read your body language, you know. And you got it all wrong. Look, I am here to do some investigating. Investigating, I tell you. <laughs> I know. And although we don't know if the Atagarasu will really make an appearance, I suppose we should still spend some time examining this place. Okay, where do we... Oh, I'm trying to read. Oh, pile of pamphlets. Okay, over here then, I guess. There are pamphlets about the two embassies here on this table. Hmm, it still looks weird to me. The country split into two a few years back. And they've shared the building and its grounds 50-50 ever since. Oh? I guess it's because they don't have the money to build two separate ones, huh? I, I should think that's not a, the reason why, Kay. I suppose I'll just help myself to one of these. Oh, the music is struggling with this one! Hmm? What, what is all the hubbub? Hey, look! It's a steel samurai! And he's got his son, the iron infant, with him. Oh, that was a familiar looking face! Steel samurai! Steel samurai, I'm your biggest fan! May I speak with you for a second? It's steel samurai. 
Mr. Edgeworth, what are you glaring at him for? Ahem. <clears throat> Please excuse me. It's just that I've never seen a superhero up close before. It looks like he's written something down for you. To Edgeworth, from Steel Samurai. Samurai Daddy, married man of new old Tokyo. How an autograph! Pretty cool that you got one, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> Hold on, let me check it, let me check it. I need to know his pause on it. So Steel Samurai, Ambassador Alba is waiting for you. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, it doesn't say to Mr. Ashworth. <laughs> Steel Samurai. Oh my god. Steel Samurai Daddy, married man of Neo, Tokyo. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> did that say Daddy? Yes, it did say Daddy. Now the Steel Samurai will proceed to enter the Kingdom of Alabas to shake the hand of the Ambassador. Oh, sorry, the Steel Samurai isn't only here for the two countries tonight, but rather can be thought out of a good of as goodwill Ambassador from our own country as well. There he goes, off to spread goodwill to the world. He really does seem like a goodwill Ambassador, doesn't he? Okay, we're shooting the next segment now. Cue camera. In just a few seconds, the Jammin Ninja State Show is set to begin. After the show, the Jammin Ninja will enter the Re Republic of Babal. He is set to meet with the Ambassador of Babal at that time. Huh? The Jammin Ninja show is about to start! We gotta get back to our seats! Regrettably, I don't have much of an interest in ninjas. Well, this show will change your mind. Come on, we have to hurry! If we miss even a second of the Jammin Ninja's awesome playing, I'll never forgive you! Mm -hmm. I suppose you're not about to give me much of a choice here, are you? Okay. In the dad pretext, by the way. Because he has he has a kid now. The Iron Infant, you know. Ha, I could listen to that a ninja marked for death's lullaby song all day. His superb playing and that sad melody really brought a tear to my my eye. And his heart wrenching voice. Now that's the Jam and Ninja's greatest weapon. Oh, those pieces of Jam and Ninja's merchandise over there. I've got to have them. We especially want the hair sticks that are selling exclusively at these shows. They're exactly like the ones the heroine, Princess Missola, wears in her hair. Anyway. Anyway? Anyway? Hold it right there, Miss Redworth. Yes? You're thinking of going home, aren't you? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the Atagarasu will be making an appearance tonight. Most likely, it was simply a prank. No way! I just know the Atagarasu will show. But I thought you said that the Atagarasu doesn't send calling cards. Yeah, I did, but... I figured from the very beginning that this would wind up being a wild goose chase. But that card she sent was a genuine fake calling card. A genuine fake. Like how this... This is, uh... A, a genuine fake? I guess you could say? Yeah, it is. It is a genuine fake because this is genuine. But it's it's supposed to be a fake. If you look on, on, on my arm here, there's something written. And it says, Little alone fact. Cloak is very correctly spelled with an E in the British United Kingdom and other British places. So C-L-O-K-E is sitting in plain view when the actual... Uh, Name of the brand is C L O A K, <laughs> but we got we got the British spelling right here. <laughs> K is the Yatagarasu. Miss You is the fake Yatagarasu. How can I word this? The Yatagarasu's mark that that's on the calling card is exactly the same as my mark. Get it now? We've got a problem. The Yatagarasu has been spotted in Alabast. What? Hear that, Miss Redgeworth? Ha! So you finally decided to show yourself, you phony. <laughs> Shut up! I mean Callisto, you! <laughs> Not you, you! Hey, what gives?
gives. Sorry, but I will need to search you before you may enter. What the? Hey, the steel samurai just falls straight in, straight on through, through with it, without one caught. Now, if you don't hurry up and let me through, my phony is going to escape. Okay, a country's embassy is considered to be part of the country itself. If you don't go through the proper procedures to enter the country. Mr. Regworth, I'm going to enter through Bibal and climb over the wall into Alabast. You will tell the prosecutor straight out that you intend to illegally enter another- Okay, are you listening to me? Okay for a day, and I'm coming through. Yes, and welcome. Someone stop her! Anyone! Okay, where are you? Tell me you really did find some way over this fence. I, s I spy with my little eye a stepladder. <laughs> I spy a stepladder. <laughs> ah. Fire! This is too big for us to handle. Looks like the Atagarasu came to Vival too. You. Cursed Yatagarasu. Kay, you. You had better be all right, wherever you are. I told you it wasn't me. <laughs> Kay, are you all right? Do I look all right to you? Now, can you do something about this woman? Mr. Edgeworth, Detective Gumshoe, what is the meaning of this? Uh, well, sir, it's, um, this. He's... It wasn't me! He was already dead when I ran in here, hot on the heels of the fake Yatagarasu. Look, I only came in here because I saw a suspicious person at the open-air stage. A suspicious person? A long black coat and a hood over their head. I dare you to tell me that's not suspicious. When I saw that person, I imme immediately thought that they must be the fake Atagarasu. So I chased after them into the embassy, then into here, and then lost sight of them. But I just know that person is the one who did it. What are you so worked up over? There is no reason for you to be this loud. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're Agent Long's secretary. Sheena, I believe your name is, correct? And if you are making an arrest, I assume you will have you have the evidence that it was Kay who committed the crime. Is that also correct? You refuse to answer. I don't need to answer. You are merely a prosecutor in this country, meaning you have no investigative authority. Hey, pal! Just what the heck does that- does what you just said mean? If it happened here, it's under Mr. Edgeworth's jurisdiction. The end. And seeing as how this building is sitting on our soil, we can investigate whether- wherever we'd like. Unfortunately, Detective, embassies are a different matter. Huh? This office is considered to be a part of the Republic of Babal. Which means that anything that happens in here defaults to the control of the Babalese government and Babalese law. Giving them exclusive extraterritorial extra rights. <laughs> I also thought he said extraterrestrial, you are not the only one, Gumshu. <laughs> extraterrestrial rights, sir. Do you really believe that the truth is out there? <laughs> we love X-Files. <laughs> we love it. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> Basically, our country's laws do not apply inside the embassy of another country. That's what was agreed to by our respective governments. Our authority to investigate the was effectively nullified the second we enter this place. Which means we can do little here in this, in in this situation. N no way, sir! Please leave this matter in Interpol's hands and go home. <coughs> Mr. Redworth. Hey, you're not... Mr. Edgeworth! 
In that case, allow me to join your investigation. <gasps> yes! Miss Von Karma! <sighs> Ambassador Palaino, I truly believe. Truly believe. Appreciate you allowing me to join the investigation. It's really nothing. Manny was my secretariat, so of course I want to help you as much as I can. In fact, it's a blessing that Interpol's agents were able to make it so quickly. Who is the Cheeto man? <laughs> Francisco. Well, well, I never imagined that I'd meet you here of all places. This is an embassy, meaning that you have no authority con to conduct. Uh, already? What is it? Ambassador Palaino. Hmm? And you are? I am Miles Edgeworth, public prosecutor. I ask that you please allow me to investigate this case as Miss Von Karma's assistant. Uh, assistant? Miles, what the heck do you think you're- Please, I implore you, Ambassador Palaino. Palaino? Very well, I'll be counting on the two of you. Miss Von Karma and Mr. Edgeworth. I don't know how, what voice to give him. Um, what did you mean by you'll be Miss Von Karma's assistant? I don't exactly have a choice, do I, Detective? If I don't become Francisca's assistant, I can't participate in this investigation. Hmm. There you go again, running at the mouth with that aloof expression on your, on your face. Francisca, please. I don't know what you're planning quite yet, but at least I, I do know one thing, that you are now my subordinates. Just remember that my whip is always ready to wake you should you have a brain lapse. Of course, I'll keep that in mind. If you are done playing games... Right, let's begin the investigation. By the way, Detective, I suppose it's a bit late to be asking, but why are you here? Well, better late than never, I guess, sir. I was placed on guard duty for the Bubblees Embassy today. And why are our police guarding an embassy? Well, on account of the card they got from the Atakarasu. They called us up and asked for our help, sir. Well, and because we've been searching for the Atakarasu these past seven years, it was a more or less mutually beneficial ag arrangement, if you ask me. Except for how mutually unbeneficial, unbeneficial this has all turned out to be, I suppose. It looks like you failed to com competently perform your guard duty yet again. <laughs> Look, I forward to your next salary negotiation. Look forward to your nec next salary negotiation, although it is out of my hands. Sir, if it gets cut anymore, I won't be able to buy even packet noodles anymore. Poor gumshoe. So our victim was the secretariat of this embassy, embassy I take it. Manny Cochin, I heard that he was an admirable person. Very admirable. The cause of death is a stab to the base of his neck. He was lax in watching his back. We were unfortunate that the fire missed our victim's body for the most part. If the fire had burned a bit longer, it would have made identifying him a hassle. So Mr. Cochin was stabbed to death in the middle of a raging fire. What in the world happened inside this room? Knife. Is this knife the murder weapon? Some preliminary testing has been conducted. According to the results, the blood on that matches the victim's blood. The blade shape was also found to be consistent with the stab wound. I suppose this means that we now know the crime was committed with this knife. This knife's got some really fancy ornamentation going on, huh, sir? This thing practically screams arcy at me, too. Although it's also covered in blood. Just like the last thing that I said was artsy. Hmm. Huh. But the handle is pristine, and there's not a single drop of blood on it. Speaking of the handle, I believe it has a butterfly motif. It's very beautiful. Interesting. Huh. <sighs> it's a knife wound. It's obvious that he was killed with what he was killed with, but I wonder if it's consistent with the wound. Indeed. Hmm, 
And there appears to be something in his pocket. This key. It can't be. Isn't this the Yatagarasu's key that was stolen seven years ago? What? But that's... Huh? Seven years ago? Oh! You mean the case where I was framed, sir? Yes, it's the piece of evidence that stole the life of Kay's father seven years ago. Which was which was then stolen by Callisto Yu. What? Sir Faraday was killed with this key, sir? I thought he was killed with a knife. Ugh. Scruffy, at the very least, try to remember the details of crimes you were <laughs> of crimes you were a suspect in. Francisca, as you will recall, Detective Gumshoe was not present when Miss Yu made her escape. Plus, even among law enforcement, only a few knew of this key's existence. I doubt that a new rookie at the time would have been privy to such knowledge. But made privy. Oh, I feel like the victim right now. All trampled on, sir. Hm. I suppose I'll just have to fill you in now. The secret to this key is... Oh, wow, that's amazing, sir. It's like some kind of magic trick. I knew it. This is the same exact piece of evidence that Miss Yu took with her. I remember this beautiful pattern on the blade. I remember this as well. It's a vine motif, isn't it? Yes, it looks like two interwoven vines, crisscrossing down the blade. Fine, sirs. I think it looks like a bunch of stars, if you ask me. It's one of those six-sided stars, just like the police mark on our IDs. I... I really don't think you can call these stars. To say that a detective's art sense is underdeveloped would be an understatement. The real question is, why was the Babalese Embassy's secretariat holding this? Well, we don't know how Mr. Cochin came to possess this key. We do know that this was stolen by the Atagarasu from the Kodopian Embassy. Ow. That's right. Mr. Faraday had written that fact down in his organizer. I believe this means that further research is required into the country of Kodopia. Why don't you ask Ambassador Palaino Pala Pala about what, what he knows? Supposedly, he was a candidate to be the next Kodopian ambassador once long ago. He should be able to answer any specific question you may have. Hmm. Hmm. This man, where do I know him from? Hold on. Uh, some dead body. Okay, I do have those. Some knife. Talk to. Okay, I need to talk to to, to, to talk to the ambassador. Do, 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 do. The flower is from one of the flags, right? It sure does look like it. Yep, that looks like it. All right. Can't believe that many fell. Fell among thieves tonight. Without him, I have no idea what my schedule for tonight is. Ambassador Palaino, I believe your schedule tonight will consist of listening to reports from the police. That, and only that. I ask that you cooperate, not only for your own sake, but for Mr. Cochin's as well. You're a rather strong man, aren't you? How fascinating! Here, I know it isn't much, but I'd like you to have these. Sorry, but it would be against my principles to accept a bribe. Oh, no, no. These are simply coupons. Coup coupons? Coupons? Coup How do you say that in English? <laughs> a coupon. A coupons. Okay, that's it. Not coupons. Not coupons. But coup <laughs> We can get it. Okay. We distribute to promote Babal. Remember, we offer a large number of discounts and offers when you visit lovely Babal. Now I remember, the Republic of Babal is known for its feverish tourism industry. 
and was wondering if you might tell me a bit about the deceased Manny Cochin. He was my secretary and the embassy sec secretariat, so secretariat uh, charged with running the whole place. He was an admirable man. His death is a great loss to our country. He was in charge of everything, accounting, printing, taking care of our national treasures. Sorry, but did you say printing? Our country's primary source of revenue is our tourism industry. So in order for us to print the necessary pamphlets, flyers, coupons, etc. For British? No, it's not different. You can't know. We have a printing press here at our embassy. I see. Please excuse my forwardness. However, I feel I should mention that I have a d the distinct impression that I've met him before. Oh, yes. Since you are of the legal profession, I suppose you just might have. After all, money was involved in the KG-8 incident. Coupon? Coupon? <laughs> Also coupon. I see in coupon. Okay, then I then I have I have it right. Cool. The KG8 incident. The defendant who was found innocent in that case was Manny. So your Mr. Cochin is the same man as the one the one in that case. Spent ten years. Manny recovered personally from that case and dove into Enthusiastically into this job. He was the one who planned this event and was to oversee this embassy's renovations. It really is a shame he had such a bright future ahead of him. Hold on, wait, let me just check. Not check, but let me just fix some things real quick. Oh, no, I was gonna. Yeah, I figured it was gonna reset this. That's fine. Uh, where is the. There we go. Sorry, I had to reset the chat, apparently, to do that. Really, it's a shame he had such a bright future ahead of him. What exactly did you mean earlier by renovations? We can't have tourists and visitors to our embassy think we're a poor nation, can we? So renovating the embassy is something of an investment. We may have a rather paltry budget, but we're trying our best to make do. However, I guess the only person who could have helped us do our best is now no longer with us. Ambassador Palaino, I was wondering if I may ask you about Codopia. Codopia? Alright. What would you like to talk about? First, I'd like to ask you about this key. Hmm? What about this key? I found it sticking out of Mr. Cochin's pocket. I believe it originally belonged to this embassy, is that correct? Hmm. Upon closer inspection, it seems that this key is shaped like a butterfly. It's not all about this key. It's also capable of changing into a knife. Oh! How fascinating. Is it possible that the ambassador didn't know about the existence of this key? Hmm? In its knife form, there is a flower mark at the base of the blade. Hmm. I guess this knife might be from when we used to be a part of Codopia. And how did you come to that conclusion? It has both of Kadopia's national symbols, the butterfly and the flower. I suppose Manny used this key here at the embassy back when we were still Kadopia. Ambassador Palaino, this key was stolen from the Kodopian embassy seven years ago. By Callisto Yu, otherwise known as the Great Thief Yatagarasu. Oh, really? You were not aware that Miss Yu had broken into this embassy at the time. I'm sorry, I can't be of much help. I'm not very familiar with the details, you see. I only became the ambassador after Babal became its own independent nation. It's a butterfly knife. I get it. But if many were still alive, he would probably know about what happened back then. Mr. Cochin and Miss Yu knew each other seven years ago. But that doesn't explain why I found the Yatagarasu's key here in the present. 
Do I have to show him something? Talk to Francisca. Okay. Miles Edgeworth. What is it? Let me tell you something. You are currently my subordinate. And if you wish to convince me, convince everyone else of that, you will speak to me with respect. <laughs> What's with the giddy glint in her eyes? I don't think that will really be necessary, Francisca. Oh, really? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that you are still under me. I thought Francisca was flying around the world in pursuit of the smuggling case. So then why is she here at this embassy? I was investigating at the Alab Alabastian <laughs> embassy when I got wind of this mess. Oh, that's right. The Atagarasu was due to appear at that embassy as well. Oh, the audio kind of bothers me because it's so fucked. <laughs> yes, but the difference is that we didn't have a fire over there. Although, there was an incident at the Alabastian Embassy as well. But I left Agent Lang in charge of that case and came over to the Babalese Embassy. Ah, so Agent Lang is here as well, huh? I see you've met. Well, he is in the Alabastian Embassy acting as bodyguard for Am Ambassador Alba. However, he seems to have a different reason for being there. So the suspect in the murder that occurred in this office is that little girl, I see. Is she, perhaps, trying to be the Atagarasu? Kay would never harm a soul, sir. Kay. You remember, do you not? About the case we investigated together seven years ago. That girl is the daughter of the victim in that case, Mr. Faraday. So she's that feisty little girl. Kay has been on the trail of the Atagarasu, which is how she ended up here. Looking for the one who took her father's life. I see. Kay's trying so hard, but you know what? The Atagarasu just keeps on tricking us all. Hmm, how so? The Atagarasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. But all we've had is an arson and a murder. The lab boys are going in circles. You know what this is, sirs? It's a breach of contract and it's going to on the rap sheet. If you ask me, I'm perfectly fine with the fact that nothing was stolen tonight. I do wonder, though, if Callisto Yu really is the Atagarasu. Stealing of Secret and Francisca's return. To steal your dirtiest secret. Is it possible that the dirty secret the Atagarasu was out to steal in the, is in this very room? Dirty secret? Francisca, you're in pursuit of some dirty, underhanded dealings yourself, are you not? Something tells me that this is no coincidence. In that case, then the person I'm looking for is here in the Babalese Embassy, huh? The head of the smuggling operation. I think I just might need to ask Francisca about her smuggling case in more depth. Francisca, when we last talked, you said that you were on the tail of a smuggling ring. I suppose the reason you are here now is related to that. Yes. After analyzing the intel we've gathered from various countries, this embassy rose to the top of our list of sites to investigate. And this is what tipped us off. This accounting document. It's only one page of the whole thing, so we're not sure about all the details. However, it, it's enough for us to grab onto the tail of the beast. But you see, this type of paper was made only in the kingdom of Kodopia. Which means that somewhere in the countries of Alabas and Babal is the head. The one pulling the strings behind this entire smuggling ring. That's Francisca for you. She's amazing. Pursuing this case with all she has. Gotta examine this. Hey, it's another butterfly. I believe it is a symbol of the Republic of Babal. Drawing this big on the wall of an embassy. It definitely conveys a sense of overwhelming patriotism. Patriotism, I mean. Well, I've got a lot of patriotism too, sir. The reason I became a cop in the first place was because I wanted to protect our country. 
You may want to, detective. However, I have yet to see the fruits of your desire. Y you don't have to be so blunt about it, sir. Because this is a national treasure, can I ask you please not touch it? I'm afraid the only ones allowed to touch it are myself and the Secretariat. There is a possibility that it is related to the murder, wouldn't you agree? Mr. Regworth, why don't we give up for now? We can force them to let us investigate it later when we find some solid proof. I suppose I don't have a choice here. This must be one of the primitive statues Kate was talking about earlier. Is it just me, or does this man look just like the steel samurai? They could be twins. Stretchworth, there's still something on this display rack, sir. Knives, huh? And though the blades are all that remain of them, unfortunately. I guess the handles all got burned off by the fire. Ah, so even the knives fell victim to the fire. Ambassador Palaino, are these knives yours? Why, yes, they are. They are a special set of ornamental knives featuring the national sy symbol of Babal. These butterfly-themed knives, knives along with Alabast's own set of knives are compromised of three knives each. But but I can't believe the Babalese ones have been reduced to this state. Hmm, ornamental knives, huh? Hmm? Hmm, there's a smell of, there's a small release of the tang of this blade. Ambassador Palino, what is this notch here for? Oh, that! It's a feature of these knives wherein you can freely exchange the handles on them. So that we can change how they look to fit the situation, of course. I see, so these knives were constructed so that the handles could be easily removed. <sighs> okay, I need to go to the safe. A small personal safe. This was Mr. Cochin's office, so perhaps he stored his most important documents in here. Oh, of course, it's locked. It appears we won't be able to open it without the key. Okay, locked safe. No, that's not it. Well... I guess technically I can. I know for a fact that the Atagarasu's key was used at this embassy. Furthermore, we have found it in the victim, Mr. Cochin's pocket. Which leads me to think that perhaps it is the key to the personal safe in his office. Thinking, sir. Let's go try it out. It appears I was correct. The key that was left to us in the victim's pocket literally turned out to be the key to the next piece of the truth. Hmm, what do we have here? Hey, there's nothing inside. Do you think the Yatagarasu made off with everything, sir? No, detective, I believe all we need is a closer look. Okay, hold on, let me just go to logic and just combine the last two motive on a knife handle and butterfly of a ball. They're the same. The design on the knife's handle, it's, it greatly resembles a special bubbly species of butterfly. It does, doesn't it? Plus, it says right here. This knife is property of the Republic of a ball. Perhaps this means that the knife used in the crime was found right in this room. Anyways, okay, let's fucking go. What is this here? It looks like the ripped corner of a piece of paper, sir. Shut up! <laughs> I don't think it's ripped. It seems more to me like it's stuck in the safe. Hey, you're right! It won't budge an inch. It won't budge an inch, not even when I tug on it. But I don't think I've ever seen paper stuck on the inside of a safe before. Detective, I think you have it backwards. It's not the paper that's strange. It's the safe. What do you mean? What I mean is that the secret to the safe is that it has two compartments. Even just eyeballing it, you can see that the inside is a bit too shallow. Furthermore, with the unnatural way the paper is stuck at the back of the safe, I'd say that there is an extra bit of space behind the back. 
wall of the safe. In other words, this safe has a secret, a, a second compartment. What? I suppose that you are correct in asserting that the paper is stuck in an unnatural manner. However, if what you say is correct and there is a second compartment, how do we go about opening the door to it then? As you can see, there is no other lock or keyhole in sight. Actually, there is one more spot of interest to me on the safe. Oh, yes, and I believe that spot is the keyhole to our mystery second lock. The safe and its locks. All right then, since you are so sure of yourself, show me how you deduced your answer. This. And... Uh, the, the key. Doesn't the shape of this keyhole remind you of something, Francisca? The shape? It does look very familiar. However, I believe it's simply a latch hole for the safe's lock mechanism. It's just for keeping the door shut, nothing more. Is that so? The person who used this safe? Mr. Cochin made sure this safe had two compartments in order to hide something. Do you honestly think someone like that would allow the keyhole to be hidden ha to, to the hidden half? To look so obviously like a keyhole that even the average person could figure it out. You can't be serious! Are you saying that this hole is the keyhole to the hidden compartment of this safe? That is precisely what I'm saying. And I will prove to you right now that the Yatagaras' key is the key that will open it. Objection! The Yatagaras' key? Miles Edgeworth, this had better be a very bad joke. Sorry, but this is no joke. The Yatagaras' key is the very key that will open the second compartment of the safe. We know that this key opens the first compartment of the safe. But the keyhole you are talking about is of an entirely different shape than that of the key. Perhaps if you use your brain, Francisca. We discovered this trick seven years ago, and with it we were able to corner Miss Yu. But who would have thought that I'd see this key again after all this time? Was that not it? Well, wow, let's go over this again, shall we? The Yatagarazu's key was originally made to open Mr. Cochin's safe in the Kodopian Embassy. We confirmed that that is fact by opening the door to his safe with it. Now let's take a look at the back end of the key. Looking at the knife portion head on, what do you see? What are you talking? Huh? It appears that you've come to understand what I'm talking about. When viewed head on, the knife's blade is the exact same shape as the keyhole. The real function of the knife portion is to act as the key to the hidden portion of the safe. But, but that's preposterous! Because it looks like a knife and was used like one to kill Mr. Faraday seven years ago. We fell under the misconception that it was always meant to be a knife. For both the safe and its key to conceal such clever tricks. Whatever is hidden inside the sacred section must be of incredible importance. Then it's even possible that... What I've been searching for is inside. Scruffy, hurry up and open that safe. Yeah, yes, sir. Opening it now, sir. These items, they're... It's a bunch of bunny-shaped things. Bunny-shaped things. You're in the way. Now move, Scruffy. I couldn't even read what he said. I didn't think I was in the way. <laughs> These pieces of art, they're identical to ones that have been stolen from various countries around the world. Figured as much. These are the treasures this section of the safe was to hide from you. Hmm. I believe a more thorough examination is required. This. This is the document that we thought was stuck earlier. I wonder what it's about. It's me, sir. Why don't we take a look at it first before we give up, detective? Mr. Cochin's name is written here on the last page. I wonder what the significance of this document is. Let me just look at the other things. There are pieces of stolen art from around the world. I wonder how much they're worth, especially this one. Ugh. Scruffy, don't touch those valuable pieces of art with your filthy hands. Why, do you have any idea what could happen to you if one of them were to break? Is it just me or did she hit one of the pieces of art just now? Okay, I guess it's just this. And that's like with the... Quadruple paper document, this thing. Did 
Take a good look at these documents, Francisco. It's, it says that there are three pages in total, and yet there are only two here. Correct. Now take a look at the smuggling activity document in your possession. Tell me, is it not possible that your page was taken from the set of tr three? Well, well, it certainly looks that way. By putting our multi-part puzzle together, we seem to have arrived at an answer. What kind of language is this? I see K. <laughs> E.K. I mean, I suppose it's just supposed to be like a, a fictional language, but yeah. I feel like uh, these games, they make you like believe that they're in like a bigger world. Whereas like, uh, just like the trilogy, you just like get the feeling that it's just like that that one area. Plus Korine, I guess, but yeah. It looks a bit like runes. Yeah, it does. It looks like a mix of runes and Cyrillic. We're putting our multi-part puzzle together, we seem to have arrived at an answer. And it seems that you have now found what you ha what you were looking for. Yes, and with this, it has become crystal clear that Mr. Cochin himself was responsible for the mass smuggling of Babalese Ink. Babalese Ink. Babalese Ink is a special product of the Republic of Babal. However, due to a special reason, only a limited volume is ever exported. Runilic? Cyrus? And that reason is that the, that's classified it's on a need to know basis and you don't need to know in any case it seems that the head of the smuggling ring was our victim mr manikochin his space was in an embassy thus it, it was hard for both our country and his to interfere what i find kind of fascinating is that francisca is 19 and she's already working with interpol <laughs> i just thought of that <laughs> Making it the ideal conditions under which to run a smuggling operation. Ugh, but it's so frustrating. I lost the person I was I was to rain judgment on upon down upon with my whip of justice. Well even if he is dead, we still have a responsibility to look into his misdeeds. You expect me to whip a dead man? Well, I'm not interested. Francisca, you must know that Manny Cochin was a suspect in the KG8 incident. Of course I know. On top of being the head of the smuggling ring. There is the matter of what really happened in that case that needs to be resolved. Are you done investigating? You realize now, don't you, that this girl is the only one it could be. Now come along quietly, Yathagurasu, K. Faraday. You are under arrest for the murder of Manny Cochin. M Mr. Edgeworth! Please, you have to believe me! I didn't do it! I chased the face Kyatagarasu in here, and he... He was... Already... You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. I'd like to help you reduce the number of mistaken arrests Interpol makes. What is that supposed to mean? I believe I told you that Kay Faraday is not the culprit of this crime. Very well. I suppose I have no choice. I'll show you just how foolish your claims are. Even your police confirmed that the Yathagarasu infiltrated the Babalese uh, embassy tonight. Utilizing the confusion caused by the fire, the Yathagarasu snuck into this embassy. Furthermore, this girl claims to be the Yathagarasu. And most importantly, other than her, there was no one else in here with the body. Your reason for suspecting K is because you think she is the Yatagarasu. Exactly. But it isn't just me. She calls herself the Yatagarasu. Uh, look, how many times do I have to tell you? I was only out to capture the fake Yatagarasu. Imposter or not, it matters not. The Yatagarasu is the Yatagarasu. Very well, then I shall prove that K is not the Yatagarasu who killed Mr. Manny Cochin. Go ahead and try. Show me what the prosecutors of this country are made of. Well, she wasn't the prosecutor at 13. She was studying, though. Okay, I need to get to statement 3. Of course. Just because she calls herself that, it doesn't prove that she is a killer. Hold on, wait. I want to try something.
because the uh where the hell is that again not the view tools uh Not frame skip. What is the one? Sound settings. Here it is. Uh, let's try P. Just because she calls herself that, it doesn't prove that she is a killer. No, but it does give her a motive. Vieta Grasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. Furthermore, there are documents pertaining to some smuggling activity in this room. She obviously wanted to steal them. So she killed Mr. Cochin for the key. I see. The logic is very sound. I expected nothing less of Agent Long's secretary. However, that statement just now just didn't sound right. It might just be the opening I need. Okay, no, it's still fucking fucked. My god, it's... I swear it's fucking worse. Okay, uh, sh she wanted to steal documents regarding smuggling, so she killed Mr. Cochin for the key. Agent Sheena, I regret to inform you, but there is a flaw in your logic. Oh? Even if you claim that she is the killer, and the Yatagarasu, I am certain that securing the smuggling documents is not the motive behind the murder. The key to the safe in this room was found on Mr. Cochin's body. Furthermore, the Yatagarasu would not be so stupid as to leave without the documents. By the simple fact that the, that the documents were still in the safe when we looked, it's obvious that the killer's target was not the safe at all. And perhaps she didn't know that Mr. Cochin had the key on him. If that's the case, then why would she have needed to kill him? Because I can think of no reason for her to kill him if she had not known that fact. Need reason. All of this is... Need reason. All of this is simply our conjecturing after the fact. It's entirely possible that she accidentally killed him when she was sneaking in. Perhaps she didn't notice a safe second compartment before returning the key. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact still remains that Mr. Cochin was stabbed to death. Objection. You have no definitive proof that it was Kay who committed the act. Actually, I do. I saw her holding the knife she used on the victim with my own eyes. What? Allow me to tell you a bit more about the evidence that will put her away behind bars. And we're almost done with this chapter. Sweet! The knife wound on the body is consistent with the blade of the knife. The knife with the butterfly handle is the murder weapon which the killer was holding. I assume she obtained the knife from the display rack and used it on the victim. The knife is a part of a special three-piece set which has a design like no other. The evidence and testimony at all it all points to the girl. Uh testimony, it all points to the girl. There is no counter-argument. Hold on, wait, let me just take a look at that. Okay, I believe the, the audio is just fucked. It's uh this is probably the best one. There's a lot of skill detailing on this handle. It would appear that the handle on this knife is removable. I guess so people can change them whenever they feel like it. Sounds like fun, sir. I don't think people would remove the handle just for fun, Detective. So this is what took Mr. Cochin's life. 
Some of his blood is still on the blade. Well, I've been a detective for seven years already. I've seen a lot of weapons in my days. But knives that were used to kill are always the hardest for me to bear. Yes, unlike guns, this is one weapon where you're likely to find the victim's blood on it. Yeah, just like how this one is practically drenched in it, huh, sir? Despite that, it looks like the blood managed to miss the handle somehow. Ah, huh, it sure did. It's like going underneath. That's interesting. Uh, I guess just deal with the audio. <laughs> I'm not a very big fan of this audio either, but <laughs> I don't really have much of a choice, do I? Huh. Your definitive evidence? You see now that she is definitely the killer, right? No, Mr. Edgeworth, you gotta believe me. I saw a suspicious person in a long black coat outside the embassy, I swear. And you came in here because you were chasing the suspicious person. That's right. I ran into this office be only because I was chasing after that person. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black and I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground felt next to my foot. So I turned on the lights, but then... Ah! Who's there? This is... I came to the room upon hearing the girl scream. And when I saw her holding the knife, I immediately restrained her. So the object Kay felt by her feet on the floor was the murder weapon. I had the knife analyzed right away, but we failed to find anyone's prints on it. God, my, my nose itches. <laughs> and the suspicious person in the black coat who came into this room before me. You continue to insist there was such a person, but if there was, where did they go? That... I don't know, but I know they came in here. That sounds like the desperate excuses of a suspected killer, not a trustworthy testimony. You understand, don't you? We can't trust this girl's words, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> she has a point. Even if Kay's words are the truth, we must show that they are with some that they are with some solid evidence. Okay, hold on. I believe actually Z was better. There are like three synchronizing methods. Did it just get pitched up? Oh no, this is much worse. Mr. Edgeworth, I really didn't. Okay. Don't worry. If you didn't do it, then there must exist a way for me to prove that. Still not giving up, I see. In that case, try to counter my argument if you can. Don't worry, I can and I will. Oh no. Oh, the audio is so fucked. Oh, no. Okay, I guess it was pee like again. Nope, I guess I... <laughs> I guess N really is the best one. Okay, whatever. <sighs> no, wrong key, wrong, wrong key, wrong, wrong evidence. Sorry, wrong knife. Dumbass. Can I just- I wanna skip this! Oh my god, yeah, 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 yeah. I meant to present this, the bubble ease knife! Dumbass. So the murder weapon was a knife with a butterfly design on it. 
But is that really the truth? What are you getting at? I'd like for you to take a look at this. There is blood on the blade. And yet, there's not a speck of blood <laughs> on the handle. God, can you take any fucking longer to say a sentence? This signifies that at the time of the crime, a different handle was attached to this blade. The knife that Kay was holding had its handle switched and was in fact not the real murder weapon. It wasn't? The real murder weapon? This knife can be taken apart. Shall we give it a go? As you can see, the Babalese knife has now been disassembled into two parts. The killer must have pulled the murder weapon out of the victim's body and proceeded to swap the knife's original handle with this butterfly one. It was all to create the illusion that Mr. Cochin was killed with the, with the butterfly-themed knife. Uh, uh. This should clear up any and all suspicions surrounding Kay. Your argument isn't airtight yet. Oh, so. It's possible that the girl herself is the one who switched the handles. Don't be ridiculous. For what purpose would she do such a thing? I don't care to know how a criminal thinks. The way they view the wor world is beyond the comprehension of a normal person like myself. Are you a criminal or are you normal? <laughs> Therefore, I wouldn't put anything past them, no matter how odd it may seem. <laughs> the truth is right there in front of you, and this knife will show you the way. You will come to see that Kay is not and could not have been, been Mr. Cochin's killer. There is quite a bit of Mr. Cochin's blood on this blade. Thanks to being a prosecutor, I guess I have become accustomed to seeing blood. But this is not what is important right now. Okay, yeah. Hey, look at this. That looks a lot like a flower. What is this mark on here? It's the mark of a flower. I assume you know what this means. No, not really. Butterflies rest on flowers all the time to drink their sweet nectar. And so they do. However, would this butterfly really drink the nectar of this flower? The answer is clearly not a chance. Not to prove the relationship between the butterfly and the flower with this. The embassy guide, right? You can't be serious. Hmm. It appears that you've made the connection. The flower on this blade is assigned after a certain country's national symbol. That's right. The kingdom of Alabast. In other words, this blade is from one of the alabast ornamental knives. This part of the knife handle has Babal's national symbol of the butterfly eyes. Therefore, it is undeniably Babalis in origin. But as we both know, you can't kill someone with just a knife handle. Incidentally, when exactly did the murder occur again, Agent China? Ugh, after the fire had broken out. That's right, Kay entered the Babalis embassy after the fire had taken place. Furthermore, she had not been to the Alabastian side of the building before then. On top of that, not a single person passed between the two countries during the fire. Which means that Kay could not have transported an Alabastian object over here. This makes it impossible for her to be the true killer. Whoa, way to go, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. What a great victory. Huh? Hey, why is everyone so quiet? I'm happy we got this far and cleared Kay's name. But what worries me now is what will happen next. What is the meaning of this? An alabastian knife? Here? Do you mean, how did this find its way to the Republic of the Ball? It didn't just find its way over. Rather, we should focus on how it was smuggled over. You know what? My brain hurts thinking about it while we're just standing around. Thinking while you're on the run, now that's the way a real great thief operates. Okay. Oh, thanks a bunch, Mr. Edgeworth, for proving me innocent, I mean. You believed in me the whole time, right? Tell me you did. Um, not really, but... <laughs> come on, you don't have to be shy about it. 
and your argument is still not airtight. Would you care to elaborate? I understand now that the girl didn't commit the murder. However, there is still the possibility that she is the Athagarasu. That again? Look, how many times do I have to explain it to you? I am the real Athagarasu. I'm not like that fake one that goes around setting fires, okay? Whether you're the real deal or a fake, it doesn't really matter. All I have to say is this. I have my suspicions that this girl is the one who started the fire. Preposterous. On what grounds do you suspect her of such a thing? The fact that she calls herself the Atagarasu, that in itself is a most elegant proof. Miss Sheena. Yes? I have no intention of taking back any of what I've said. I am the great thief Yatagarasu, and I refuse to allow some imposter to claim that name as their own. The path of justice that my father pointed me towards, I will walk it the best I can. It's not good to be so stubborn. I hope you can understand that. Thanks a lot for the concern, Miss Sheena. Let me share something with you too, as a token of my appreciation. Those sunglasses totally do nothing for you, so I'll steal them from you next time, okay? Well, I guess we better get going. Going? To where? To the kingdom of Alabast. If we don't go, we don't know for sure, right? I suppose not. We won't get anywhere simply by standing here thinking. To see where the Alabastian knife came from. We'll have to pay the Alabastian embassy a visit. Let's go, Miles Edgeworth. As you are my subordinate, I will not tolerate you bringing the investigation to a halt. Hm. Understood. Yay, first chapter, first chapter, first chapter. Alright, how many did this have again? Did, 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 did. Sorry, I opened a new... Oh, this has seven parts. I'm only three hours in. I don't know. Maybe I can just, like, fucking finish this today. I mean, it's gonna be late, though. Huh. I mean, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll see. Seven chapters. Yep. And we're on chapter two. Hmm. Coming off. One, 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 one. <laughs> uh, one, one. Shifu, 99 call out, so all 99 members are most likely here and accounted for, sir. Hey, you. Yeah, you and the second. You the second number one from my right. Sir, yes, sir. Here, a birthday present for you. What? Shifu, I didn't know that you knew all of our birthdays. What a kind heart you have. Shifu, you are more of a man than I'll ever be, than will ever be, sir. Um, I'm really sorry, but it's not my birthday. <laughs> Lang Shi says, a cub who disrespects others soon feel the dis disciplinary bite of an elder. The present isn't for you, it's for your younger brother's wife's younger brother. Tell him I said hi and happy birthday, won't you? Y yes, sir! Shifu, I can't believe you remember that much about each of us. Shifu, I- I'm so moved, but I can't stop crying. <laughs> what kind of cult is this? <laughs> I should probably leave them to their alone time. Right, meeting's over, everyone. Head for your posts. Dismissed! Sir! Yo, were you guys here the whole time? I got a call from Sheena, and she's already filled me in. Sounds like you're out to get in my way again. I have absolutely no intention of interrupting your investigation. I simply request that you grant me permission to investigate the Alabastian Embassy. Huh. <laughs> and what if I say no? Agent Lang, 
This man is my subordinate. As I have received permission from the ambassador, he is to be extended the same rights. Sorry, sis, but it's not that simple. Alabas has the strictest immigration regulations in the world, didn't you know? Even among my elite men, only about half of them were admitted into the country. Besides, any more cooks in the kitchen and we might spoil the soup, if you get what I mean. How dare you make such assumptions! Don't take this the wrong way, but I thought I was in charge of Al Alabas, Miss Von Karma. Uh -huh. Look, try to understand, okay? Things over in Alabast are a bit of a mess right now. What do you mean by a bit of a mess? No one told you? We had an incident in Alabast as well. This is what we call a decision based on the investigation, Mr. Prosecutor. Look, Wolfie, just let us in already. Is there a problem here, Agent Long? Oh. Not really, just having a discussion about whether or not to let these guys in. Ambassador Alba, I ask that you please allow these people to join the investigation. Having a debate because of my country? I'm terribly sorry for placing you good people in that kind of situation. It is all because I lack the strength to govern well. Please, it is nothing of the sort, Ambassador. You weakling! How the hell do I even pronounce that? <laughs> Quirkus? <laughs> That's so quirky. Oh my god, Quirkus. Like, such a fucking quirky name, like... Curse your frailty and in inability to affect change in your country. What are you? The thing is, investigations conducted in my country have been under Agent Long. And it is my judgment that in order to minimize disruption in the investigation, I should leave everything up to Agent Lang. There, you see? Oh, no way! Ambassador Alba, I ask you to please reconsider letting them into Alabast. What's that? My very own secretary has been murdered in the Babalese Embassy. And he was apparently caught up in some very shady dealings, completely unbeknownst to me. So I ask for your cooperation in our investigation. These aren't much, but I hope they can cover your travel expenses to Babal someday. Alright, alright, I get it. Even if you beg Ambassador Alba, I still have to give the final okay anyway. Alright, you hear that, Mr. Edgeworth? We're in. Not so fast, my little crow girl. You're still a witness in the Babal murder. So I'd like you to please stay in the Republic of Babal. Detective Gumshoe, please take good care of Kay for me. Yes, sir. Sounds good to me. The fewer troublemakers, the better. That was a failed raspberry. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Love that. Hey, Miss Redworth. Yes? So I wanted to ask for a while now, but... That lady over there, is she who I think it is? She is? Ah, oh, that's right. I didn't introduce the two of you yet. Francisca von Karma, the prosecutorial prodigy. It's nice to see you again. Oh, I knew it! You're the whip lady. You may address me as Miss von Karma. Miss von Karma, leave I leave the investigation of Alabast in your hands. Thanks. Rest assured, I will outsmart both the smuggling ring and the Atagarasu. The smuggling ring, huh? Perhaps I should ask Francisca a bit more about them before I head into Alabast. Ah, and I mustn't forget to thank Ambassador Palaino, Palaino for all that he has done for me. Ambassador Palaino. Palaino. I'm in your debt. No, no, it's nothing. Because it's about all I can do for you, I'm afraid. I only ask you, please bring Manny's killer to justice. I will, Ambassador, on my honor. Wow, you're so sensational. You really piqued my curiosity. I know they aren't much, but know that I'm giving them to you wholeheartedly. No, that's quite all right. 
Oh, well, how about this then? And what exactly is it? It's fountain pen ink. Known as the Babalese ink. It's made exclusively in Babal. So this is the Babalese ink. We make it from witch crystal oil, which is mined through our mineral mines. Please accept this ink, one dip of your fountain pen in this. And you can write for hours in your organizer. How fortunate for me, the ink in my pen just happened to have run out. I gladly accept your gracious gift. Great! Wonderful! I guarantee to you that writing with our ink is an unforgettable experience. And since we don't export it, if you run out, you're always welcome to come and visit our fair nation. Talk about cornering the customer along with the market. You made so much progress in your investigation in such a short period of time. It's truly amazing. Agent Hicks, whose help I had requested, was cut down before he completed his task. There is no room for further failure in my perfect investigation. In spite of that, I believe you were able to obtain some insight into the ring, correct? It was nothing. I simply made some deductions based on my smuggled on the smuggled item I was following. You mean the Babalese ink? And why are there restrictions on the export of Babalese ink to begin with? That's classified Interpol info. Francisca, as your subordinate, I am part of your investigation now. Don't you think it would be beneficial if I was as well informed as you? Point taken. Very well, I'll fill you in. Recently, we discovered some very well-made counterfeit bills circulating in Shengfa. Counterfeit bills. Yes, as you may have deduced, the counterfeits are being made with Babal's special Babalese ink. And it's virtually impossible to distinguish bills made with Babalese ink from real ones. Thus, it was only natural for Interpol to keep an eye on the Republic of Babal. That's where this document comes into play, correct? Correct! Mr. Cochin was smuggling large amounts of Babalese ink. Furthermore, he was charged with running the embassy's printing equipment. And that's all the evidence I need to know that he was the head of the smuggling ring. However, there remains one tiny problem. Let me guess. You still have yet to find the counterfeit bills or the smuggled ink. Yes, and while we're listening, while we're, while we're listing things, I might as well add the counterfeit plates to the pile. Since we haven't been able to locate any of these items in the Babalese Embassy, we're looking into the Alabastian Embassy next. It doesn't matter where they're hidden. Mark my words, I will find them. Well, shall we get going? What's wrong, Kay? I didn't get permission to enter Alabast. So we're going to go gather whatever info we can over on the Bubble East side, okay? Alright, I'm counting on you two. Right, and I'm counting on you and Miss Von Karma to sniff out the clues in Alabast. Oh, and Miss Redworth, if you happen to come across my phony, you let me know, okay? If you tell me, I'll rush on over straight away, no matter where you are. I'll let you know when the time comes. We love glitchy audio. <laughs> Nothing much I can do about it, I tried. <laughs> hmm. Whoa! What do you think you're doing to my subordinate? You're... Edgy! Oh, thank the heavens you're here! I'm in a really, really big pickle, your lordship. A raven, it appears... It appeared, poof, and then disappeared. Swoosh! And though I am the steel samurai, my sword... It... Oh, I'm so confused. I don't know what anything means anymore. Who is this fruitcake? I am Larry of the House of Butts, married man of New Old Tokyo, my lady. Now remember, this person is one of your friends, isn't he, Miles? Yes, frighteningly enough, he is. Hey, what's up with that answer? Your best bud is in the bind and you act like it's no big deal. What sort of bind are we talking about here? The suspect kind. 
I accidentally became a suspect in a murder! Again. I see. That is quite the bite. Not that we're in the, le in the least bit surprised. Yes, I pretty much expected this news. From the instant I saw this unlucky face. His name is Larry Butts. I've known him since grade school. And for as long as I've known him, he has been the world's largest source of trouble with a capital T. Hey, what kind of introduction is that? You're so mean, Edgy. If you're not careful, you might find your tiny number of friends go down by one. That wasn't called for. Besides, you're... Wait, hold on. Larry, was it you? You're the one who rubbed my Steel Samurai autograph. <laughs> we love the fanboy. Yes. Yes. Hmm? Oh, you didn't notice earlier? I even winked at you through my headpiece. What's going on? Why are your beats red? Sorry, but could you not speak to me right now? No, he is so sad. Oh, sorry. Am I interrupting your comical yet melodramatic play? Huh, so this is the incident you mentioned earlier. Mr. Prosecutor, this man, this childhood friend of yours, is our prime suspect. Of what, you ask? Of the murder of a man who had snuck into this embassy. Mask the mask the second. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Mask the mask the second. <laughs> I was like, he just wanted an autograph with these steel samurai. And then it was just from Larry. He's so betrayed. Wait, right, hold on. Did it get updated or anything? Please tell me it did. No, it doesn't. Only Larry could get himself into yet another mess as fine as this. The second, apparently. But no matter what the facts seem to say, Larry is not the type to commit murder. Still, it's a rather daunting stroke of misfortune I've struck. I have to prove that Larry Butts is innocent of all wrong wrongdoing. And yet no Ron. Shifu, you identified the victim. Good work. I'll take that report now. Agent Long, would you mind if I took a peek at it as well? What did I tell you earlier, Mr. Prosecutor? Don't get in my way. There's only enough flesh here to feed one wolf, and that is me. So no, you may not take a peek. But Agent Long... I gotta sneeze again. Bad! <laughs> Agent Long... Will you allow an investigator such as myself to take a look? Ah, uh, yes, of course. You let the, de the detective see the file. You're... Detective Bad. You're the prosecutor, Miss Redgeworth, right? Fancy meeting you here, detective. You weren't expecting me. Ever since that day seven years ago, I've chased after the Atagarasu. Non-stop. I even pressured Interpol into keeping me in the loop. In case a card was ever found. What incredible dedication to the case. Detective Bad knows the Yatagarasu's MO very well. And his passion for the chase hasn't died down in these seven long years. It's something I can respect. But Detective Bad, I must ask. Are you going to make an ally out of this prosecutor? I love how he takes it out of his... Out of his mouth as if it's a cigarette, but it's just a lollipop. Amazing. We stand. My only goal is to arrest the Atagarasu. If he can get to the bottom of this case, then I'm willing to share info with him. I am in your debt, Detective De Detective Gum B Bad B -b Bad. <laughs> I wanted to say gumshoe because that's like the only only word we've said with detective so far. But now now it's bad. About the murder of Damascus II, would you be willing to fill me in on a few of the details? When the Atagarasu showed up, Agent Lang, Lang and I took ourselves off guard duty and put ourselves in charge of directing things at this crime scene. Taking advantage of the chaos. Wait, how old is he? I'm just curious. 
He's 60? He's older than the judge? Oh, Quercus. His name is 72. His name is 72. His age is 72. Lung is 27. And Larry is 25, so that means that uh, Edgeworth is 25 too, right? Or was he like the younger one of them? So he's 26, I don't remember. Something like that anyways. Okay, he's still 17. Nice. She nice question mark. Or this guy is 19. Callisto is 29. Only 29, interesting. Taking advantage of the chaos. Damascus II, he broke into this embassy. Probably to steal some treasure or another. And I suppose he lost his life when he was forced to fight someone else in this room. Older than the judge. Not younger, older than the judge. Why exactly was that man placed under arrest, detective? That samurai? He was born looking suspicious, but not for the reasons you suspect, I assure you. As you can plainly see, he is completely harmless. Well, it was just a random guess. It's not like he's actually under arrest. Tonight, here at the Alabastian em Embassy, Ambassador Alba, he was to give a commemorative speech. And that's when the Atagarasu showed. But keep in mind, the Atagarasu isn't who I'm talking about right now. Those seats for the guests who had been called to sit in them were empty. A no-show. Who was it that failed to take their seats? The Steel Samurai. Until the speech was to begin, each member of the entire Steel Samurai family was to wait in a separate room. However, for some weird reason, that man was spotted in a different location than his assigned room at that time. Where was he? He was on the roof. With one of his legs down a chimney. Larry, please, can you fucking nod? That chimney leads directly into this room. <laughs> Larry Butts, you really have done yourself this time. What were you thinking? In any case, I believe it's high time for me to start my investigation. Knife rack, let's go. There are some weapons on display on this wall. A crossbow, and under that, a seat of knives bearing a flower motif. They must be the counterparts of the Babalese knives. Which means that the blades inside these scabbards should match the blade that was used to kill Mr. Cochin. Knives adorned with flowers are on display here. I suspect that these are the counterparts to the Babalese knives. The blades on these, of these knives should match the blade of the knife that killed Mr. Cochin. Ooh. One of the knives is missing its blade. Let's see if the two pieces, the blade and the handle, fit each other. It would appear that they fit together quite well, almost seamlessly. And this means that an alabastian knife did find its way into Babal. But how? Oh no, that's not it. Yeah, exactly. He's not even 50. It's this. Larry, how about this spear? Oh, are you feeling it? Bam! I thought there was something strange about this spear. Tell me, Larry, is it just me, or is the spear a bit bent? What? No way! It's exactly as it should be, yo! We have here the autograph you wrote for me earlier. Now take a good look at this this which you drew with your own hands. You can see that the spear is clearly of a different shape. Ah! What do you have to say to that? I'm sorry! 
When I hold the spear in my hands, all of a sudden, I feel super powerful. And then, drink practice. Oh, that's not. Oh. I was spinning it around and around. Bam! It hit the wall. You unbelievable. This is an embassy. But I've always been like that. Ever since I was a kid. One time in an, on an overnight field trip, I bought a fake sword and played with it late, late that night. I'm just a useless hot-blooded man! Larry, clarify that for me, will you? Okay, so it was some field trip and I began to shadow fight with myself. Not that! I mean what you said earlier about spinning the spear and hitting the wall. Well, that! It's no biggie. It's not like I left a hole or anything. That's not why I'm asking, Larry. The samurai spear is made of metal. I somehow doubt that a move as simple as spinning it around would cause it to bend. Man, Edgy, you're so naive! What? Where did that come from? Well, you keep calling it the Samurai Spear, but it's not real. You can't really fight someone with it. Because it's hollow on the inside. You could hit it against practically anything and it will bend. Is that so? Tell me you thought it was real. Oh, but don't take it the wrong way. I just think that part of your personality is cute. I see. Your friendship truly is something special, Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> It's not friendship, it's utter humiliation. <laughs> so this is the victim, the mask the second. What is with this gaudy outfit? You don't know about mask the mask? A few months ago, this thief caused a lot of havoc on the po populace. So this thief is separate from the Atagarasu. I thought they were for a while, because their MO and targets were different. So this... So he just clarified that this is set like a few months after the third game, pretty much. Steal Samurai's bait to him! The mask likes high value trinkets and jewels and being gaudy as his signature. Gumshoe was in charge of that investigation, so he'd know more about the mask. That's all right. All I'd probably hear are tales of his failure anyway. Hmm. We haven't changed a bit, I see. In any case, let's get started here, shall we? There's not a single shred of fashion sense in the mask's costume. Well, at least I can appreciate the great effort he must, ha must have put into making it. Two don't know, you can buy this costume almost anywhere now. Interesting. It's being sold? Since when? It's around New Year's, and the streets are practically flooded with them. Turns out the mask is a lot more popular than I thought it'd be. I can't believe that foolish fool would dress in fool's... Fool's clothing to act foolishly. We got, we got your point about three foolishes back, Francisco. What's this? What is he holding? It looks like a piece of paper from a notepad. It would appear that directions on how to reach this room were written by hand. Hmm. There's something written on the back as well. I'd like you to steal the Primaduk statue in this room. What is that supposed to mean? Who writes a note to themselves like that? If I had to guess from the text, I would say that this actually this is actually a request from someone about what to steal. Just who is the person that requested the theft of the primitive statue? Let me see what I have to. Mm. Summon their head, apparently. I thought the mask had to quit the business. This guy, he's just a copycat using the name, a phony successor. He's just another petty thief. His real identity is an out of work guy by the name of Kashi No. Kashi No. Okay, he's 29 and wanted on larceny cha charges. From his clothes and what he was carrying. 
We determined that his that this guy is the real Damask II. The cause of death appears to be the loss of blood from the back of his head. It seems that he was struck with something very hard. In other words, he was bludgeoned to death. So this is the murder weapon in this case. There's blood on the blade. It's a rather sweeping sword, isn't it? What did you expect? It's a steel samurai daddy's secondary weapon. It's steel samurai daddy's secondary weapon. So I guess they like brought steel the steel samurai back because the steel samurai ended and then there was a nickel samurai. And now steel samurai is back as steel samurai daddy. That has to be what's happening. I hate it. <laughs> the fact that it, this is... This is the sentence that Edgeworth has said. It's canon. <laughs> oh no, I believe that was a, a, a Japanese name. What did you expect? It's a steel samurai daddy's secondary weapon. I mean, that's, that's his name, I guess, so... He only call it his secondary because although he uses his sword in most of his battles, it's his, it's his trusty samurai spear that he, tur that he turns to in a real fight. We get it, you're a nerd and we love you for it, it's okay. You sure know quite a bit about the steel samurai. It's only because I saw the stage show earlier. Mm, yeah, that's only... <laughs> only because I saw the stage show, yeah, of course. <laughs> the owner of this sword is the steel samurai, or in other words, Larry. I should probably ask him about it, as detrimental as it is to proving him innocent. <laughs> yeah, sure, AG. Larry, there are a few things I need to ask you about. Hey, how about that? I got a few things I gotta ask you too. What is it? It's like, both you and him. How is it that the two of you always manage to have some cute or hot girl by your side? And Frenzy, what about the promise you made to me? Promise? What promise? The one where you said you would model for my next book, Frenzy's Whippity Whip Trip. Oh, he's bringing you back! Yeah. He is such a big fan of the Steel Samurai. It's really cute. I love it. Yeah! I make no such promise. Ever since grade school, you've had a certain saying about Larry. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Please, like, take a mention, uh, mention, take notice of how Phoenix's name is never uttered once, but they talk about him. Still, just like him. It's like you and him. That other guy. What was his name again? Uh, Hawk? No, uh... Uh, hawk wrong? <laughs> Him, that guy, the defense attorney. <laughs> when something smells, it's usually the butts. One needs to look no further than this man to find the king of troublemakers. Hmm. As I recall, aren't you calling yourself Loris de Nim now? Oh, okay. I was like, this is Dunim. Larise Dunim. Get that straight in your head, Edgy. Ow, 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 ow. Now I remember. You're that rude, pale imitation of a real artist. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. I gave up on that whole Larise business. Besides, when Benjolina. Benjolina? <laughs> left me and my heart in pieces. That's when Mindy walked into my life. My god. She's been so good to me that I wanted to help her in some way. And I figured I could I could through this steel samurai outfit. Your name blathering makes less and less sense each time we meet. I believe he's saying that he picked up his part-time job. This part-time job is a steel samurai, so that he may attempt to capture the heart of the actress who plays the pink pin princess. You got it! I knew you'd know what I meant, Edgy. Not really, it's not so much as I understood. But a simple deduction based on your usual modus operandi. Larry. Larry, I'd like you to confess right now, to everything you did tonight. 
from this. Hey, don't tell me you suspect me too. Nonsense. I don't believe you have the mental acuity to... Acuity needed to plan and execute a murder. However, we are talking about you here, so I find it hard to believe that nothing happened. For past experience has taught me that you are always at the center of some inane event. Insane event. Edgy! How can you be so mean, stopping me with your words like that? Unfortunately, I don't have the time to search out a key to unlock your heart this time. So I suggest that you cooperate and tell me what you know. Okay, okay, I get it. Just stop Frenzy from rip whipping me from behind. So uh, I guess you know what I did, right, Edgy? I can't even begin to imagine. However, I imagine that whatever you were up to was probably beyond my imagination. So you will tell me what exactly you did, Larry. Nope, not yet, Edgy. It'll take more than that to loosen my lips. A lot more! Confess, now. Okay, uh, well, I was up on the roof. And why exactly were you there? Oh, well, you know, that wintry custom and the legendary hero. Legendary. Hero. Santa Claus. Santa. Claus. Wanted to do that thing he does, so I climbed up to one of the chimneys. God, can you say... Just... If this doesn't fucking prove that Larry has ADHD, I don't know what does, because honestly, that's me. Basilisk wrong? <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know how many times I've just, like, tried doing things just because I've been curious, like... But, like, what, what is it like? What what happens if I do that? And then I regret it immediately after because I'm like, well, duh, obviously that was gonna happen. What do you think? I don't really have, like, any good, like, examples right now, but I can confirm that I've done, like, some similar, <laughs> similar shit. And it's very, like, it's very much ADHD, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Personality. But actually, oh my god, I have one. It was like when I was like three years old and I apparently found some blue hair dye or something in, in the bathroom. And m me being the genius I was, was like smeared everywhere. <laughs> so we have like some pictures of me with like some blue hair dye or something. Some blue goop anyways. And it's like over the toilet and just like everywhere. But it was just because I was curious. Obviously it's also because I was a kid at the time, but like... It never stops. I don't know how many times I just like rip something apart because I'm like, oh, I wonder what's inside. And then I regret it immediately because now that thing is destroyed. <laughs> I have like some hair dye on my face and just like everywhere, except for in my hair. Though probably some of it was in my hair too, but like, yeah. <laughs> Do that thing he does, so I climbed up to one of the chimneys. But when I got there, there was smoke pouring out of the chimney. Interesting. And? Well, I couldn't go down the chimney with smoke coming out, right? So I gave up. Larry, you do realize that Santa Claus does not exist, right? Of course I know! I did graduate from junior high, you know. I keep bringing that up. And you should also understand this. If Santa was real, he would be the biggest unlawful trespasser in history. Aw, oh, crud! It is your attempt to imitate Santa that has landed you as prime suspect in this murder. Come on, man. What's so wrong with pretending to be Santa? Let's start with the fact that... That, that it will be the... The Ides of March in a matter of hours. Oh, okay, so we're in February. Santa only visits homes on December 24th. That's in December, you nitwit. Well, actually... <laughs> this is... This has... Been... So... Like... So annoying to me. Since I was... Young. Pretty much. Or younger, I guess. Because everyone is just like, oh... Santa Claus works on one night. But I'm like, but what about us in Europe who celebrate... Christmas 
on the 24th. We wake up on the 24th with presents under the tree. <laughs> that will mean he actually works two nights. <laughs> or he's a time traveler. I used to just put whatever was in the bottles in the shower on my head just to see what it would do. Yeah, that's real, that's real ADHD energy. That's what I was looking for, the energy. It's like you have that like kid energy, right? But it doesn't stop. It just keeps going. Ah. Interesting. We wake up on the 24th with with the, the presents un under the tree already. And we're allowed to open one present. Well, technically it's not actually a present. It's like the thing that just like a, a bonus present that is in like the stockings. Around 3. Interesting. We don't usually uh, open up our presents until after Six. Yeah, because there is this like choir that uh, sings Christmas in at around five or something. Yeah, no, we don't really have Santa. We or we have like Santa maybe if like there are kids around, of course. Oh, they have St. Nicholas, the 5th of December. Interesting. Anyways, I'm derailing. I'm spending way too much time. As in December, you nitwit. No! Hey, wait a sec. We're not in court. Larry, about the samurai sword that was used as, as the murder weapon. What was that? Well, I shook hands with the ambassador right in this room, you know. Yes, apparently you did. And well, I totally forgot about it and left it behind when I, le when I left afterwards. You want to talk about shock? I was the most shocked of all when I heard it killed someone. Shocked! Foolish fool looking especially foolish for foolishly stating such a foolish excuse. You forgot to take something that big with you. Who would believe such a tale? It's Larry we're talking about. I believe anything. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Von Karma, but I believe him. Because if anyone could forget something like that, it would be Larry. Yes, exactly. Edgy, you believe me? I just knew that our friendship is something special. Anyway, even if Larry had simply forgotten the sword and left it behind, that in no way clears his name. Which means that I will have to prove his innocence from a different angle. Okay. I gotta examine the small table. The person shaking hands with the steel samurai in this picture is Ambassador Alba. It was taken just before the murder. The steel samurai must be very popular, and they're even using the national treasure as backdrop. For St. Nicholas, you can get small presents and some candy from the purse every morning. Then the fifth, you get something slightly bigger. Ah, okay, I see. The black face? What? What the hell does that mean? Okay, yeah, please do send me a picture on Discord. Just don't understand what exactly is so great about Top Knot there. Hmm, clearly there is a depth to this show that a young person like you can't fathom. <laughs> oh my god. Edgeworth. 
Speaking of young people, aren't young children the target audience of this show of costumed actors? The exact same statue sitting in that Babalese office be examined. It's a primitive statue. It was the national treasure of the Principality of Kodopia. There was only one of these statues, meaning that one of the two is a replica. But both Alabas and Babal claim to have the real thing. What an incredibly childish fight to have. statue. There was one of these on the bubble east side as well. I hear it's very valuable and made of pure gold. It was the national treasure of Kadopia. Oh, you literally mean meant blackface. Well, you know, um, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that it's okay because obviously it's not. But like, you know, it's it's like a, it's like a different culture thing. It, it is a yikes though, but it, it's like, um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't get into this because I fucking never stop because it's just like, such an, an, an annoying thing. Like, I, I find it so annoying. Like, it's, uh, it's the blackface necessary though. Like, that's the, that's the thing. Anyways. I hear it's very valuable and made of pure gold. It was the national treasure of Kodopia. There was only one of these statues. Meaning that one of the two is a replica. But both Alabas and Babal claim to have the real thing and won't budge from their claim. What an incredibly childish fight to have. Statue Alabas... The Deuce statue. Oh, I can't get it. So apparently there's something strange with this. Oh yeah, it's tilted sideways. Not tilted, but like turned sideways. Look at this photo and tell me what you find odd about this scene, Miss Von Karma. Ah, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We love that. Huh. <sighs> The apparent joy on the ambassador's face as he shakes the top knot's head? That's not it. I was trying to point out that the statue in the photo is facing a different way. But anyway, <laughs> you're right. The statue is a national treasure. As such, only an ambassador or a secretariat level person is allowed to handle it. The fact that the statue is facing one way in this photo, and now it's facing a different direction in this preserved crime scene. It's proof that someone touched the statue around the time of the crime. Hmm, two gorgeous flowers are in full bloom here. 
I'm sure flowers as lovely as these must have, a, have an equally as lovely name. Miles Edgeworth. Are you done staring? I should hardly think passion flowers are all that rare. Oh, he likes flowers! Passion flowers. That's a rather unusual name. It was named by priests in the 15th century of the, for the Passion of Christ. Hmm, as they say, you learn something new every day. Hmm, I guess that about wraps up my investigation. Hmm, that's... Yo, Pink Princess! How are you feeling? Still feeling ill? And yet another strange character comes out of the woodwork. And so the Pink Princess also comes to pay the Alabastian Embassy a visit. I believe I may need to speak with her as well. Miss Pink Princess, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. Miss Pink Princess, if you could... Oh no! Heh, <laughs> and this must be what they call fate. Could this happen two days in a row? What the? Aren't you Miss Olbank? Or are you so surprised? Ah, so you're the one they got. They got to play the Steel Samurai. It's too bad I didn't realize that until now. You were acquaintances with Larry. Why, yes, we worked at the same company for a little while, you know. That's why it's okay, my edgy poo. You don't need to be jealous. Oh. I was in the next room, you know, trying to get in some beauty sleep. But it was so noisy here that I couldn't fall asleep. So I came over to complain. So I Im so imagine my shock when I saw my precious edgy poo waiting here for me. I mean, who could have imagined that you, that you would ever come to a show like this? I guess I've misjudged you, Edgy Poo. You misjudged him. I thought he was trying to avoid me, you know. That was no misjudgment on your part. That's precisely what I'm trying to do. God, I'm getting hungry again. No, I only have one bar left. But it looks like the winds have shifted, and he's now willing to be chased after. I'm simply overwhelmed. So don't you worry, Edgypoo. I chase you for forever to the ends of the earth. Isn't that just peachy? Her titty armor is disturbing. This is one of those rare times when Francisca and I actually see eye to eye. Ah, yes, I didn't even notice the titty armor. I was... Now then... <clears throat> what are you doing here? I thought you were working at Gatewaterland as a pink badger. What are you talking about? That was ages ago! That was yesterday! Look, I worked at Global Studios before a long time ago, right? Well, they called me up this morning, kind of out of the blue, actually. They called you. Apparently the girl who plays the pink princess collapsed from a bad cold. It happened so suddenly, so they called me in to be her last-minute replacement. Do they not have enough people on staff at that studio? I really couldn't say no. So here I am, playing the role of the heroine. Instead of that Mindy girl, I mean. But the poor girl, I feel bad for her. Because they let me stand in for her, she's going to have a terrible time when she returns. Oh no. Because I tell you, they're really just a bunch of simpletons. You're a rather lively old lady. So, basically, you received the standing request this morning, correct? You got it. If you need to see it, I've got it right here, look. It appears that she is telling the truth. I tell you, my fine acting moved the entire audience to tears. Yes, tears of laughter, as I recall. But being famous has its problems too. You know, here, take a look at this. It's a letter from a stalker. I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving knight. <laughs> I 
I get it now. I must have repressed this part. <laughs> but I get it now. I was just about- I was just taking my break when I found this stuck under the door to my room. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kinds of things. Look at what it says. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight. You're a loving knight. Hmm, absolutely revolting. I mean, you'd think you could get my name right. There's no accent in my name. Wait, this horrible handwriting. Where have I seen this before? Ah, but just... But now that you're here, Ajipu, I feel 100% safe. Huh? <laughs> I... Where do I factor into this? You'd bust that evil stalker man for my sake, wouldn't you, Ajipu? Well, if you allow me the liberty to handle this in my own way, I'll gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. Oh, come on, Ajipu. Stop being so dismissive and playing hard to get. What were you doing at the time of the crime? What crime? What? After the show was over, I've had nothing but free time on my hands. So I used a fireplace in the room next door to keep my bad hip warm. Well, a murder occurred in the room ne right next to yours. Is that right? Oh, Ejipu, I'm so scared. Hold me, caress me. No, ma'am, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, if you could please not cling on to my personage. In any case, I take it then that you failed to show up at Ambassador Alba's speech. No, oh, that. No, I didn't go. I mean, I may have the heart of a young or tender maiden, but my body just refuses to cooperate at times. As soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. I couldn't move at all. I'm gonna get a restraining order. Can you provide proof of your condition? No, you just go on ahead and ask the doctors in the infirmary. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to the embassy. I have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave that room is rather pleasant. Prosecutor von Karma, a brother police thought. <laughs> Good work. You may leave now, officer. Hmm. This dog. I requested the assistance of a dog in our search for the Yatagarasu. Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country too. Hey, you're a real cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy. That's the police dog Gumshoe has been taken care of. I think its name is... Methyl! <laughs> what a fitting name for a police dog that dashes out in front and attacks. That action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve the case for us, you know. Now, Missile, I want you to find some clues. Go! Good dog. You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a certain someone I know. Now what do we have here? What is this? It looks like a small hot dog, but... Hmm, wait, Francisca, isn't that an official samurai dog? Ah, no! Bad missile! He ate it! I wonder if it's alright for him to eat that? It's just a meat substance snack featuring the steel samurai. I'm sure he'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you gathered there in a single quick glance. We should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog there in the first place. Huh? Well, it looks like that snack wasn't all the missile found. Um, what do we have here? It appears to be a lady's undershirt. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing. I somehow doubt that. It doesn't look like the shirt would even fit him. A samurai dog in a lady's undershirt. What are these two items doing in a room like this? Given the circumstances, the lady's undershirt could only belong to one person. I suppose we should get this over with and ask the owner of said undershirt about it. Okay, but can we pet the dog? He was a much bigger help than I thought he would be. Yes, however, there are a few aspects I don't understand about what he found. In that case, you should keep on investigating until you understand. Now my subordinate, continue with the investigation. Uh, Alright, I will. 
It is with great dread that I that I proceed and do what I must to solve the case. I want to pet. Can't pet. Want pet. Let me pet. I mean, this has to be hers, right? If you could please take a look at this brown-colored undershirt. Oh, Ejipu, what is the meaning of this? Why did you steal that thing from my bags? All you had to do was ask, and I would have gladly given you as many as you'd like. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. The shirt was found here at the crime scene. What? Come now, why don't you just confess and explain what it's doing here? I know nothing. Nothing, I tell you. What? Oh, but I admit that I, that I used the fireplace to dry that shirt. But I can't really help the fact that I had to, you know? Wearing that pink princess costume was like being in a sauna. And on top of that, I get fingered as a suspect. You're too cruel, Ejipu. Please stop using that word. It's not good. <laughs> You're claiming that you never once set foot inside this room. Of course I am. If I had been the one to find the body, do you think I'd be as calm as relax and relaxed as I am? I tell you, it's always like this. Oh, okay, okay, of course. I mean, I should have fucking, should have realized that she would have gone on the fucking terrain about this, but okay. Can you fucking stop? Oh my god, she just fucking keeps going. Um, well. I don't believe she is lying about her actions. So I can safely assume she really was drying her shirt by the fireplace on her break. And somehow the undershirt managed to move from the next room into this one. I assume the samurai dog was also yours. Ah, oh, that brilliant mind of yours. You really can see through everything about me. And so the feeling of dread continues, but I suppose I should ask for more details. That samurai dog was yours, wasn't it? Oh, of course, I'm forever yours, my edgy wedgy poo. <laughs> Hold it! If you could please just stick to what I asked you. Edgy, are you and Miss Obag? No! <laughs> you really don't change, do you? When will you learn how to take a joke? Anyway, that samurai dog isn't wasn't mine. And those things are a present from the studio to the embassy. A present? The studio bigwigs basically told us to play delivery boys. You were supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy people and then tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the push cart just to move them all. The studio guys should have delivered those guys this, those things by themselves, right? Edgy? So, did you deliver the samurai dogs to the embassy staff as per your instructions? Hey, Edgy! Don't just ignore me and my question! Aren't you going to stick up for me? Ah, about that. See, after the show, I went to rest this rest spell in the dressing room. Because of my bad hip, you know, you know, because of your bad hip, we fucking know. And there were, there they were. The samurai dogs were just sitting on the on the dressing room floor. I suppose you, you had to make preparations for distri distributing them after the show. Well, if by preparation you mean sampling them as well. Excuse me. No, oh, I tried one and thought they were actually quite good. Sorry, but I just had to find out. I know it was silly of me to think this, but. I figured that since they were for a kids show, their taste was probably for kids too. But they were so good that I couldn't stop. Before I went back to my room, I just had to help myself. To a half a dozen or so boxes. Six of them? As I sat there by the roaring fire, warming them and eating them, I thought, Ah, this is... Hm, huh, what is it now? Oh, I know, I bet you want a box too, don't you, my edgy poo? Well, who am I to say no to you? But I'll only give you one. The rest are all for me. Looks like the lesson for today is that when the steel samurai and the pink princess take off the masks, they transform into a pair of annoying troublemakers. Pretty much. Ah, uh, okay. I'm going to logic mode, okay. Mm -mm. Smoke from chimney and use the fireplace. Mm 
And there is no trace of this room's fireplace being used. And your point is? Ahem. <clears throat> Smoke was supposedly pouring out of the chimney connected to this fireplace. At least according to Larry. This is a contradiction of facts, is it not? Are you sure he wasn't just disoriented or something up on that roof? There is testimony from an investigator that puts Larry at this particular chimney. So no, I don't think it was a mistaken impression on Larry's part. On the other hand, the fireplace in the next room was being used at the time. Where do you suppose the smoke from that fireplace went? Ah, I see. So what you are proposing is this. The smoke that came out of the chimney was actually from his old bag's fire. So basically the fireplaces of neighboring rooms. Share one chimney. Is that what you're saying? What you're implying? Precisely. The lady's undershirt that Missile found. Ugh! Why are you getting all excited over holding on to a lady's undergarment? Miles Edgeworth, you uncouth sea slug! If you know the owner of said undershirt, then hurry up and return it to her already. You have it all wrong, and this is evidence. And the owner of this piece of evidence was in the room next door. And yet despite that, Missile found it in the fireplace of this room. This lady's undershirt. Are you seriously claiming that it was somehow passed through a solid brick wall? Not quite. The fireplace in this room is connected to a chimney. The other fireplace in the other room is also connected to the same chimney, leading us to the possibility that the two fireplaces are connected to each other. Perhaps a closer look at the back of the fireplace is in order. There is an X on the back of the wall of on the back wall of the fireplace. Let's see if I can't get a better look at it. What in the... The wall separating this room's fireplace from the next room's... Next room's fireplace apparently turns. As I suspected, this fireplace does indeed connect this room to the neighboring room. The neighboring room? There appears to be nothing particular about the next room. But the fact that there is nothing special about the next room isn't what's important. The fact that there is a special there is a secret passageway through this room. It's the fact that there is a secret passageway through this room's fireplace. We now know that the fireplace connects the two rooms, but how exactly is that significant? You aren't going to suddenly name the old lady as the mask's the second killer now, are you? No, she couldn't move at all because of her stiff hip. So she could not have been the one. Unfortunately, I believe that this fireplace has nothing whatsoever to do with the Mask of the Second's murder. Yeehaw. It would appear that the answer has made itself un made itself known. You're making quite a confident face there, Mr. Prosecutor. Bring it on. I'm ready to counter any argument you may have. Very well then, if you are prepared. I'll show you exactly where my deductions have led me. Good, I'm counting on you, Edgy. Leave it to me, Larry. My first attack will be to expose your lie for what it really is. M my lie? I know that there is still something you are keeping from the rest of us. W what's wrong with you? Why is it that you won't believe me no matter what I say, Edgy? Curse you, I should just hurry up and die already if that's how it's gonna be. I'll confess to every murder in the whole world, and then kill myself. And throw everything into mass confusion! Heh, <laughs> you made some wonderful friends as a child, I see. Larry, I only have one thing to say to you. Even if you make that face at me, it's no use. A man who is ready to die is strong-willed, you know? Larry, it doesn't matter what sort of harebrained trouble you've caused. I only ask that you do not lie to me. If you cause an innocent person to be judged unfairly because of some ins insipid lie, I will never forgive you. Edgy! <laughs> Although, allow me to say that I consider you to be among the innocent in this case, and that I will draw the real killer out. You can trust me on this. Alright, I, I... this time... this time I'll tell you the whole truth, okay? What happened, what didn't happen, the works! Just what happened will do.
Now then, if you would please testify as to what you did up on the roof tonight. After the show, I left the pushcart in the rose garden and came into the embassy. Then they took a picture of me shaking hands with the ambassador. After that, until my next appearance, I had some free time, so I wandered around. That's when I spotted the chimney. A chimney like that is a rare thing, you know. So then I wanted to play Santa and decided to give it a try. Larry, I thought I just finished telling you to not lie anymore. Um, but it's kind of ultra-embarrassing. And what exactly is so ultra-embarrassing that you can't tell me? Hey, G-Man, you just said it was embarrassing, so of course I can't just blurt it out. So you're just gonna have to reason it out of me. As your superior, I command you to hurry up and expose this man's lie. I have every intention to, for I'm not about to let us waste time on such a trifling matter. I gotta get to statement five! That's when- okay, here it is. Yes, so then, and then we gotta press. Yes. You suddenly wanted to play Santa. Larry, talk faster. Oh, well, actually, I dressed up as Santa once before already. That was done at Gord Lake. <laughs> I appreciate it if you would, wouldn't would dredge up such unnecessary memories for me. Oh no, it's, it's that case. Heh, <laughs> sounds like you guys share a lot of history. A perk to being childhood friends, huh? Besides, it's not a felony to dress up and play Santa, you know. Santa doesn't go around killing people after he comes down to down the family's chimney, after all. Actually, is it worth delving into whether or not playing Santa is a big deal? Raise an objection. Actually, I believe in this, in the case of this man, playing Santa is actually quite a big deal. Are you saying that your buddy isn't exactly made of Santa quality stuff? Precisely. You hit the nail on the head, Agent Long. Hey, Edgy, that's so incredibly mean! Tell me something, Larry. Did you know that Santa's job is to deliver presents to people all over the world? Of course I know that! I did graduate from junior high, you know! In that case, it's your turn to tell, tell me something. I want you to tell me to whom you were delivering a present to. Um, I was, uh, delivering a present to a child, not basking in the glow of love? That must be the most elegant description of you I've ever heard, but a lie is still a lie. You sure know how to kick a guy when he's down, you know that? In any case, the person you wish to deliver a present onto was most certainly this. Ex-security lady. Oh, this is Mask the Mask the Second. I see. No, his fucking name is Cash now. Kashi now. Well, it's no, but Cash now. I believe yeah, that I didn't run. I believe it's supposed to be a pun on Cash now. Heh, <laughs> interesting taste you have there, Mr. Suspect. Don't spread lies about me! Totally didn't want to see Miss Oldbag so much that I'd try to go down a chimney. Ow! I advise you just stop right there in your bashing of a lady. Well, I must admit that I myself hardly ever have the want to run into that lady. However, what if you were in misinformed and under the wrong impression? Then what? You find wrong impression. You simply mean that the man before you thought to thought to enter the old lady's room without knowing one very important fact. And that fact is best summed up with this. Standing request. This is something the old lady received from her employer for the night. The girl who normally plays the pink princess, Mindy, was it again? It seems that this man is quite taken with this with that actress. But that's not true, Edgy. She's the one with the hearts for me. I just know it. <laughs> I feel 
killer sexy beam piercing my heart when she's watching me. The sexy beam, I tell you. You filthy, despicable, inconsiderate, fickle, idiot, idiotic, cowardly apparition of a man. <laughs> Shut up. You haven't matured at all since we last met. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes? This guy, he's got bigger problems than just getting involved in murders, I take it. I suppose you could put it that way. Hey, what the heck, man? I don't get you guys at all. Why do you all have to make me out to be some sort of bad guy? To return to the original topic, I propose that the... That at least this much has been made clear, without any knowledge that Miss Mindy had fallen ill. Larry tried to make his way into the Pink Princess's room, that much we know for sure. Hey, Edgy! Looks like I've got the hang of this court thing now. But we're not in court at, at the moment. Shut up! I see what's going on here, and it looks like what you do in court. I guess old boy here still has something he'd like to say. Long she says, until the root of the tongue dries, one never knows the whole truth. You shouldn't form conclusions until everything is out in the open, which is why I'll listen. Alright, then get ready to listen to me defeat Edgy in a battle of wits! Larry, have you forgotten that should I lose, your victory prize will be your arrest? You think that all I wanted to do was go visit Mindy? Well, I dressed up as Santa and climbed up to the chimney, but the smoke was really thick. It was a case of mistaken identity, and that mistake made me late for the speech. Then to top it all off, I became a suspect in a murder. That's what you really meant. But why would I ever put myself through a such so much humiliation on purpose? Two butts frick. I don't think two butts can frick. <laughs> Hey! Someone say something! Larry, are you seriously trying to submit this, not as a confession, but as testimony? So what if I am? Is there something wrong with that? My claim is a claim, claim me my claim. Do you have a problem with that? So it was you! You're my stalker! But I... I should warn you, it doesn't get... It doesn't matter what kind of flattery you throw at me. I'm the devoted type of woman who's wholly focused on one man. Oh no, as long as Edgy Poo is alive, I can't just drop him. Oh no. And being faithful. I'm so inspired. You're such an inconsiderate, cowardly, idiotic, and all around completely worthless man. I thought I heard something ominous just now, but perhaps it was just my imagination. I believe there is nothing further for me to prove at this point. What do you mean? Of course you've still got something to prove. You still have to show some proof that I was trying to meet up with Mindy. Proof, you say. Remember, Edgy? Everything is evidence in court, right? You mean evidence is everything in court, Larry. But I understand your point. Yes, yeah, see? I am totally a pro at this now. Very well. If you wish to see the evidence, then let me show you the last piece of evidence you'll ever wish to see. Come on. Just let me... Yes. And then we gotta find this. <sighs> Larry, don't even think about denying that you have knowledge of this letter. Hey! Well, why are you showing that thing to me? Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight. Your loving knight. Well, isn't that just romantic? But you weren't able to descend on her from above, were you, Mr. Loving Knight? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember a thing. You can pretend to be ignorant all you'd like, but it's written right here. This letter proves that you were not out to meet the old lady, but rather that you were attempting to pay Miss Mindy a visit. One part of this letter shows that the person... Larry, I suggest you take a penmanship lessons. That is, if you ever wish to, if you never wish to experience this level of embarrassment ever again. 
What, what the heck? What are you talking about? Speak English! You wrote Mindy so sloppily that it became Wendy to the average eye. He stopped picking on me. It's so embarrassing. They're there. Isn't that what isn't that what childhood friends are for? They're the best, aren't they? For punching. But that will have to wait until we're off this crime scene. <laughs> Edgy, save me from the scary man. Sure, if you're willing to willing to make amends, starting with your incredibly embarrassing mistake. That 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 wasn't me! Come again? It's a fake! Someone's out to get me, so they made that fake letter! To set me up! Accept your defeat, graciously. But you guys are being so mean! Penmanship analy analysis. What's that? No matter who all people have s who, all people have certain unique features to their handwriting. Ergo, all we have to do is compare the handwriting in this letter just to a sample of yours. And we'll know soon enough who it was that sent this letter. I... 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 I'll never write another thing in my life! It. It's no use, Mr. Loving Knight. You've already graciously provided me with a sample of your handwriting. This autograph and our mysterious letter. If we compare the handwriting, we'll know the answer to our questions soon enough. <laughs> Confess now, Larry, to your miserable failure. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I did it. It was me causing trouble again. I admit it. You hit the nail right on the head, Edgy. So he finally confesses. I saw the pink princess being carried around in a stretcher and got worried, all right? I wanted to go into Mindy's room, but the doctors wouldn't let me in. So what choice did I have? It was a chimney or bust, Edgy. Your mind jumped from the... From the door to the chimney. What a criminally overactive imagination. Well, at least I was honest and wrote Mindy a letter and stuck it under her door. A way she wouldn't be so shocked when I came down through the chimney. Except for the fact that the letter was an utter failure at conveying said statement sentiment. I'm really, really sorry. Larry, you may be a shameful good-for-nothing blight on the face of humanity. However, I always knew you weren't the killer. I told you to trust me. Because at the very least, I can attest to that about you. Edgy. You're... <laughs> We've lost a lot of valuable time because of you. Ow! In any case, I believe we can say... We can say that we now know exactly what happened. Mr. Larry Butts sought to climb down the chimney. Not for access to the crime scene, but to enter the room of the elderly lady next door. Good job, Mr. Prosecutor. Though I still find it a bit unbelievable that, it, that the two of you are friends. But the suspicion on that guy over there isn't completely resolved yet, so don't get any funny ideas about running off, okay? Oh! Hey, hey what? Edgy! What does the wolfman mean when he says I'm not off the hook yet? He means the murder weapon. Larry, did you forget? There are two layers of suspicion hanging over your head. That's exactly what I mean. We can't only rely on the words of the suspect, after all. We may have figured out where he was and what he was doing all night. But the bloodstained samurai sword that was left at the crime scene. As long as there is no satisfactory explanation for that. This wolf will refuse to ease up on his bites. <laughs> Edgy, that guy, he looks like he's seriously about to take a bite out of me. I'm well aware, and you should be as well, that this upcoming battle will be crucial. Thanks to the cooperation of our lovely Bumbler, I've been dealt a very nice hand and a sweet trump card. Looks like we'll, we're about to enter, enter the final bout. Now, Mr. Prosecutor, let's see what you've got can easily point out the contradiction in the supposed murder weapon. But the real problem for me is figuring out what the real murder weapon is. This will be a high-stakes gamble, but this is one game I can't afford to lose. I was the one who found the body of the victim Damask II. Beside him was a samurai sword, glittering red and offering up the scent of blood. 
It was supposed to be in the Steel Samurai's dressing room, but I found it here instead. Plus, I found the murder weapon's owner, the suspect Larry Button here too. Isn't it a bit far-fetched to accuse someone simply on the basis of ownership? But this owner wanted to sneak into the onto the crime scene. I think that's plenty to go on, don't you? If you're alluding to this to his reason for being by the chimney, we've already established that. Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. You two are longtime friends, right? Who's to say you didn't fabricate the evidence to give him an alibi? You're accusing me of fabricating evidence. You think I can believe anything you produce? Forging evidence is all you prosecutors do! This man has some serious issues with prosec prosecutors. But come on, I can't think of it think of anything as complicated as that, right, Edgy? Larry, I can agree because I know you and your personality well. However, Agent Lang knows nothing about you, or me for that matter. I sense his hatred for my entire profession emanating from his entire being. Meaning that the only way I can prove Larry's innocence is to present irrefutable evidence. Statement 3... No, that's not a statement 2. Here we go. Uh, press. Excuse me for glittering red and offering up the scent of blood. Do I have to spell it out for you? I meant the sight and smell of blood, of course. And according to the tests, the blood on the sword belongs to the victim. The sword was made to only be used on stage, so it's not sharp. But it is pretty weighty. It's certainly heavy enough to beat someone to death with. Which leads me to suspect that the victim was beaten to death with the sword. Beaten to death, huh? This last statement is too important to just let, let it slip by. Beside him was a samurai sword covered in the victim's blood. I suspect he was he beat the victim to death with that thing. Objection! Do you know what this is, Agent Lung? <laughs> it's a long spear, right? We used to use those a lot in my country a long time ago. Piercing. Mowing people down. Spears are the pier spears are the weapon of heroes throughout history. It's the next most effective weapon after the whip. I think the whip is in a slightly different category. So what's your point? Are you going to tell me that the spear is a real weapon? No, I simply want you to take a look at this section here. The way it's bent. Precisely. Apparently a certain troublemaker hit it against the wall in this embassy earlier. And as you can clearly see, the insides of the steel samurai's weapon are hollow. In other, in other words, they're replicas that aren't strong enough to deliver a dam damaging blow. Let alone the multiple strikes necessary to bludgeon someone to death. And yet, there is not even a dent in the samurai sword. How do you explain that? Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sword and the spear are made of the same stuff, so they bend easily. But I wish they make them out of better stuff, because the spear got bent. I wasn't able to do my special early summer rain jab move. Man, I got such an earful from the director on, of the play for not doing it in the show. Steel Samurai's special move was changed tonight because of him! <laughs> That's more than enough of your whiny whimpering. Now, Back to the topic of the spear. Yes, let's return to the real topic of, of discussion. This is where the real gamble begins. We don't have a real strategy per se. So all I can do for now is let the chips fall where they may. Using guesswork and taking risks in, in place of real logic has hardly the phone calm away. It's neither, neither smart nor very clever. Miss Von Karma, as you know, unlike your father, I am not a genius prosecutor. Plus, I doubt his record of a 40-year win streak will ever be broken. Did you forget? <laughs> oh, his record. Never mind. No one else will beat that record. That's what he meant. Dumbass, Lily. But perhaps it is for the best if it remains unbroken. For no one should have conceived... 
should have conceived of the notion to convict all in defendants in the first place. Oh, okay, I get it now. Objection! What a foolishly foolish statement from a foolish fool who hates to lose. It's the job of a prosecutor to make sure that all defendants are found guilty in court. There is nothing more important in this world than a perfect victory. That may be your opinion. However, I don't believe that's all we are. Thanks, like, <laughs> As a prosecutor, what I pursue is not a per not the perfect victory, but the perfect truth. And if that means that the bridge I must cross will crumble beneath my feet, then let, the let it crumble as I walk on towards the truth. You're good at keeping me entertained, Mr. Prosecutor. But you know, humans are delicate creatures. The slightest bump and we expire. I'd like you to consider, if you will, the possibility that... The sword was used in such a way that the attack killed the Mask II without bending it. So what do you think of my hypo hypothetical scenario? I think you know what to do here, right? And what you need. Of course, what I need is evidence even Agent Lunk can't refute. This is it. It's time to bring this to a close. It's possible to use this samurai sword to kill someone. And under the, these circumstances, it's the only logical conclusion. We search the embassy, top to bottom, but the victim's blood is only on that weapon. So isn't it only natural that suspicion would fall onto the owner of said weapon? How long do you intend to cling onto that preposterous theory? As long as I want, because we examined every corner within the walls of this embassy. There's no stone be left unturned. We have managed to come up with only one logical conclusion. But the only place inside this embassy with the victim's blood on it is the sword. You left no stone unturned. Is that a fact? If you got something to say, then say it in the only way I respect, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes, of course. In that case, allow me to make it crystal clear for you. What the fuck is this flirting? I don't like it. <laughs> Oh, really? You know what to do, huh? <laughs> Here is statement three. The only place where you could find blood was on this samurai sword. That's right, even with Luminol. Which means there are no other possibilities outside of what I've already out outlined. Do I have a problem with the Agent Lung's assertion that the samurai sword is a weapon, of course. If you believe that there is no other door of possibility left to open, then allow me to force one open for you. Hmm. And how do you plan to do that? By showing you what may possibly be the real murder weapon. Ha! <laughs> the real murder weapon. I hate to repeat myself. But my men have already searched every last inch of this embassy. And they've concluded that nothing else could have been used as the weapon. Knowing these facts, do you still want to press forward with your little hypothesis? Of course. Because it's not possible that your men inspected everything in their investigation. What are you talking about? I don't appreciate mind games and I don't appreciate when people like you slander my men. I'm not slandering them, I assure you. I'm merely pointing out that their investi investigative Dragnet has a few holes in it, namely that there is something your men couldn't even lay a finger on. And that item is the real murder weapon. Alright then, I'll play along for now. This real weapon that killed the Mask II. What exactly is it? The murder weapon, which not a single person has yet to touch is this. N the National Treasure of Alabast. You mean the Primitive Statue? Yes, and as you know, only the Ambassador and his Secretariat may touch it. Which I believe means that neither you nor your men were able to examine it, correct? Ha! Huh. Okay. You know very well that if we did that, there'd be an international incident. Between the Kingdom of Alabast and the Republic of Babal. The two countries' precarious relationship teeters in, in the balance over a stupid fight related to a sovereignty, so, sovereignty statue. 
But I'll be damned if I let something go unexamined. Agent Long, if you could take a look at this. The direction the statue is facing just before and after the crime are different. And there is only one conclusion I can draw from that. Go look for Ambassador Alba and get him to give us the okay to examine the statue. Shifu, you can't listen to this infidel's words. He's most definitely trying to trick you. Shifu, please, let's be rational about this. Uh. Long she says. Just go already. Y yes, sir. Shifu. Yeah? I'm really sorry, sir, but I was unable to convince the ambassador. I was unable to obtain permission for us to examine the Primaduk statue. Hmm. I see. Huh. Wait! But then the investigation is at a standstill. Agent Lang, I will go and speak with the ambassador personally. Save your breath. He may act all weak and frail. But that old man's a tough cookie. One tough cookie. But I guess you gotta be tough when you're representing a whole country, you know? Agent Long. What do you want? Let's... Oh, what do you want? Let's just hurry up and examine the statue already. What? But Shifu, what about causing an international incident? Quiet. I'll take the fall if I have to later. Agent Long, my hypothesis is mine, so if someone is to take the responsibility, let it be me. Responsibility? If we're going to talk in such heavy terms, maybe I should let you. It'd be a real problem for my men if something were to happen to me. Alright then, less talk and more investigating. If we want to know the truth, we can't stop here. Action must be taken. Agent Long, I'd like to run a luminal... chemiluminescence test on the statue. Luminal test. Ah, good thinking. If the statue is the murder weapon, then some of the victim's blood should be on it. Okay, let's get the forensics team in here. Heh, <laughs> looks like you hit the jackpot, Mr. Prosecutor. I guess this means that this is the real weapon that killed the Musk the second. Indeed. But I wouldn't celebrate yet. If I were you, this doesn't let your friend off the hook. It doesn't prove that he didn't kill Damascus II, so the charge remains. We are hardly done examining this statue, Agent Long. Knowing that it is the real weapon, I believe further examination is required. Huh, you think so? Okay then, knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? A sturdy smudge. It looks like a handprint. <laughs> uh, okay. What's a definitive bit of evidence like you doing under here? Looks like we got some fingerprints to analyze. Worst case scenario. These prints belong to Larry. But it looks like it's too late for me to do anything about that now. Hey, forensics guy! I want results on these fingerprints ASAP, you hear me? Agent Long, I have the analysis results, sir. Good, and? Sir, about the prints we've lifted from the bottom of the, the statue. Well, um, you know the victim of the murder in the Babalese embassy. The prints belong to him, to Mr. Manny Cochin, sir. But that's... W what's going on around here? No, that's... impossible. Each primitive statue can only be handled by someone of that country. But by the very fact that Mr. Cochin's fingerprints are on this one, it leads me to only one conclusion. The statue is actually Babal's primitive statue. Impossible! It can't be! Larry never once set foot on Babali's soil, so he was free to go. However, this new piece of information only served to confuse us even further. 
The ringleader of a smuggling operation was killed with an Alabastian knife in Babal. And Damascus II was killed on Alabastian soil with Babal's national treasure. And the mystery of the great thief Yatagarasu visited both countries. The pieces were there, but I had yet to see the big picture they were, f they were to form. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think I can do this chapter. Because this is uh, part three. So, um, hmm. <laughs> Open air stage just means that it's outside, you know? <laughs> No, it seems like it's rather long. There is like a lot of things to do. I left the Damask the second investigation to Francisca and returned to Babal. I suppose my first order of business should be to look into Babal's statue. Where is the? Where? 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 Step ladder. Where's the step ladder? Where's step ladder go? Hello, step ladder. Where you go? Stretchworth! It's okay. What's the situation? It's great. Investigating is so much fun. In other words, they've made absolutely no progress. We aren't goofing off. It's honest, sir. We've been investigating our hearts out. Very well, then. Would you care to give me an update on your investigation? Um... Oh, we've had a really fun time, sir. I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe, yes, sir, you have permission to enter the Alabastian Embassy, is that correct? Yep. As a local detective, I'm helping out with investigations on both sides, sir. Good. In that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. They belong to the lady under the pink princess's mask. The pink princess? What kind of lady was playing her, sir? The kind that was also playing the role of the pink badger yesterday. Oh. Oh, understood, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. And if I don't, then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. It does look really weird, you're not wrong. He doesn't seem all that enthused to go find her, but I can't blame him. The evidence has lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. Now then, I don't believe I'll be needing this anymore either. What? Are you really going to throw that autograph away? Yes, because that Steel Samurai was a fake. Steel Samurai's autograph scrunched up into a ball and disposed of... Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. The necessary evidence has been removed. Remaining evidence has been rearranged. Sweet. What did we get rid of? Samurai Spear is apparently still there. The sword is not there. The notes there. Okay, cool. Bermuda statue and the alabast. Okay. The police and alabast. No, there it is! There it is! It's here! It's here! It's here! Hmm, huh, a ladder. No! Edgewood! No! We had some. We put so much faith in you. We. We trusted you. What is this bullshit? Actually, that's a stepladder. They're the exact same thing. No way! From their structure up, they're totally different. But of course, from a thief's pers perspective, the best kind of ladder is the rope ladder. <laughs> you were the chosen one. <laughs> stepladder is much too heavy to carry around after all. 
And from a prosecutor's perspective, any type of ladder is guilty of being dangerous during an earthquake. <laughs> you called it a stepladder just a few months ago! Why do you play us like this? Sir? You're guilty. <laughs> oh well, I guess that's it. I need to talk to the ambassador again. Ah, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired. Here, with these you can eat whatever you'd like. And these are... Discount tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I appreciate the concern. However, these coupons do nothing for me right now. This open-air stage, what function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract that extra bit of attention to Babal. I heard that tonight, over in the Alabastian Rose Garden, Ambassador Alba was to give a speech. And you know what? Manny told me that I should... I really should give a speech too. Mr. Cochin told you that. Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire the Atakarasu started. Exactly. Ambassador Palayano. Palayino, I mean. I'd like to ask you a little more about the primitive statues. Oh, I see. Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Alabast and Babal used to be one country called Kadopia? Yes, I know that much about your history. Well, the Primitive statue belonged to, to the founders of Kadopia. At least, that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto the, unto the king of Kadopia as a symbol of, of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the right to rule, I take it. Yes, that's right, which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule, is the reasoning. It's pretty petty what you think about it, though, I suppose. But if Alabas and Babal were to re-establish relations, shouldn't that put, put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The Primanek statue is even more important now as the key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Palaino knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy. Perhaps I should try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. Let me just talk about Mani Kochen first. Ambassador Palaino, there is just one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes? Oh, and don't worry. You can ask me more than just one thing. How about two or three? In exchange, I expect you'll be coming to Babal, yes? Thank you, but just one thing is all I require. Mani Kochen, I'd like to ask you about this man who was your secretary. Sh sure I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was, well, if I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. If there was ever anything I needed to uh, needed as an ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed. Actually, I suppose because he was an able man, I was unable to detect his dirty dealings. Hmm, it sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny had been really busy. Since I became the Babalese representative at the country... Country Unification Council. At the cock? <laughs> at the cock? <laughs> oh my god. He's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm sorry, but what is this cock? No, cook. Cook! <laughs> country Unification Council. I, I can spell. I guess I'm getting a bit tired. I don't know. Well, you see, had tonight's events proceeded without a hitch. Oh, cook. <laughs> yeah. Our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. Hmm, I suppose not. Anyways, let's present that. Alabas statue. Ambassador Palaino, would you please take a look at this for me? The Primadoc statue sitting in Alabas right now actually belongs to a Babal. So it would appear. I received a call from Miss Von Karma about this earlier. 
Then you will understand why I wish to inspect Babal's primitive statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's position. Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. And it is definitely Alaba's statue. I know, because... It's the real statue. And you're saying that Babal was a replica. I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be exposed. I received my orders from the leaders of Babal. And I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight. To say that we could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? Well, because you already figured it out. Our statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Babal were to lose face, the, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? Talk to Detective Gumshio. Mr. Edgeworth! You look like you're enjoying yourself, Detective. Well, I don't have much else that I enjoy as much as a good investigation, sir. So, what did you find out? Huh. Well, <laughs> I take it he has found nothing of any particular use, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, I got something really interesting from Am Ambassador Palaino. Oh? What is this something interesting? This, sir. Wow, that's so pretty! I'm so jealous! It's a real treasure there. Why does the flame burn green, Detective? So apparently if you burn the special wit crystal oil that they only make in Babal, it burns this green color, sir. Interesting. So it's a special property of the oil. I suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit Babal should the oil run out. Gummy, what about these silhouettes? We stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern so it'd project the images. Oh? Silhouettes, huh? They are rather pretty, aren't they? Wait, what am I doing? I was supposed to be asking for an update on the investigation. What's wrong, sir? There's something I want to in want you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do that much? Uh-huh. You got it, sir. Hey, that's not fair. Why is Gummy getting to do all the fun stuff? Ah, oh, well, that's because I'm Mr. Edgeworth's partner. Huh, I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant. I expect the two of you to get along and work together, like professionals in this. Hey, where are you going? Are you heading back to Alabast? Yes, but before I do, I suppose I should give you a summary of what's happened. Oh, I see. So there's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country. That's the gist of it. Babal is just as strict as Alabast in their inspection of the people and, th and things that enter their country. Meaning that somehow both murder weapons were smuggled into the two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smugg smuggling is in the person who traversed both countries. You mean the fake Yatagarasu? In one way or another, the Yatagarasu is connected. Of this I am sure. Now then, where was Yatagarasu first spotted? I believe it was the Rose Garden on the Alabastian side of the embassy. The garden is just on the other side of this boundary. It's where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least that's where I heard that the Yatagarasu had appeared. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden post haste. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Miss Redworth. What... what is it? My guess is that it's a guitar pick. I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it'll be of any use? There is a little water on it, but how did the water get on it? It doesn't look like there's anything it could get wet from around here. I was thinking, they have concerts here at this open air stage from time to time, right? Alright, I'll find its owner later. But yeah, there's one more thing. Miss Redworth, would you be willing to hold on to this? What is this? It's Miss Yu's perfume. It's a bottle that woman left behind and that I found seven years ago. I thought that one day I'd 
It'd be of use in tracking her down. So I kept it safe all this time. Thank you. I'd be honored to hold on to it for you. I think I'll be returning to the investigation in Alabas now, but... I know, I know. I'll go back to Babal and do some more investigating there. Oh, that has to be Francisca. I see you back, Miles Edgeworth. Yes. How are things in Babal? Although I can't really say I expect much from Scruffy and that girl. The investigation into Manny Cochin's death hasn't really progressed any. However, the investigation into the Yatagarasu has. Ah yes, the Yatagarasu. Even now I find it hard to believe. A person who can freely traverse between the two countries at will? Preposterous! Well, that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this, that this is where witnesses claim to have seen the Yatagarasu. That's correct. Ambassador Iba, Iba, <laughs> Alba was to give a speech tonight here in Alabast. And that's when the Atagarasu appeared. The shadow of the mysterious thief appeared, and just as suddenly it vanished. After that, there was the fire at the Babalese embassy that the Atagarasu started. I vow that I, that not a single feather from the Atagarasu shall ex escape my diligence. We oui, okay. Agent Long. Ah, oh, you're here. Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? Yes, sir. We found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parking, and one person ran a light, sir. And tell me you didn't find out anything related to the case. Sir, not a single thing, sir. Well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers down to the precinct. Agent Long. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor, I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. No mistake, it's not like I was trying to help you with what I did. After I left, did you receive word from Ab Ambassador Alba? We to wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of today. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. Heh, <laughs> as if I can be so easily called away from this case after I've come this far. I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out screaming into the lights. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? You were working as an ambassador as Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time. So naturally, you witnessed when the Yatagarasu appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief, alright, with my own two eyes. The Yatagarasu is was always there, lurking in the shadows. When the spotlights were turned on for Ambassador Alba's speech, a shadow appeared. That's when cries of, It's the Yatagarasu! rang out. Next second, the spotlight went out. And by the time we got, to the, got the area lit again, the deaf thief had vanished. We investigated afterwards. We found that the reason the lights went out was because someone had unplugged the extension plug for all the outdoor electronics. Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or simply a guest who had tripped over it, we don't know. But one thing is for certain. The Yatagarasu was here. So you're saying that basically all you saw was the thief's silhouette? Yes. Objection! If all you saw was a shadow, then it's entirely possible that the shadow belonged to someone else. Ha, <laughs> good thinking, sis. You just might be right. If it weren't for the fact that there was no one else with that shame, same shape, not among the staff or the audience members. My men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. Someone else's shadow. That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. There are roses scattered on the surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. It's not just for aesthetics. This pool's water is also used in putting out fires. I see. Oh. The pool stopped filling itself automatically. 
The fountain spouts are set to stay open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. This water is used to put out fire, so I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. Which suggests that this pool was reasonably used somehow in this embassy. I guess I'll take some notes about it just in case. How dare you surprise me like that! I'm sorry! Hey, Edgy, thanks for what you did back there. Your gratitude alone is enough. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. Know that! You really think that I'm the type to just jump into a pool and swim around for fun? Alright then. Did you, by chance, fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice. So you know my son, right, Edgy? Your son? I guess I kind of lost sight of him when I shook hands with the ambassador. And I'm pretty sure he was around here when I last saw him! You imbecile! How can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? And how old is this child of yours, anyway? Huh? Oh, um, how old is he again? Larry, this is the first I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? Mother? Well, that chick, the pink princess. The pink princess. Miss Von Karma. I was a bit confused by this man's words for a bit there. However, I believe that he, what he is looking for is the doll of the Iron Infant. Yup. Because I'm steel samurai through and through, heart and soul. The Iron Infant is my cute little son. Y you have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Larry, we have not seen hide nor hair of the Iron Infant. Rest assured that if we should find him, we'll let you know. Now get out of there. Sounds good. In that case, I'll go search over there. Hey, wait! Huh. <sighs> Well, it's not as if he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. Hmm, this statue bears a resemblance to the Primaduck statue. The plaque says King Primaduck of the battlefield. In order to save the queen, King Primaduck put his life on the line and went to war. So Primadox was actually a person in, of royal blood. I thought it was simply someone imi imitating a character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprises me is that a real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. I suppose there is that too. It would appear- no, that's not it. Who will even reveal itself to the person? Okay. When the planet's aligned, the old samurai appears from its depths. Huh? 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 Can I just like- there we go. Hmm, I'm a statue of a woman. I wonder if the lady is pouring water. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of love to King Primidux. Hmm. Huh. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it seems that you are a lousy at reading a woman's heart. I opened my mouth about a statue and she somehow made, made the leap to that. The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Atagarasu. Oliva figured out its true origin. I expected no less from my subordinates. Now let's hear what you know on the subject. What really cast a shadow on the Atagarasu? Suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Atagarasu. It's not possible that it was created. Is it not possible that it was created by this statue? Are you playing me for a fool, Miles Edgeworth? This statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the shadow of the Atagarasu. You are correct. However, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. What do you mean by only one part? What is the other part to the 
real form of the other goddess's shadow. Hold on. Okay, I get it. Take that. It's another statue? The other goddess's shadow was made from the shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now, the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panicked state. However, if we were to restore the lights to how they were when the thief appeared, you believe that the two shadows will create the Yatagarasu's shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yatagarasu. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primidux on in the battlefield, the shadow of the king's statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. Likewise, if we set a light up on the queen who spoke of love to King Primidux, her silhouette would also appear on the backdrop of onto the stage. Aha! Uh -huh. So if you were to combine the two shadows... Looks a bit like Phoenix's hair! It looks nothing like the Yatagarasu's shadow. Miles Edgeworth, how do you explain this grotesque shape? C calm down, Francisca. The way the light needs to, sh needs to be shown on the Queen's statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of the king's shadow needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part? Yes, and that one part alone is, is enough to fill in the rest of the Yatagara's sh shadow. Why didn't you say that in the first place? You're right, I, I apologize. Now what part of the queen's statue was used to complete the Atagarasu's shadow? Her hand. Her hand. Think back to what is missing in our shadow. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Huh. That's right. It can only be the shadow of, of the queen's left hand. Francisca, can we please adjust the spotlight's position? position so that it, so that it only shines on the queen's left hand all right let's give it a try and see what we get it's I don't... I don't see it. <laughs> I mean, I see that as the bird, but I don't see how, like, the hand can make the wings. Because the hand didn't look like that. Whatever. Hmm. Yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. Culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning beforehand. And then pulled the plug after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved the spotlights around. Which we can assume was also a part of the culprit's plan. Hold on. And yeah, I'm looking at like a zoomed in version of like the, the statue at the hand doesn't match at all. Hold on, wait. Let me just, uh... Oh, now you can actually, like, maybe get, like, a... A view of, like, what my screen looks like. Oh, whoops. Wrong screen. That's fine. Let me just fix that real quick. Here we go. So, as you can see, like... That does not look anything like it. This is what I play at. <laughs> play it on. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> ah! 
Ah! Which we can assume was also part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Yatagaru's shadow was vanished. Which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning. So you see, the Yatagarazu never did visit Alabas tonight. The only country that th uh, that pfft, the only country that thief visited was Babal, although it can be assumed that the Yatagarasu had an accomplice in Alabast. An accomplice? But who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the shadow shadow show. I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is the existence of this accomplice. Sweet. Who this? How's the investigation going? That has to be the old man. No, it's bad. Detective Bad, have you come to join us in investigating the Yatagarasu? I've left the murder in Agent Lung's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Yatagarasu, so yes. So, what have you found out? Got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure, but you might regret it. We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So if you please. When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed, I'm telling you, I'm a genuine international journalist. She gave me an interesting picture. A journalist. Actually, she's a freelancer. Freelance cameraman. This is the photo I got from her. What in the world? Yatagarasu is flying through the air! The times, they are changing. It's not just man, but evidence. Even they lie to us now. When was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. It was taken from a nearby building that you can see the em 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 embassy from. I see, so this was taken after the fire. The blur in this picture took off on the Babalese embassy. Flew over the boundary and headed for the embassy of Alabast. This is simply not possible. People are incapable of flight. Is that a fact? I've heard the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flying person once. Wasn't that Francisco though? Actually, come to think of it, I have come across a case like that as well. Two actually. I'm like trying to think like when was Edgeworth involved in that? Pillip Pop Jones. <laughs> I mean I I assume it must be like the 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 last case of the third game, right? Oh, it, it for sure is! It is! When uh, Larry claimed that she saw... That he saw Iris flying. Of course. Maybe it happens more often than we think. Am I up to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph? Well, the Yatagarosu took off from the Babalese embassy, so I should start from there. Francisca, I need to return to the Babal investigation for a bit. All right. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. All right, I'm counting on you. Come back, Mr. Edgeworth. Now come on, let's get back to our inves investigation. Yes, let's. Can I walk in here? No, I cannot. But I can examine it though. I saw the show just beyond these doors, but it's been quite a number of hours now. Mr. Edgeworth, have I ever told you that you talk like an old fogey? 
It's merely reminiscing. Is that such a crime? Where is Palaino? No. Let me <laughs> let me through. After all that running around, we're right back where we started. It would appear that way. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Have you found Manny's killer yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Palaino, but I have yet to find his killer. Then I guess his murder really was the work of the Yatagarasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yatagarasu. The real Yatagarasu is a noble vigilante who is only out to steal the truth. Miss Faraday... Please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, alright? Mr. Palaino. Actually, there is one thing you could do. Will you allow us to take another look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh, sure. Feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few questions I'd like to ask you personally, Ambassador. If we will bring a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer everything. Thank you, Mr. Pal Palaino. You're a total gentleman. Ha <laughs> you don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Palaino. Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person you spotted. Yeah. When I came into this room, that person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet that the person I was chasing is Mr. Cochin's killer. We don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key the Yatagarasu stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu is also somehow involved. I knew it. That woman is almost definitely Mr. Cochin's killer. Yet again, we don't know that. There are too many in mysteries to be solved in this case. Speaking of the Atagarasu and mysteries, I received a most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in the investigation too? Yes, he has been chasing after, yet the, after the Atagarasu for all these years. Uncle Bad? Now then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. W what? This, this kind of looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing. Does this mean... That I was chasing the face Yatagarasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. But this could be how that person escaped! Well, we'll need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, let's not dawdle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask you about the movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight? Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. We had two fires here at the Vebelese Embassy tonight. What a bother all of that was. Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Gem and Ninja show. Oh, well, the first occurred at the start of the- at the start of the Gem and Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of our embassy caught on fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the theater goers, we decided this. We decided to keep it internal. Then the fire after the Gem and Ninja show was the second one of the night. Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? When was this photo taken? Currently, right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. Suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. So then, what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the third floor. 
I think it was leftover embers from the fire on the floors above that caused it. That's... Where should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck. My office on the fifth floor. Manny's office here. And Manny himself. All gone in the blink of an eye. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Palaino. Oops, look at me going on and on. Now then, what was it that you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for today were. And if you happen to know that Mr. what Mr. Cochin's actions and whereabouts were as well. Yes, very well. Let's see. I've been here quite... I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First I woke up and then I brushed my teeth. After that I had a roll for breakfast. Fascinating. How about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you'd like a condensed version? Alright, I can do that for you. So what did Mr. Cochin and you do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and, sh and shake hands with the Gem and Ninja. But Manny and I wanted to turn it into a photo op, so we were here, here tidying up his office. You helped clean Mr. Cochin's office. Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Which is why both the Primitive Statue and the Babalese Knife set are down here. I see. Oh, but, ti but the tidying didn't take much, really. We just burned some files we no longer needed and expired cu coupons in the fireplace. I bet cleaning up the fireplace must have been a real pain, though, huh? Oh, about that. I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. <laughs> I guess I'm up a creek without many here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a, of a secretary's anger. Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Why, he even even just this morning he got mad at me. I spilled some Babylese ink onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. And he got mad at me, saying that I should treat the ink with more respect. Apparently, orders go up the chain of command around here. That's about it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do. Being an ambassador and all. Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down together to the Theatrum Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So they were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while later, after I had straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Because I was to take part in the photo op on, s on stage at the end of the show. Hmm. There was a commemorative photo op at the end. It was a fantastic photo. Of the three of us, Ambassador Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor. To prepare for my handshake photo op with the Gem and Ninja. It seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the fire first fire broke out broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. I admit that I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Cochin again until... Again after the start of the Steel Samurai show. Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him was... He was lying there. In an inter in eternal sleep. I see. Ambassador Palaino, I thank you very much for your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Regworth. If there is anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, alright? It appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything. There is a bottle of Fabulese ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lo lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle and to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Palaino! It looks like your precious Bevelese ink is alright after, after all. What? That's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? 
Um, well, it's just that there is something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, for me please? I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bottle of ink. Um, I just thought of it right now, but... During the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by a roaring green fl by roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green. What was the cause? Well, witch crystal oil burns green when it's lit, as you can see by this lantern. Hmm. And Bubbly's ink is made from the same oil, which means it would also burn green. You know, I too had thought it was Manny's ink that had caught on fire. So that's why I was surprised to find out there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. A case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about a mystery. What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. But it doesn't look too damaged. Oh, well, I think we can riffle through this drawer a bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. Hmm, this looks... familiar. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right! What is it? It looks like something straight out of Monument Valley. Ah, oh, yes, that notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in, our, in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You do seem to be quite passionate about it. Or would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. You sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the fire? Ambassador Palaino, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm, this looks like Manny's handwriting. I see, in that case. Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabast. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murderer Damask II. Damask II? Then this note. Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damascus II to steal the Pyramidoc statue. What? Manny tried to steal Alabas' Pyramidoc statue? You wouldn't know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Y yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why he would he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be great help. It would be of great help, Ambassador. No, I didn't want to do this. I believe that you said that you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired Damask II. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were de to determine which statue was the real one as part of today's event. Because of the Yatakarasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? <laughs> I'm actually relieved the rest of the event has been cancelled. For you see, Babal's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know that about Babal's Hermodoc statue? Of course he knew! That's why he was the only person I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, Let me handle it, it'll be alright. 
I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Kodopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure you that you are the next Kodopian ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or will be. I don't think the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just simple kindness. I feel like I read that wrong, but whatever, it'd be like that. Well, there you are, Mr. Rashworth. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Yep, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, Kay. Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What is all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the Embassy and, and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, Detective. Oh, it was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. Wow, you two remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bad. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day. Well, don't you worry. I'm gonna find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yathagarasu, just like my father, right? Please don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, Kay. However, I can say that it is truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. <laughs> you bet. So what now, Miss Regworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? That gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? That thing you call your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief. Yeah, you're, you're coming to rely on it, aren't you? I, I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. From the information Detective Gumshoe gathered and the ambas ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it. All right, here we go. Dark skies of evening, when no other bird dares take wing, one alone remains all-seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern day in Robin Hood. It seems there are other things beside, besides what the ambassador mentioned that have changed. It's possible that we might find the escape route, the person case Escape rather the person case saw used as well. Okay, god, that was such a difficult sentence for some reason. Oh, ooh, what's this? Is it some sort of light show I was not told about? This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info I inputted. Really? That is certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. Ahem. <clears throat> I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. This grandfather clock. It was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock right now. But I don't hear any chiming. Well, it's 12 actually. Huh? That's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot of every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damaged its internal mechanisms or so something. Ambassador Palaino, maybe take a look inside the clock. Sure, go right ahead. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please inspect the insides of this clock. Yes, sir, I'm on it. Mr. Redworth, I found this inside, sir. I found this inside, sir. It looks like a length of wire, so this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. What was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? <sighs> Why would someone do this to such a valuable clock? It sounds like it wasn't Mr. Palaino that put the fire wire in there. And perhaps it was Mr. Cochin's killer who did. It looks like one of the Babalese knives was already missing before the fire began. So it would seem, especially s so it would seem, especially since the other two knives' handles were burned away. The remaining handle was swapped out with the handle from the real murder button. 
Baval's national treasure was stolen. Poor Baval, don't you think? I'm not sure I would lump the replica statue in, in with the rest of Baval's woes. These must have been the large green flames Ambassador Palaino saw. With flames like these, it's no wonder he couldn't get in. Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire already been put out? Yeah, the fire had died out or something by that time. And this fire here, in here, only burned from the time the fire started on the third floor until the Yathagarasu appeared and caused a stir in Babal, I suppose. I guess Mr. Palaino was just lucky enough to run into this fire as it was burning, huh? Yes, you could put it that way. And since you were the first to discover the body, we can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew it. That person I saw was definitely up to no good. I mean, that person could even be Mr. Cochin's killer. That is very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you. They must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in would be in here. Okay, then maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in. But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Hmm, well, whatever it is, that person burned it. Whatever it is the person burned, it made a rather sizable fire. And since the fire is green, well, we have seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what I mean. Yes, and I do believe that what you are thinking is exactly why these flames are green. Which fire-related piece of evidence burns the same color as these green flames? The silhouette lantern. Its green flame comes from the witch crystal oil it's burning. Yeah, that's the fire I was thinking of too. I love the green of stuff. I think we've now established that the green flames were caused by witch crystal oil. What, do they just carry it around? Like, they don't even like... Turn it off. <laughs> they just like put it like in a bag or something. When it's still on fire, just in there you go. <laughs> no fire hazard at all. I think we now established that the green flames were caused by witch crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there is no there was only one other thing made from witch crystal oil. Well you mean that thing Mr. Palaino was mistaken about, right? This seems safe. Yes, precisely, as we found out earlier in our investigation. Oh, what? I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? Fine, I suppose. I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. This is the thing made from witch crystal oil that Ambassador Palaino was mistaken about. Ink. I believe ink is made from witch crystal oil. Oh, so it should burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. However, the green flames in this room were not from a bottle of Babali's ink. Because we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? Yes, however, we know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. <laughs> like lighting a molotov, deciding not to throw it and putting it back in your pocket. <laughs> Listen, I watched um, a video from Markiplier yesterday of him playing the forest with, with the Bob and Wade, and he did exactly that. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm beginning to really feel the energy coming from me, Mr. Ed Edgeworth. <laughs> it would appear that I finally found it. The smuggling ring's real goal. Made up of Elise ink. This is the source of the green flames. Oh my god, really? <laughs> What would consume that great of a volume of ink to to make? That would be the counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring made and are circulating in Sheng Fa. You're kidding! You're saying that it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? 
I am. I believe you could even go as far as to say that... Say that he stole Babal's printing press. Ambassador Mr. Co... Ambassador Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Why, yes, and I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night. But never did I think he was using it for such a foul deed. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Ah, oh, yes, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? It's my duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. Apparently I'm supposed to talk to Gumshu now. Detective, you took part in the initial Babal investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out both, both fires, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea because it wasn't used. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at the point, I'd have burned... I'd have been burned to a crisp. Wait, that's odd. We always warn our staff that in the case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. I mean, yeah, isn't that like common knowledge? Oh. Maybe someone wrote it in a fit of panic. Detective, did you see the Yatagarasu that came into the Babalese embassy at all? I didn't personally, and the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm, I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. The second fire broke out around the time the Yatagarasu was spotted, spotted in Alabast. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babal, which caused some panic. So no one was able to get a good look at the Yatagarasu that entered Babal. Yeah, all they saw was a mysterious person wearing a long coat. But that's not enough to make a positive ID, you know. Still, it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. A person in a long coat? Sounds like the exact same person I saw. The Yatagarasu that appeared in Alabast was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of the fact, the Yatagarasu had, that appeared in Babal is also suspect. You can't be serious! No one were this close to capturing the fake. I mean, Callisto, you. So the Yatagarasu appeared. appeared, caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Cochin, then disappeared. By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Yatagarasu? I, I did, but, well, this embassy is huge, sir got separated from the other staff member I was, members I was with and was lost for a while there. I didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, de Detective. Eh, I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir. But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to Kay's rescue. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I was lost and wondering- It was when I was lost and wandering around in the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards it right away. Oh, that's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body. Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. And it was thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheena wasn't able to take me away. He covered for me until you got here, Miss Ratchworth. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. Still, it's too bad that Agent Sheena got here before I did. Hmm, I wonder where Agent Sheena was before you found her there. Or here, I mean. Well, just before I got to this room, I saw her coming out of the room next door. Agent Sheena mentioned something about chasing Yatagarasu herself earlier. Well, she apparently helped him putting out the first fire. Then during the second fire, I heard she was busy chasing the Yatagarasu. She seems to be a very dedicated agent. You would have you would do well to learn from her. Are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? We've examined everything in this office, but there is one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should ask Ambassador Palaino about it. Ambassador Palaino, there is something I'd like to ask you about. Yes? 
About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Alba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather clock. Oh, that's right. You've also paid a visit to the Alabastian side of the embassy. Our true embassies actually used to be one. Yes, I know. Even the pamphlet mentioned that. Which is why the building is bilaterally symmetrical. So no matter which room, the location of the fireplace and the like are exactly the same. Even where the art is located is the same, as my room is currently under renovation. We worked hard to make Manny's room look like the ambassador's office. You mean for your handshake photo off with the Gemma Ninja? Yes, that's right. I mean, what's a photo like that worth if it's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? Yet another odd expression of Babal's obsessively competitive spirit with Alabast, I take it. Thank you, Ambassador. That piece of information is- information? <laughs> information! Information is all I needed to connect the dots. Connect what dots? Well, anyway, I'm glad I was able to be of some help. Mm. Logic. Connected fireplaces and bilateral symmetry. What would that mean? The Alabastian and Babalese sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. I have connected the dots. <laughs> you haven't connected shit. I have connected them. <laughs> yes. As we know that to be a fact, then this room's fireplace may also hide a secret pa passageway. A secret passageway? In Alabas, the fireplace turned out to have a revolving back wall. Ouch, ear. A revolving wall? It sounds like something out of a ninja house. Well, there was a trick like that built into the fireplace, sir. What? Th this embassy holds that kind of secret? There seems to be a lot about this room that you don't know about, B Ambassador. I guess it's time to pay the bill for letting Manny do so much work for me. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about, th about this room. What are you waiting for, Miss Regworth? Let's get to the bottom of this. Agreed. And my first thought about... First thought is that it's likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. It looks like just another fireplace though, doesn't it? So how do you turn it again? In Alabas, I had to push where the X was on the far wall of the fireplace. Well, I see an X back there, sir. Let's see what happens when I push it. Oh, ah, you scared me, sir. There's something about this fireplace that lies in contradiction to the facts. Huh? But we found an X for you. Thought there'd be one, right? We did, but that's not what I was referring to. Something is missing from this scene. What does this contradiction mean for us? No, that's not what I meant to do. Here. And... Uh, I mean, I guess it's this, right? No, wait. Ah! Testimony. Here. Spill bubble is ink onto, onto the back wall. That's it. And this points out exactly what is so contradictory about the fireplace as it currently is. And what exactly is that? Oh, it's okay if you don't see it, Kay. I don't really get it either, but I figure it's- What?! Why don't you tell us what exactly is so contradictory? Uh, um, is that not it? Oh, I need to go to the logs, dumbass. Come on, yeah, well, let's take another look at the fireplace first. Yes, fucking, let's fucking do that. Okay, this, dumbass. Eureka! Ambassador Palaino. You said that you've burned some old files in this fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few files this morning, actually. And after you did, you forgot to clean out the ashes from the fireplace, correct? Th that's right. But why are you asking, and why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry, I admit I am, I am a bit intimidating when I'm serious. In any case... 
Take a good look at this fireplace and tell me what you find odd about it. Let's see... Huh? Where did all the ashes go? What is the meaning of this, Miss Redworth? You don't really think that Ambassador Palaino is lying, do you? No, there is no reason for him to lie. And I don't believe this tes his testimony is wrong either. It is the fireplace that is causing the contradiction. Okay, I wonder if you might update the fireplace data for me. You got it. I'll add in the ashes from the burnt files and... Sounds like we've pretty much figured everything out now. Hmm, huh. well, it was nothing. All I did was follow where our leads led us. Ooh, I sense it coming on. You're about to dazzle us again, right? You mean that? Well, if that's what Mr. Regworth is known for, well, that- it's what's- oh my god. It's what Mr. Regworth is known for, you know? There's really no need for you two to dance around the name of what I'm about to do. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Ambassador Palaino said that he spilled some Babalese ink while he was burning the files. Oh lord, he used logic! <laughs> and yet, there is not a trace of the spilled ink on the back, of the back wall anywhere. Well then, I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved into the neighboring room. Which means that this is a clear indication that the fireplace was used. And you mean, the person I was chasing disappeared from this room through there? Yes, I believe the person you were, were in pursuit of is Mr. Cochin's killer. And after committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. Wow, Miss Redworth. You figured out the killer's escape route. I have, but this is only the beginning. Now we have to chase the killer down. If the killer used the fireplace in this room to escape into the next, then it's only logical for us to talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. The person that was in the next room was... Well, it was that person, sir. Yes, detective. Agent Sheena. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really, really tempted to finish this game tonight. But I know it's gonna be a late one. And you have work, don't you? So, like, it's kind of dumb. But it's because... Then I only have, like... Then I can only do four chapters tomorrow. And then I have to wait until Friday to start a new game, and like... Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's- let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! <laughs> We're gonna be fucking just messes tomorrow, both of us. But I- 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 I want to finish off. I don't like splitting them into two. And, and I'm into this case now! <laughs> so I'm like, I want to finish this! <laughs> it's looking more and more like Machina is the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room from the next one and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it was it it could only have been you that killed Mr. Cochin. I don't have any proof yet, however, I know she is hiding something from us. Okay then, why don't we go ask Miss Sheena herself? No, not yet. There's something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, it's, is it my turn to do now do something, Mr. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I have a two-part special assignment for you. 
First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on the mask the second's the mask the second's note. Okay. I'll get the lab boys on that right away. Second, I want you to see if you could fit through the revolving fireplace wall. Right now, sir? No, next decade. Of course now! We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we? Come on, Gummy, you can do it! Alright, I'm gonna do it do this like a real man. Here I go, through the fireplace and back. You shouldn't need to psych yourself up that much for such a simple task, detective. Oh, the wall inside the fireplace really did turn! It's so neat! Now I want to try going through there too! Th there really is a secret passageway through here. I had no idea! Hmm, it would appear that the ash really was pushed into the other room. But... What I don't really get... Is that apparently there is like a fireplace in each room, right? Because this is on the third floor, and and in Alabast, the the office is on the fifth floor. Well, it's on the fifth floor here too, but it's under renovations. So I feel like I remember getting like just really caught up on this last time. I was like, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> because like, where does like the actual like? What's it called? The actual, uh, chimney go. You know, like, it can't just go through because then you couldn't just, like, crawl through there. You couldn't just, like, you couldn't use the fireplace, actually. If it just, like, went through all the way. Anyways. <laughs> it would appear that the ash really was pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the police ink you spilled, Ambassador, is there on the back wall. Okay. Here I go, sir. Detective, I'd like you to go through there under the same conditions as the killer. Huh? But there's all that ash and stuff. And your point is? Now we're short on time, so if you could please hurry on through. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So now we pretty much have the whole picture, right? Unless it, like, goes on the side, you know? That could also, like, be something. Though... Hmm. <laughs> Strange. No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to solve. Such as the Yatagarasu's whereabouts, the other smuggling ring members. The two weapons that made it across the border, the, the key Miss Yu stole seven years ago, in fact, we haven't figured out the thing regarding how Miss Yu is related to these embassies. Mr. Edgeworth. A number of pieces connect in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one completely mentally exhausted. What are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one who said that it was... That it's easy if you follow the leads. Hmm. Was that supposed to be an impression of me, Kay? If it's info gathering you need, Gummy and I can help you with that. Then all you'd have done, you, all you'd have to do is show off your fancy schmancy logical deductions. Show off? Doesn't seem like I'm being boastful when I do that. Let's not overcomplicate matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? We've been so focused like a laser on only what seems strange and out of place. It's no wonder nothing's clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. But if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us. Okay. That's the sort of thing I say to myself. When I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know. That is something that I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. <laughs> Yay! Looks like you're back to your straight laced self again. Hey, Miss Regworth, I'm back, sir. Yes, I can see that. Good work, detective. <coughs> Looks like you can use that fireplace like a door, sir. Are you alright, Gummy? I'm okay. Just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. Your jacket has gotten quite filthy. I see the hem has practically turned black. Yeah, well, quite a bit of the unburned ink got on it, sir. <laughs> hmm, I see. Thank you, detective. You did a fine job. I'll even pay the cleaning bill for the trench coat. What? Oh no, sir. I could never. This is just my old coat, sir. 
If it was a coat I actually cared about, then I'd get it clean, but you know. Wait, didn't he get a new coat from for Maggie? Where's that? Huh? Gumshoe, are you, are you, do you not appreciate <laughs> gifts? Or does do you just like appreciate them way too much? So he just like ha has it like hanging up in his apartment. <laughs> Yeah, it was beige. I am aware of that. I see. Very well then. As you wish. So because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. And that is... I will have to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with a handwriting analysis... Handwriting analysis... Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir, I'll be back before you know it. The handwriting analysis on Mr. Cochin's handwriting will take a bit of time. Let us go and wait in the Theatrum Neutralis, along with Agent Lang and Agent Sheena. He probably has a frame like Edgy has his jacket framed. Oh my god, don't remind me of the fucking jacket. I might have to go and like grab something to eat at it in a, in a while. It shouldn't take like way too long. Agent Long. Long she says, little cubs never do. They know the real fury of of the elder wolves. These quotes are definitely becoming increasingly difficult to decipher. And what does that mean? It means that you'll never really know how angry I can get. Hold on, wait. I feel like the... The... This club audio was a bit too loud. Let me turn it up to 30 again. Mr. Prosecutor. The counterfeit bills made with Babalese ink. They were all of Shengfa denominations. Yes, so I heard from Miss Von Karma. We don't know where the play money has gone. They must not have figured out that it was all burn burned yet. For since those things showed up in circulation, my country's ec econ economy has taken a big hit. Zheng Fa is in financial chaos as we speak. Because we can't tell the difference between our own bills and the fakes. But it's not just the money. The citizens are also worried. I've staked the honor of the House of Lang on this. And I've come to this land to to capture the mastermind behind this whole mess. I investigated how the bills were made and how the ink was smuggled into Zheng Fa, and I pursued the smuggling ring all the way here. But tonight, this is where the final chapter was written. Despite my frantic efforts to chase the smuggler down, someone, someone got to him first, and now I'm called to return home without a single answer. Agent Lang, I... Don't start, it's not your fault. Not anyone's fault, Mr. Prosecutor. Ambassador Alba, I'm sorry for all the trouble tonight. Oh, no, 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 it is I who should apologize. It was all because I was not strong enough. If only I was able to think of a better solution. That's not it. It was... It was more of a horse one, right? Not, not like a... Horses in the animal, but like as the horses in like the, the voice. Having a horse voice. <laughs> Whatever. That one's easier. Quirkus, you fool! Curse your empty brain! Heh, <laughs> you're being too hard on yourself, Ambassador. Take full responsibility for tonight. End of story. Sheena, let's go. Time to return to our den. Yes. I don't like to admit it, but there is not much else for us to do but to go home as well. Nay, hey, if only I was smarter. Agent Lang! What happened? You, Wolfman, and the security lady, hold it! Objection, pal! Detective Gumshoe. Have you got the results of the handwriting analysis already? Yup, and that note was definitely written by Mr. Cochin, sir. Hmm, just as I thought. Good work, Detective. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. How long do you intend to hold us up for? Hmm. Sorry to have made you wait. But I believe that now that now everyone is finally here. 
Agent Sheena, I'd like to ask you something if you don't mind. Yes? How exactly did you fail to see the Atagarasu when you were in the neighboring room to where Mr. Cochin was killed? I'd like you to explain that to us. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. What are you doing asking her about something she didn't see? Agent Lang hasn't touched the Babal investigation at all. So I suppose I will need to explain a few things to him first. Miles Edgeworth, I can't even begin to imagine what's going on in that head of yours. I appreciate that one way better than that one. The only thing going on in my head is the pursuit of the truth. Oh, it sounds like you have some sort of plan. Very well, I'll supervise you until the end. Uh, is she seriously going to treat me as a subordinate for the rest of the day? I'm not trying to pick a fight with my subordinate on some flimsy guess, are you? I'm not trying to pick a fight. And the evidence is hardly flimsy, as you will see. Ha! <laughs> I should have known. That you and I are destined to fight it out until the very end. It would appear that way. Well, I'll prove her innocence, so let's see what you got, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Hm. With pleasure. For my opening argument, I'll discuss the Atagarasu that appeared in Babal. And establish exactly who it was the case saw. Agent Long, I assume you've been briefed on case testimony. You mean the suspicious person in a coat that you saw? That's right, that person is one of the keys to solving this case. The person who pretended to be the Atagarasu. Pretended? And what do you mean by that? I'll get to that in a second, but first, I want to review what this person K saw did. Okay, if you could please explain what the person you were chasing did for us. Okay, you got it. I first spotted the suspicious person near the open air stage on the bubble east side. I called out to the person, but as soon as I did, that person ran off. I thought it was rather suspicious, so I immediately gave chase. For the sake of argument, let's call the suspicious person the Atagarasu. Now please, tell us what happened when you chased the Atagarasu up to the third floor. Can do. I chased the Atagarasu all the way up to the third floor of the Babalese Embassy. It was pretty. It was a pretty straight chase down to the hallway and down the hallway until the sudden turn. The Atagarasu disappeared around the corner, so I did my best to catch up. When I turned the corner, I saw the Atagarasu run into Mr. Cochin's office. I gave chase and ran into the room. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot, so I turned on the light, but then... <laughs> Who's there? By the time I had turned on the lights, the Atagarasu had dis disappeared. When Kay entered the room, the person she was chasing was already gone. Why do you suppose that was, Agent Lang? What do you mean, what do I- why do I s why do you suppose? Isn't it obvious? Why do I- okay. The person slipped out through the door behind the girl under the cover of darkness. Sorry, but I know for a fact that the person didn't escape through that door. Oh, and how do you know that with such certainty? Hmm, that's easy. If the Yatagarasu had left through that door, they would have run right into this person, Gumshu. No, not Gumshu, sorry, Sheena. Dumbass. Okay, we get it, we get it, I was wrong. Just fucking let me fucking... No, I was mistaken, okay. I think Miles, recall the circumstances around Kate's near arrest. Okay, yeah, we get it. Someone right next to Mr. Cochin's office investigating at the time. Where is she now, anyways? Oh, there she is, I didn't even see her. You runs with Sheena. Yes, because let's consider what what would have, what would have happened if the Atagarasu had used the door. When Kay screamed upon discovering Mr. Cochin's body, 
Yeah, I know. I'm really unforgiving. I'm like, this is not get it. I'm such a wrong Leave me alone. And they're just fucking talking for five minutes, and it's uh awful. The Yatagarasu would have run right into Agent Sheena, who was in the next room over. Oh. Agent Sheena, would you mind telling us if you saw the suspicious suspicious person in question? No, I didn't see anyone. You see, therefore, the Yatagarasu could not have escaped through the door. It just means that the creep slipped out before Sheena made it out, out into the hallway. Hmm, I doubt that as there was another person in that hallway, a certain detective. Detective Gumshoe were there. Where were you exactly at the time? M me, sir? Um, when I heard Kate scream. I ran towards Mr. Cochin's office from the opposite direction of Agent Sheena, sir. So, Agent Lang, can you explain how someone could have eluded both of them? Even you must concede that under these circumstances, the door was not a viable route. <laughs> Way to go, Mr. Edgeworth. You nailed him with just an explanation of what happened. You nailed him? Okay. Yes. I've eliminated one of the possi possible escape routes from that room. But this is far from over. I need to make Agent Lung aware as well. Of yet another possible escape route the Yatagarasu could have taken. <laughs> I get it. So that's what you were trying to show me. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Let me guess. This is what you're trying to say, right? Because the door was not a viable escape route, then there must have been another way out. Precisely. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, it's time to bust out with a revolving fireplace wall explanation, right? No, not quite yet. Huh? But why? I thought this would be the perfect time. The revolving wall, wall on the bubble east side is only known to four people. And if we use this information unwisely, the truth may escape us in the end. What's with all the whispering over there? Scared I'll figure out your tactics? Hmm, nothing of the sort, Agent Lang. Come, let's continue where we left off. That smug, haughty attitude of yours. You really rubbed me the wrong way, you know that? Hmm, well, no matter. I figured you out already anyway. The only other possible escape route besides the door is the room's lone window. It's just an eerie picture of said escape route is exists. Are you saying this capture- this photo captures the moment of the Atagarasu's escape? I guess Detective Bat must have filled him in on this- on this photo. I have to admit that at first I thought the window to be a possible escape route as well. However, I now know that to be impossible. Now I realize you may not know this, but... Humans can't fly. Of course I know that. That's bloody common sense. Besides, I never said I thought that photo to be of the Yatagarasu's escape route. Suppose not. Alright then, explain yourself. The shadow in this photo is not the Yatagarasu that Kate was chasing after. You can say whatever you'd like in whatever language you want. But there's only one language I really understand. The language of evidence. Very well then. I present to you proof that the person Kay saw is not the same as the one in the photo. Apparently it's the photo. Take that. Let me explain to you precisely why the shadow in this photo is not the Atagarasu Kay saw. Kay spotted the Atagarasu heading for the third floor during the, during the second fire. However, the photo in question was taken just after the first fire. Yeah, way to go! That's twice you've bit him in the butt now. We're not done yet. You still have to explain what that shadow is. And how the Atagarasu escaped. I don't suppose you can answer both, can you? Regarding the photo, I admit that we don't understand what it means quite yet. Ha, <laughs> as I thought. However, the Atagarasu's escape route. Now that I can answer. You can? Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, go on. Enlighten me. Even if I explain... Even if I explain it, you'll try to find some flaw with what I have to say. You were busy heading up the Alabastian investigation, correct? In that case, I doubt you'd have much knowledge about the bubbly side of the case. 
So wouldn't it be best if the lead on that side, Agent Sheena, explained in my stead. Ugh. Sheena is my subordinate. If I don't stick up for her, how can I look her in the eyes and call myself her boss? Mom, it's alright. I can take care of him. Sheena. You've shielded me a lot as shielded me a lot as my boss. But it's time for me to prove my worth. Alright, if you're okay with it, then you have my support. Finally, it's down to just Agent Sheena. And myself, this is where the battle really begins. Now then, what is it you'd like to ask? Hmm, let's see. Why don't we start with your movements inside the Bubblese Embassy? During the first Bubblese fire, I assisted in putting out the fire. During the second fire, I was searching for the Yathagadasu that had, had appeared in Babal. While I was searching, I heard a scream coming from the next room over. Although I was in the next room, I was unable to catch a glimpse of the Yathagarasu. To be honest, I'm actually very skeptical that the girl's Yathagarasu even exists. And that is all I have to say. But I'm not lying when I say I saw the suspicious person run into Mr. Cochin's office. Like I said earlier, I have no intention of retracting my testimony. Good. To confirm, did you have a partner when you were on your investigation? No, I moved alone. In that case, you have no one to corroborate your alibi, is that correct? Are you calling her suspicious because she was in the room by herself? How pathetic. And it wasn't when a Agent Sheena tried to arrest Kay under the same rationale? And how about when you accused Larry because he was the weapon's owner? Not that it is unexpected for to that useless lump to get into such a situation. Although, I suppose it's never a good idea to let mistakes go uncorrected. I will make no excuse for, excuse for what I did in that situation. And you should apologize right now for making Kay out to be the killer, pal. I'm sorry. She now apologize. I'm sorry. It's really okay. I mean, I'm not under suspicion anymore. Right, Miss Regworth? Hmm. <laughs> well, I never doubted you. Not for one second. And the same goes for me. I believe in Sheena. And let's put that to the test and see if she is really worthy of your trust. <laughs> this promises to be interesting. During the first Bubblese fire, oh, that's I read over read this. Fourth statement. Gotta get to the fourth statement. Come on. Although, come on, one more. Although, there we go. Then percent. And then revolving fireplace wall. There we go. Being in the room next to Mr. Cochin's office is the problem with your testimony. Mr. Prosecutor, I don't see what problem you're t talking about at all. Agent Lang, do you recall the secret we discovered about the Alabastian office fireplace? Huh? Oh, you mean how it connects the office with the room next door? What about it? Well, Alabast isn't the only country with secret, secret connecting fireplaces. What? The fireplace in Mr. Cochin's office holds the exact same secret. W what? Yatagarasu didn't escape through the door to the room or or the window. The escape route was through the revolving fireplace wall and into the next room over. Now do you see? If the Yatagarasu had escaped into the next room, then the thief would have run straight into Agent Sheena. Meaning that it's impossible for her to have missed the Yatagarasu. Yeah! What is the meaning of this, Miles? Well, would you care to explain, Agent Sheena? How you managed to completely miss the fleeing Atagarasu, or shall I? Your claim that you were in the room next... In, 
In the next room was a lie all along, wasn't it? The truth is, you were the one Kei saw in the coat. Pretending to be the Atagarasu, and you were the one she changed after. As you tried to lose her, you ran into Mr. Cochin's office and headed for the fireplace. Then you shed your coat in the next room, leaving it there to emerge as Agent Sheena. After that, you came back around to place Kay under arrest. Does that sound about right? If not, then speak now or forever hold your peace. How dare you make Kay look like a bad guy when yours is the suspicious one, pal? Sheena. <laughs> oh, that, that laugh. Oh my god. I remember this irritating laugh. Uh, getting chills down my spine. It can't be. But it has to be. Sheena, what's wrong with you? I'm sorry. It was so funny that I couldn't help but laugh. Funny, you say? Yes, that you would accuse me of being the Atagarasu. The prosecutors of this country really are all so very strange. Do you think you can get away with this by simply laughing it off? You think I am taking things too lightly? I think not. It's that prosecutor who is. Look, everything you said earlier is nothing more than mere speculation. The Atagarasu fled through the fireplace. Do you have any proof to back up your claim? If you don't, then you haven't proven a thing regarding the Atagarasu's escape route. The tone of your voice, you talking with me now, has certainly changed. <laughs> That's because it's been a while since I've had this much fun. I think I'll let loose and then we can have a real battle of wits. For an agent of Interpol to show me the true power of her mind, it's a great honor. <laughs> Don't underestimate me. I'm not some foolish broad, you know. I know, and that is why I won't hold anything back either as I answer your question. My question? Here is your proof that the revolving fireplace wall in Babal was used recently. Sorry, but is this really your honest answer to my question? Yes. According to Ab Ambassador Palaino's testimony, he said that he was burning some documents in the fireplace with Mr. Cochin. Oh? The ashes of what they burned were left in the fireplace, so they should have been there. However, when we went to investigate the room, the ashes weren't there. Why is that a problem? Maybe someone cleaned them up. Hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Ambassador Palaino said he, that he forgot to. And so the question remains, why were the ashes missing? The answer is simple. When the Atagarasu went through the fireplace wall, the ashes were pushed into the next room by the wall as well. The movement of the ashes that were in Mr. Cochin's office is my proof. Just what is so funny? Ashes proof? Are you even allowed to submit to this flaky evidence in court? You, you still wish to fight us? Of course, why wouldn't I? In that case, let's hear your counter-argument. Hmm? My counter-argument, huh? And this really is just like being in court. Well, to me, we're simply continuing from where we left off all those years ago. I have no idea what you're talking about. It doesn't matter if we're at a crime scene or in court. Let's finish this here and now. I suppose I've had a lot of fun today, but I grow weary of this game of cat and mouse. Oh, the same thing she said all those years ago, huh? Let's make this the last testimony and wrap up this absurd case once and for all. In my eyes, all you've proved is that the rotating fireplace wall was used. 
But you can't really call that proof that the Adagarasu used the fireplace now, can you? So then, who was it that used the rotating wall? Show me the answer with real evidence. Remember, we've already finished our very thorough investigation. And we found not a single suspicious thing in Mr. Cochin's office. And there you have it, my counter-argument. That's very impressive. She has seen through to the fact that I have yet to gather that one piece of evidence. What is it, Kay? I haven't heard a peep out of you in a while. In quite a while now. If you don't think you can handle it, feel free to leave the rest of it to us. But I... Kay, pull yourself together. You are the true heir to the Yatagarasu name, are you not? If you want to steal the truth, then you must never take your eyes off it. Off of it. This chase you're running to catch the truth. You must see it through to the very end. Mr. Edgeworth, you're right. I, I will see this through to the end. So, you go get her for me, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. <laughs> With pleasure. Looks like a lack of evidence has left you wide open, doesn't it? Sheena, please, show me you're someone I can trust. Don't worry, this will be the deciding match. You'll see. I'm truly sorry, Agent Plung, but I simply can't allow her to escape me again. Very well then, Agent Sheena, shall we begin? <laughs> I'm ready whenever you are. God, I have to go all the way to statement five! In my eyes, yes, 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 yes. Here we go, and then we have to present. Okay, the wire is the closest one. Hmm. Well, you say that you and your agents have finished your thorough investigation. Are you absolutely certain that you didn't overlook anything? Well, aren't we full of ourselves standing there insulting Interpol agents? You better not be insinuating that my men are incompetent, Mr. Prosecutor. I'd never do that. However, it doesn't change the fact that they did overlook something. <laughs> At least the music is banging, yeah. <laughs> it sure is. No. I'd like for you to take a look at this length of wire. And what exactly is this supposed to mean? Length of wire? So what about it? I'll tell you what, we found this in the Babalese Embassy not long ago. What? And we found it wound up inside the grandfather clock in Mr. Cochin's office. You found that. The scene of Mr. Cochin's murder. But this wire wasn't always found. We found one other very important thing. There's more? In Mr. Cochin's office, there were signs that someone had burned counterfeit bills there. What in the... <laughs> that evidence... I'm sorry, that evidence was something you found out through that girl's machine, right? Yep. That's all all they are. Thank you, Nightbot, for dealing with them for me. Yes, thank you, Nightbot, for your services. <laughs> so what if it was? Ah, oh, that's what I thought. But unfortunately for you, every creation made by a machine is hardly concrete proof. Among the ashes you found in the room, did you happen to find any counterfeit bills? No. You see? So there was nothing in that office. Nothing you can call evidence, anyway. I'm sorry, but I seem to have given you the wrong impression. How so? I don't recall saying that I was presenting evidence of any sort. But rather, I was pointing out that your investigation was incomplete. And that this throws doubt on the purity of your investigation into the Yatagarasu. You still suspect me, I see. 
All right then, I ask that you point out what part of my investigation is complete, incomplete. The other in Interpol agents worked under the command of Agent Sheena. And is it not possible that the reason the person K was chasing chose the third floor? It's because that person knew there would be no other agents on that floor. Furthermore, we have come to see that Agent Sheena was only pretending to be investigating the Athagata suit to the point of arresting K. In that case, there is one location that no one has yet to inspect. Your team's investigation has was com incomplete because they failed to inspect this location. The location Agent Sheena is of... Agent Sheena is, of course, the room you claim to have examined. I believe the room next to Mr. Cochin's office warrants a thorough inspection. Even if you do that, I doubt you'll find anything of use to you there. <laughs> I will be the one to decide that. Detective Gumshoe! Yes, sir. I'm on it. I'll be right back after I check out that room next to the office. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth. Do you really think that that... Think that Miss Sheena is the Yatagarasu? Yes, if my logic is sound, I believe she is. And I'm not going to let her get away with ruining the name of the Yatagarasu. But can you prove she's the Yatagarasu in is the question? If Detective Gumshoe can find what I'm hoping he will find, then I should be able to. And just what are you hoping to find? Let's just say this. I had Detective Gumshoe do a little experiment for me earlier. An experiment? As if that detective has the brains for a high science. It wasn't that mentally taxing. I had him use the same escape route as the Yatagarasu. And what did you find out by doing that? First, that it's, that it's possible for a person to fit through the revolving wall door. Second, that by going through there, his coat was covered in ash and Babalese ink. Who cares what his coat was covered in? It's not worth that much anyway. Ah, but is it really worth so little? I believe what, that it's actually quite a meaningful result to the val so, result the value of which I'm about to prove. Mr. Redworth, I found some things you really need to see, sir. Oh, so what are these things that you found? Um, some makeup, a coat, uh, and a pair of shoes, sir. You found a coat? You hear that, Mr. Redworth? Maybe it's the one the person I was chasing was wearing. Yes, the possibility does exist. Agent Sheena, were these pieces of evidence not in that room when you ex examined it? Unfortunately for you, those aren't suspicious items of any sort. They all belong to me, and they were getting in the way, so I stored them in that room. Oh, Thank you for bringing them to me. It saves me a trip. May I have them back now? These items that the detective brought back are incredibly significant. I request that we be allowed to examine them. They're my personal belongings, so you have no right to touch them without my permission. I wish to examine them for the sake of investigation. But if you wish to deny us access to them, Agent Lung, let's hear your opinion on this. Say let them look at your stuff, Sheena. Lung? Sheena, let's put it all out in the open. If you're really innocent, then you have nothing to worry about, right? I guess so. Alright, go ahead and examine whatever you'd like. After all, I have nothing to hide. Hmm, <laughs> good. Now let us begin. So which of Agent Sheena's belongings are you going to examine, examine, sir? The coat. Let's examine the coat. Yes, sir. It appears you managed to stain your coat rather badly. Agent Sheena. The Yatagarasu that Kei saw was wearing a coat. And I'm beginning to wonder if this stain wasn't created when you went through the fireplace. <laughs> no, you have it wrong. That soot probably got on my coat when I was helping the police put out the fire. And what about this dark substance around the hem of your coat? Oh, I didn't realize that the hem was that dirty. I'm sure it's just some water mixed with soot from when I was helping with the fire. I don't think so. You think you can get away with such a transparent lie? Yeah, don't lie to us, pal. This is the same pattern of dirt that got on my coat when I went through the fireplace. Your words ring hollow in the absence of evidence, you know. So unless you can prove that the dirt on my coat is from the fireplace, which I can. How? 
You did a great job, Detective Gumshoe. Huh? M me, sir? What did I do? This coat. This is exactly the piece of evidence I was searching for. I had been hoping to find the coat that, it, that the person K saw was wearing. And thanks to you, we proved that going through the fireplace would sully a coat. I don't quite get what you're saying, but I'm happy for the praise, sir. All that remains is for us to show what the dark substance of the Kotem is. Oh? And you think you can do that? Of course I can. This is the dark substance that sullied the hem of this coat. Papalese ink? Yes, this is what will prove that the coat went through that fireplace. According to Ambassador Palaino, he burned some files in the fireplace this morning. You told us about that already, so I don't really see the point in mentioning it again. My point is that he spilled some ink onto the back wall of the fireplace at the time. The dark substance on this coat turns out to be Bowley's ink. It would prove that you and this coat went through the revolving fireplace wall. Sorry to have clipped one of your wings, Yatagarasu. We're not finished yet. But you have no way of proving whether or not this is Bubbly's ink on the coat hem. But I do, and I intend to show that it is. And I intend to show that it is ink in a few seconds. How? How, you ask? Well, since you don't seem to know, allow me to show you. This is how I will prove that the dark substance on the coat is Bubbly's ink. Burn the coat. We can find out whether that is that is Babali's ink or not by lighting it on fire. That's how you're going to prove that it's Babali's ink? Yes, if you could please cut a section of the coat. Of the section of the dark stained area for me. I'd appreciate it. Because I will show you here and now that what the dark substance is. Sheena, sorry to do this, but I'm going to have to cut off a bit of your coat. Go ahead. I wasn't planning to wear it more anyway. Now then, if someone could loan me a lighter or something. Oh, I got some matches! I got some matches! I always carry them with me so I can light smoke bombs. Then, if you could please have one. If I could please have one, Kay. We can get this experiment underway. The flame! It's the same color as the flames with which crystalloid produces. Which means... Papalese ink is a product of wheat crystal oil. When lit, the ink produces a green flame. Hmm, I believe the time has come to clip the Atagarasu's other wing. Mishina, you're the fake Atagarasu. The one who killed my father. It's about time you came clean, Agent Shina, or should I say, Callisto you. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, you're not serious, are you? Do I look like the joking type to you? <laughs> Callisto, you? I've never heard that name before in my life. That manner of speaking and that attitude. You haven't changed a bit in seven years. With a defense attorney that killed Mr. Faraday and then tried to frame me for it. Oh, really? And you have proof? You insist that I am this Callisto, you woman, you ca but you can't prove it. If you have no proof, then I'm afraid you won't be able to lay a single finger on me. The raven is a very unique bird, one that flies by the darkness of night. However, the light of dawn has arrived, and it will reveal your true, ugly form to the world. Enough poetry. I want to see some evidence. Do you really have something that can prove that she is Callisto Yu? I do. It's something that the second Yatagarasu has preserved for us these last seven years. Do me the honor, Mr. Edgeworth. I will, Kay, for we have finally come to the end. We'll prove her to be Callisto Yu with this, and clip this Yatagarasu's wings for good. Perfume. This perfume. This will prove you to be Callisto Yu. It will? Kay has preserved it perfectly for us. Surely you remember this bottle. This belonged to Miss Yu just before she disappeared seven years ago. Naturally, this means that a few of her fingerprints are on here as well. This is that bottle of perfume you spilled, which I have preserved ever since. I heard from my father, Burn Faraday. 
that if stored under the right conditions, a fingerprint can be preserved for decades. Which means that your fingerprints are still on here. Every last one. We can clear everything up if we were to compare the prints on this to your own. Now come, Agent Sheena. Will you submit yourself to a fingerprint test? <laughs> she's she's lost it. And so was so have I. Um that is like believed to be like one of the um uh, the like uh, origins of her name. I know because I looked her up on Wiki the other day and I was like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> it looks like you've seen right through me yet again. Uh -huh, you're sending the biggest chill down my spine, Edgeworth. Callisto, you. So you've shown your true face at last. This feeling of thrill, it's even greater than that time seven years ago. Sheena, you're... Lang, I really enjoyed our days together. You're an insanely strong, nice, kind-hearted hearted idiot of a man. So you were a spy all along. A mole sent by the smuggling ring I've been chasing after. Someone who has been feeding them intel on Interpol all this time. <laughs> Very good. Maybe you're not as big of an idiot as I thought. Callisto, you. The woman who killed my father seven years ago. You're her, aren't you? The fake Yatagarasu. That's right. Callisto Yu, that's just one of my many names. But even that is just a facade. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Great Thief Yatagarasu. Callisto Yu, this time you won't escape. For this is the end of the road for you. Now come along quietly. You know, you were the one who left the strongest impression on me, Kay Faraday. And had you not used the Atagarasu's gadgets, I might have never known who you were. But here you are, being a thorn in my side. Just like your father always was. Kay, don't! You, I'll never forgive you for what you did to my father! You <laughs> really are just like him! Mr. Faraday too possessed such laughable honesty. Kay! Ah, you let Kay go right now, pal! You're despicable! Let go of me, you filthy- mm. You think I'm a fake, don't you? Well, unfortunately for you, I'm the real Yatagarasu. But that's impossible! My father was the one who created Little Thief! <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. The Yatagarasu has three legs, do you know why that is? Why it has three legs? There are three main reasons why the Yatagarasu will always be one step ahead. First, the Yatagarasu always knows the exact locations of the target object. Second, the Yatagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. No, it can't be. Did you finally figure it out? Do you finally know the real identity of the Yatagarasu? The real identity of the Yatagarasu is... Neither person. The real identity of the Yatagarasu is neither Burn for our day, nor Callisto Yu. By the same token, they are also both the real Yatagarasu. <laughs> How very perceptive of you. N no way! A single person known as the Great Thief Yatagarasu never existed. Mr. Hedgeworth! I... No! I refuse to believe this! Yatagarasu is known to have three special skills. Skill number one. The Yatagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. And a lawyer would have the opportunity to learn the layout of client of corporations. Skill number two. The Yatagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. And a good prosecutor would be well versed in the ways of a criminal. And skill number three. The Yatagarasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind. Ever. Yo, fuck! I forgot about this! D Detective Bad! It was only natural for the Yatagarasu to never leave evidence behind. Because the lead detective on the case hid it all away. 
Y you're the third member of the Atagarasu! You. I've been looking for you for a long time. The plot twist! The plot twist that, that even I, who have who has already played the game, did not see coming! <laughs> it's funny though, because this- It seems like we're, we're finished with this case, but we're not. We still have like three chapters left, don't we? <laughs> three more hours. I'm- I'm- I'm up for it though. I've been looking for you for a long time. Seven long years. But I finally got you. <laughs> Why, Mr. Bad? Long time no see. What happened to us? We used to be such a great team. If you were such a- If you were such a great team, then why did you kill my father seven years ago? <laughs> why indeed? It was nothing personal, really. He was just another person I had to kill. How can you say that? I grow weary of this, and it's time for for everything to come to an end. And this time, I won't miss. Stop. You. Okay. It's over, Sheena. Your leg. Jin Long. Mm -hmm. Idiot, what were you thinking jumping in front of my gun like that? What are you risking your life for? I'm sorry, Detective Bad, but no matter what sort of past she may have had, or even if she is a spy, it doesn't change the fact that she is my subordinate. And as long as she is, I can't allow any harm to come to her. Not even from you. You really are an idiot, you know that? Ha, huh, it's fine with me. You should know by now that this is just who I am. Hey, sis. Yes? I want you to conduct a full body search. Sheena might have another weapon on her. Alright. Stick to Gumshoe, your assistance, please. Sir! Hey, I found something. What is this, sir? It looks like the blade of a knife, but it doesn't have a handle. This is a great find, detective. Huh? It is, sir? Let's try pairing up this with the- with this blade of- Up this blade. Try pairing up this blade with this handle. There it is. Now then, let's try combining the blade with this piece of evidence. Um, I don't think you can combine that with the blade, sir. Dare you speak out of turn! Oh, wow. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I have a knife handle. Oh, okay. I thought it was just a knife. Damn it. Oh, it's right here, dumbass. I believe this blade actually belongs with the handle that was on the murder weapon. Hey, they fit together perfectly. This blade must have taken been taken from the crime scene when the knife handles were switched. I'm going to go return this Babalese knife now. Alright, I trust that you'll make sure that it is returned to Ambassador Palaino. Babalese knife handle given to Detective Gumshoe. Yeah. I believe this makes it perfectly clear who did it. Callisto Yu. For the only time the handles could have been switched is just after Mr. Cochin's murder. <laughs> Which means that you must be Mr. Cochin's killer. You killed Mr. Cochin with the Alabastian knife. Switched the handles and then took the original blade of the Babalese knife with you. Later, you allowed yourself to be spotted by Kay near the open-air stage. You used the fireplace to lose her, and then you went back to accuse her of the murder. Does that about sum it up? <laughs> you craft an engaging tale, Edgeworth, but there are two problems with it. Problems in what respect? Why do you think my real reason wasn't wasn't allowing her to chase after me? <laughs> it was all so I could capture Kay Faraday. What? When I saw you using that device at Gatewaterland, I knew right away that you were Burn Faraday's daughter. <laughs> I became curious, so I researched a little into your background. That's how I found out that you were on the trail of the Yathagarasu. So that's why you tried to pin Mr. Cochin's murder on me. Yes. I knew you would show up at this embassy tonight. So I thought to use you. But pinning the murder on you wasn't my only goal. You had another? <laughs> yes. 
Once I had you under arrest, I had planned to search you and take back the device that rightfully belongs to me, the true Yatagarasu. You were going to take Little Thief away from me? Seven years ago, it was thanks to that device that... Thanks to that device that Faraday was able to infiltrate this place. But he stole more than he should have, and he had a tough time recovering that precious key. And the person who stole the Atagarasu's key was Mr. Faraday. You, that incident seven years ago. What was the catalyst behind it? In the eyes of the smuggling ring, the Atagarasu was becoming a bit of a problem. It wasn't an especially pleasant assignment. Why? Why did you come become a member of the Yatagarasu? Why? There is no why. I was destined to betray everyone from the, from the very beginning. From the beginning? What is that supposed to mean? The person I take orders from hasn't changed, even now, to this day. Does this mean that the leader of the smuggling ring wasn't Mr. Cochin? And the real ringleader is still out there pulling the strings. You're done asking what you need to know, because if so, we should probably get going. And you're going to tell me everything you did tonight, do you understand, Sheena? I guess I should tell you then, that I was... That I was the one who set the Babalese embassy on fire. Why did you do that? <laughs> I suppose it was to destroy all evidence of the counterfeit bills. That was what the smuggling ring was trying to do. But then, why start two fires? Sorry, but I can't tell you anything about the ring. It's your job to complete your investigation after all. I've had my fun. Now it's your turn to enjoy the enjoy the ride. Wait, I mean, Miss Sheena. Yes. When I fell out, fell to the floor earlier, these fell at my feet. What about them? They're such pretty hair sticks that I thought, well, that I should return them to you. <laughs> you can have them. They're no use of me use to me anymore. If you don't want them, you can always just throw them away. No, I want to keep them. Ah, <laughs> suit yourself. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot, Edgeworth. Hmm? About the second problem I had with your story. I didn't kill anyone tonight. What? I'm not saying that as a sore loser. Think of it as a hint, if you will. Mr. Prosecutor. Yes, Agent Long. Mark my words, I'm not done here, and I'll be back. And it's not it's got nothing to do with duty or anything, because this has become my personal case. I may have been shot, but I'll show you just how dangerous a wounded wolf can be. His anger appears to have negated his the sensation of pain in his injured leg. Oh my god. It's finally over, Kay. I feel like I've peered into her heart a little, you know? And it's so cold and dark and incredibly lonely. Lonely. The person who was giving her all these commands. The one who was who thought my father was a problem to be removed. The person is the real ringleader behind the smuggling ring. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I have a favor to ask. Can you hold on to these hair sticks for me? They're really pretty, just like the ones they were selling for the Gem and Ninja show. But until this case is over, I don't think I can look at them without being overcome. I understand. I'll take good care of them for you. Hmm. There's a bit of soil stuck to stuck on the ends of these sticks. Oh, I guess that it's that time already, huh? So it's midnight. The dawn of another day. Well, actually, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> hey, Pops. Thanks a bunch. You've really done a lot of, for everyone all these years. Detective Bad, don't tell me today is the day. Yeah, it is. With this, I can retire in peace. It was down to the wire, and we almost didn't make it. We did it. We solved everything. But that's just it. We haven't solved everything yet. The ringleader of the smuggling ring. You, the, Yata you, the Yatagarasu, were chasing after. The legend of that Yaga Yatagarasu is now over. Mr. Edgeworth, that bit of logic earlier, it was brilliant. I feel like I can leave it all in your hands. I'm counting on you. Is it really true, Uncle Bad? Were you most a par par part of the Atagarasu? As I said to you earlier, Kay, I'm truly sorry. I wanted nothing but a peaceful life for you. Uncle Bad! Hey, don't take it so seriously. 
It's all just a, one big joke, right? Unfortunately, it isn't. Oh, come on, sir. She's just yanking on my chain, isn't she, Mr. Edgeworth? Detective Bad, wait, no, you're no longer a detective. Mr. Bad, I'd like to ask you about Yatagarasu. You too, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, here, I should give these back to you. These are... The pages from my KG-8 case file that the Yatagarasu stole from my office. Huh, wait, what? Mr. Edgeworth, I must apologize for last night. So the Atagarasu who stole into my room was you, was it? Wait, and that means... What? T tell me it's not true. That's too insane for me to believe, sir. It's true, even if it's not something you want to hear. The KG-8 incident, it was a very emotionally trying case. We stood in that courtroom, Faraday as the prosecutor and I as the lead detective. Faraday had evidence in his possession that would prove the defendant guilty. However, because it was stolen, the defendant was found innocent. You was the elder sister of the victim in this case. When the defendant was pr pronounced not guilty, she let out a great wail. That's when we realized that there was a limit to what, we, what the law could do. The only way to bring someone like that to justice was to go outside of the court, do so outside of the courts. That's what we thought at the time. That's how we formed the Yathagarasu and vowed to bring to light any dirty dealings companies had with the ring, including companies that dealt with the Amano group, Mr. Amano's conglomerate. We called ourselves the Yathagarasu and flexed our collective muscle. We exposed all sorts of shady dealings as a warning to the business world as a whole. By doing that, we were able to stop the higher-ups from covering things up. And then, it was finally time. We had finally arrived at the moment... moment when... we'd find out the ringleader's true identity. It was then that you literally stabbed us in the heart. And Faraday, he died for it. But why? Wasn't she the sister of the victim in the KG-8 incident? After Faraday's death, I looked into her past. And that's when I found out... ...that she was a phony. The victim of the KG-8 incident, CCU. She never had a sister. What? And that means... Sheena wasn't the only fake name she used. Callisto Yu was also another pseudonym. From the very beginning, that woman was a spy sent by the smuggling ring. She said it herself. I was destined to betray everyone from the very beginning. Anyway, let's return to the real topic at hand. Mr. Edgeworth, this trump card that we struck stuck onto this page of the case file. Please use it wisely. Trump card. That photo that we stuck on there. Try peeling it off. Behind it slumbers a piece of evidence that Faraday hid away all those years ago. It's the mark of the Yatagarasu, but why? This is a directive's card from the big boss. Take a look at the back. This was something Cochin had on him at the time of the KG-8 incident ten years ago. That blood is from the victim of the incident, Miss CCU. But why is the card adorned with the mark of the Yatagarasu? The reason why we called ourselves the Yatagarasu was because of the three-legged three -legged raven mark that the smuggling ring's boss used. Listen, my brain can't fucking keep up with this bullshit! Apparently, orders from the boss would come on these cards without fail. The person who received the order was supposed to burn it immediately after reading it. And apparently, it burns a bright green flame when set ablaze. So you mean the cards were written in Bubbly's ink? The fact that the card what that Cochin was sent made it into Faraday's hand at all. It's nothing short of a miracle. We decided that whenever we stole anything, we would send a card along with it to, be to the police. So that's what those white cards are. The great thief that used the mark 
that only those within the ring would know. It was our message to the ringleader. That we were only a few steps behind. Interesting. And one more thing. Detective Gumshoe. I'm entrusting this to you. What is this, sir? This is what I was talking about earlier. During the KG-8 incident trial, Faraday had this in his possession. This important, definitive piece of evidence. But I thought it was stolen. How do you have it? The person who stole it from us ten years ago was a man by the name of Ernest Amano. And he had it locked and hidden away for all this time. But we forced him to tell us where it was finally. After the other day's kidnapping case. This video. Come any closer, I'm warning you. This is the same video as the one Mr. Portsman was trying to conceal from me. Yeah, it would seem that even he was caught up in in the ring's web. Amana was preparing to take on the boss someday. And the video was his insurance. Literally every single case is connected. Every single fucking one. <laughs> Mr. Gum should take this. <laughs> That's where that prosecutor comes in. He was to retrieve the video. On top of that, he was apparently instructed to sneak into your office. And steal the trump card. You saw it for yourself, right? The card that told him to preserve the evidence. And that card was not the calling card of the Etogarasu, but rather a directive's card from the ringleader to Mr. Portsman. The two pieces together make for a strong weapon for whoever holds them. The evidence Mr. Portsman thought it would hold for me, and the one that you stole from my office last night. Both pieces are illegal, and for me to use either one is. Whether you use them or not is up to you. But they will be of help to you when you take on someone who is above the law. Is the boss one of those who cannot be brought to court, that court that Mr. Faraday spoke of? Detective Bad, there is no limit to the law, for it is the people who determine the limits to them. You still insist that, even now, you really are something else. And leave the rest in your hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, the handcuffs. It's time to lock up the last remaining member of the Atagarasu. Pops, don't ever lose your detective spirit. <laughs> Pops, why is this happening? This isn't justice. Like I always told you, do not get emotionally involved. Now let's go. Yes, sir. Is this really the end of the of a legend? Look, Kay is so upset. I'm gonna have to go and get something to eat because God, my stomach is killing me. Let me just say real fast. Go get food. I will go get food. Oh my god. So I'm just gonna do this. And do a bit of this. And you just enjoy this music, I guess.
I'm back. Huh. I got some crisp bread. <laughs> I kind of forgot these existed. Because I had them in my, um... In my... Oh my god, I forgot to turn off the lights. Hold on. Be right back. I've had them in my drawers for like since last year or something. And I low key knew they were there, but I was also like scared. Scared of them because I don't know, I have this fear of like um old food. Speaking of, I have a a bag of hot dogs. <laughs> in uh, my fridge that also have expired and i'm just like kind of pretending they're not there <laughs> though i know i'm gonna have to do something about it at, at one point or another this also has actually technically expired but um uh, i didn't open it until yesterday when it was when i <laughs> when it when was the when the expiration date it expired yesterday <laughs> But I only open it then, so uh, it tastes fine. I mean, even if it were expired, it would still like taste fine. It would just kind of like be kind of weird. It would taste taste like kind of like old uh, chocolate pudding, I guess. But it tastes fine. Huh. Anyways. But yeah, luckily, crisp bread, it doesn't really expire. Like, so long as they're, like, still dry. Fucking eat them. <laughs> yeah. In, um, I don't know how, how it is in, like, other countries, but here we have, like, uh... We have best buy date, and then we have, like, expiry date. Those are two different things. Yeah, meat. Meat. Meat is perfectly understandable. Like here, even eggs. Eggs are perfectly fine. Here, because they go through like this other pro process that they don't do in like some other countries. Mm-hmm. But I'm also scared of those eggs. But literally, just as if you crack them and there's no smell, they're, they're fine. They're good to go. Obviously, if they smell, you should just throw them out. Oh. I mean, yeah, it does. on the safe side, you know? And like, and this is from like a milk brand called Q that uh, also has like regular mil milk, of course. And on those it says like best before but not bad after but here it literally says like last day of use pretty much <laughs> it's 
Yeah, so long as it looks good, tastes good, it's it's not really that big of a deal. Like my mom made this like yeah, experiment once. Where she was like serving some food to some men. I don't remember exactly the context. Um, but she basically like she had milk that had expired and they were like oh no we can't drink this so she took that milk poured it into the new milk and was like here you go and they drank it happily no one cared at all <laughs> yes that's exactly what it says <laughs> I forgot, whoops. There you go. Q, sponsor me. <laughs> Listen, I picked so many of these bad boys. Asterisk. Best because it is fresh. Everything about taste. 214 people. 7 to 34 years old. January uh, 2019. So they, they had a test where this was like made to be Norway's best chocolate milk. Really? What happened? And what milk? Because you, you guys, you have like this like really great milk. I don't remember what it's called. It's like this big carton. Okay. I mean, nothing wrong with with having vegan stuff or I guess it's not technically suddenly they decided to stop the competition because we cannot compete during COVID we're gonna I kind of get it. So like the winner won, but they didn't win because Is that is that like How am I supposed to read it? Huh. Interesting. Speaking of dairy scandals, did you know that there was a Norwegian butter crisis in what, 2007? Something like that. <laughs> Where we just ran out of butter. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> I asked my mom about this and she was like, no? And I'm like, bitch, it was like right before Christmas. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I don't know what we did. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Can I have to find that? Um. Okay, yeah, sure. Yes, where is that, um... Guy, I need to find that fucking... Oh my god, yes. I was 20... 2028. <laughs> I'm so used to saying 20 now. 2000... This is it? I guess it is. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Blue Badger, shut up. Okay. I found this video. It's just so funny. Uh, there we go. There we go. Hi. My name is Tommy. I'm a singer and a celebrity and uh, famous fa uh, famous bloggers from Norway. Some of you may know that we have a butter crisis in Norway right now, which uh, basically means that we can't get any butter from the, the store. But I have noticed that some of your comedians in uh, um, USA are making fun of the fact that we don't have any butter products. Um, then I want to ask you this. What if it was you that didn't have any butter? What if I came home to you and took your butter from your fridge, the fridge shelter, and took your butter away from you on any, on any, any other day. Yes, and let's not uh, shove it under the, the mat. We all know that American people are pretty overweight. <laughs> How would you feel? Sure. What about your sweet potatoes and your sour cream and your uh, stocking then. Do you know what this is? This is a traditional box of Norwegian butter. Let's look inside. It's hardly empty. Do you know what's approaching? Christmas is approach, approach, approaching. How do you think we feel? Do you know what the national <laughs> Christmas cake in Norway is? <laughs> it's something called Lusekatte, pussy cats in English. <laughs> do you know what the main ingredients in the uh, in Lusekatte is? Butter. Do you think this is enough for all the Christmas cakes that I was gonna make in uh, Christmas? No. So fuck you, American people, because you don't know how it feels being without butter in Christmas time. And I ask again, what if it was you who didn't have butter? Would you go ask the neighbor? Oh no, that's right. The neighbor doesn't have butter either. Nobody in the whole white fucking country has butter. <laughs> I will come to your house. I will go to your refrigerator, fridge, fridge, 
your refrigerator. I will take your butter out of your fridge. I will eat the butter in front of you and your family's eyes. And I, I force you to watch me while I eat all your butter that you were going to have on Christmas Eve. Ning. You will beg and cry and say, no, don't eat all our butter we need for Christmas. I will say, haha, not my problem. And take the empty bottle, I will throw it on the stairway. I will go home. And be the way for all your Danish people. What if we came and take all your red, disgusting sausage? sausage? I don't mean to be violent, I just have to paint it out so you understand that it's not very uh, nice. We are a country in need and this is the thank. Thank you very much. It sounds like my mother. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Wait, when was it actually? Oh, it was in 2011. I saw 2008 somewhere. Eh, whatever. It's 2011, anyways. Oh, okay. That was a great fucking laugh. Anyways, back to the game, I guess. <laughs> so now we know who the Yatagarasu really was. And yet, there remains much to this case that needs to be resolved. Like how the weapons crossed country lines, for example. The two countries have incredibly strict security systems and entry pr procedures. Short of a miracle, it's impossible for someone to have smuggled them in. Smuggling them in, huh? You will need to open a new line of investigation on just this aspect alone. Yummy. <laughs> Chalky milk. <laughs> You can see it now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hmm. Before we do, I would like to go through my evidence once more. <laughs> There's a VCR here, sir. And we can see what's on that tape Detective Bad gave us. This piece of evidence from the KG-8 incident, hidden from sight for ten long years. I just know that this is related to the current case somehow. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please play the tape for us. Sure thing, sir. This man, it's Manny Cochin. And he's holding a knife in his hand. This looks like footage from a security camera at the entrance of an apartment building. An apartment building? How do you figure that? Unlike you, I actually read the summary file in the KG8 incident, and the crime scene was the victim's own apartment. So this footage was shot at the entrance to the victim's own apartment. At the trial, Mr. Faraday claimed that this piece of footage existed. However, no one could find it. Yes, somehow someone was able to steal it and hide it through Mr. Ernest Amano. I can see how this would have been a definitive piece. And why someone would want to hide it. It's a piece of evidence from a 10-year-old case. There's no way it's related to this case we're working on now, sir. Actually, I believe it has everything to do with the case we're working on now. The ringleader even went so far as to use Mr. Portsman to retrieve it. 
Which means that in this video lies a very inconvenient bit of footage to the ringleader. Where? Where? Mm -mm. Wait. What was that? Huh? That bit you played just now. Please show it again. Show it to me again. This car. This is something we cannot overlook. What's that, sir? Look here, Detective Gumshoe. This is the national flag of the Principality of Codopia. And because it has the national flag on it, we know this to be an official government car. But the question we should be asking ourselves is what was a government car doing there? Ah, Miss Von Karma and Mr. Edgeworth. So you were here all this time. That's, that's the voice I gave him. Ambassador Alba. Thank you very much for continuing the investigation, even at this time of night. Oh, you're you're, you're very welcome, my dude. It's 2 a.m. here. <laughs> oh, if only I was even a tiny bit more careful. This tragedy would have never have happened. I am truly sorry. Wait, do we know his age at all? Oh, he was 72, that's right. I believe I checked that earlier. This wasn't your fault, sir. This has nothing- this had nothing to do with how careful you were. You idiot, Quirkus! You couldn't chase after a simple thief! Now then, let's get down to the real reason why I came looking for the two of you. I thought I was gonna say- <laughs> You're young whippersnapper solving crimes at 2 a.m. <laughs> I didn't really stop this that. Let's get down to business. <laughs> hmm. I would like you to put the investigation on hold for a while. Can you do that? Excuse me. I heard you apprehended the thief that turned this embassy upside down. And we are in the middle of an event. An event celebrating our country's reconcili reconciliation. Yes, that is exactly what I wanted to say. We can't exactly have the police and detectives walking around here forever. You're scaring the visitors away. The fuck are there visitors there at 1 a.m.? <laughs> To defeat the crimes. <laughs> so I hope that you can understand how I feel. Mm -hmm. We must finish our investigation and resolve the remaining issues. Why don't we leave the rest of the Alabastian and Babalese police? We are so close. Just a little more in Miss Von Karma. I'm afraid I've made up my mind. And without my permission, you can't proceed with your investigation anyway, right? That's true. However, as he said at the very beginning, this area can be considered to be Alabastian soil. In which case, we are nothing but foreigners in their land. This is really where our investigation ends. I sure fucking hope not, because the chapter just fucking started. Shifu, we found Miss Regworth, sir. Shifu, this way! Yo. Yo! <laughs> Long do be kind of cool, though. Like, not gonna lie. Agent Long, you were back on the scene rather quickly. If I laid back and took a break, I'd lose the scent of my prey, Mr. Prosecutor. Agent Long, why in the... Why have you returned? Because I have to solve this case no matter what. Well, I'm sorry to inform you. Ah, oh, don't take this the wrong way. I don't suspect you personally. However, a member of Interpol was just found to be a thief. And so... Uh-huh. Under these circumstances, I wish to put your investigation on hold. After all, I believe your our own police can handle things from here. They are quite capable. Uh-huh. At this rate, our investigation really will come to a close. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador Alba, I get it now. I really do. Oh, I'm very glad you understand how I feel. No, not that. What I was talking about is... I know who the killer is behind tonight's murder. 
you no the K killer do you really mean that agent long <laughs> wolves don't lie then who is it well let me first say that i'm not talking about mr cochin's murder that was all sheena Lang Ji says, The truth lies not at the exit, but rather shines outside the maze itself. The truth is unexpectedly, unexpectedly simple. So let me ask you this. Who do you think was the Mask the Second's killer? Hm, I'll tell you who. It was you, Francisca von Karma! was the killer hey wait but that's impossible yeah hello that whip is actually quite yeah. hold your tongue and that ludicrous remark you were about to make agent long are you seriously accusing her of murder yeah i am he doesn't appear to be joking hey sis i remember that just before ambassador alba went to give a speech he called you into his office, right? Y yes, he did. But what does that have to do with anything? I'm getting to that. Furthermore, in order to solve both, both cases, you moved around rather freely between Alabas and Babal, did you not? Objection! And where is your evidence that I am the killer? <laughs> I was just getting to that, trust me. I'll show them to you in due time. Ambassador Alba, in order for me to bring this case to a close, I'll need to inspect your office one more time. Will you grant me permission? With things as they are, I suppose I don't have much of a choice, do I? I already forgot his fucking voice. Good. Then let's move out. Oh, and don't even think about running away, sis. My pack will be keeping a close eye on you. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. <laughs> as if I would have any reason to flee. But just to be clear, your logic had better be sound. Because I'll accept nothing short of a perfect explanation. She seems rather upset, not that I blame her. <laughs> I expected that you'd accept no, accept no less. But we'll see how long you can keep that nose of yours stuck up in the air like that. Uh -huh. Agent Long. As someone related to tonight's case, I request that you allow me to take part. And so that I may clean up my superior's mess. Hmm. I guess I should. More the merrier, especially when it's the peanut gallery. Well, in that case, I want to join in too. I still haven't seen what it looks like in Alabas yet. If you like Kayin, then you gotta let me in too, pal. I can't sit around and do nothing when Miss Von Karma's in trouble. Hey, Gummy, let's have a competition to see who can save her first, okay? Okay, I'll take you up on that. Oh yeah, I'm fired up and ready to go. As a detective, I don't believe this is something you're supposed to be excited over. <laughs> Sounds like this is going to get real interesting. Ambassador Alba, we'll be bringing these kids along for the ride. Very well. But I'd like you to keep in mind that this will be your last chance. <laughs> I'll have this whole mess cleaned up before you know it. Now let's go. Okay, now let's first go over the facts one more time. Manny Cochin's body was found over in the Secretariat's office in Babal. The weapon that took his life was one of the Alabast's ornamental knives. And then the body of Damask II, Mr. Kashinao. It was found here in the Alabastian ambassador's office. Through our investigation, we found that the, tr that the murder weapon was the Primitix statue. And that this is actually Babal's statue. This case, no matter how I look at it. Sis, if it wasn't you, then there's no one else who could have pulled this, pulled this off. Agent Lang, do you understand the full implications of what you are saying? Of course I do, sis. Gosh, you know. 
and I'm serious. You were on the trail of the smuggling ring, and you wanted any evidence you could find. And so, while people were distracted by the Atagarasu's appearance, 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 you snuck in here. That's when you two ran into each other. You and that other thief who took advantage of the confusion from the fire. Even if all that were true, how do you explain the movement of the weapons? Hmm. Don't worry, I plan to show that you were the culprit behind that too. You had permission to investigate both embassies at will. With that kind of free reign, you could have easily taken the weapons across country, country lines. Hey now. Look sis, I thought I already told you. I'm not messing around here. Uh -huh. This case isn't directly tied to the smuggling ring. But Sheena certainly is tied to the smuggling ring. He is right in saying that she is a member of the smug smuggling ring. However, the connection between this case and the ring... Could it not be deeper than what any of us can imagine? Uh -huh. Let's get this ridiculous circus over with already. Francisca, you need to calm down. Because you only know the facts of the Alabastian side of the case. I don't believe you can see the case as a whole and therefore solve it. What? But don't worry, I am taking this seriously as well. And I will prove your innocence. That's the only way to be, Mr. Prosecutor. But can you come up with anything else that could top my hypothesis? Of course, your explanation has to solve the mystery of the moving weapons as well. Of course, and I will. Let us now delve into the truth behind the murder of the mask number two- Number two? Number two? The second? <laughs> hmm. You do understand, don't you, Miles Edgeworth? This isn't just a confrontation against Agent Lang. If you can't figure out how the murder of the Mask II is related to the smuggling ring, then it will mean the end of our investigation. As long as I have no good counter-argument to, to his hypothesis, then the best I can do is walk this thin tightrope and see what I can do. Come on, Mr. Prosecutor, let's get started. Yes, let's. One of Alabas' knives was used in Babal to murder Mr. Cochin. And the murder weapon in the killing of the Mask II is Babal's Primadoc statue. Somehow these two objects were able to penetrate the two countries' impenetrable security. The only one who traversed the two countries just before and after the crimes was you. So as long as I can't explain how the weapons moved about, Francisca will remain a suspect. You got it, Mr. Prosecutor. So why don't you stop giving me a hard time? Under these circumstances, who the heck can carry a weapon across country lines? I've worked through every possibility, but there's only one that's pos plausible. Your boss. Agent Long, what I've learned from you just now is that you've lost sight of yourself. What are you talking about? By focusing too intently on what that which is in front of is in front of us, we become blind to the truth. Don't tell me Lang Ji never said anything to that effect. You prosecutor. Who do you think you are speaking about Lang Ji's proverbs like that? <laughs> I don't need his proverbs. Because my words are all you need all you will need to see the truth. <laughs> Gotta get to the statement three. Agent Long, those two items are not the only two to cross the border tonight. Oh? The Master Second was killed with Babal's Pyramidoc statue, yes. But if that's the case, then tell me where did Alaba's Pyramidoc statue go? To Babal. Precisely. And if the two statues really were switched, then this means that both statues were smuggled across the border at some point. Which means that a total of three items were smuggled across the embassies. Hmm, I guess so. But you know what? It doesn't matter the number of items, only that the sis is the only one who could have done it. Because the only person who went back and forth between Alabast and Babal is her. Is that really true? Was there no one else who traveled between the two countries? Actually, there was definitely another person. One who paid a visit to both sides of the wall. Thank you. 
Is that really so, Agent Long? <laughs> what a lousy time to try to bluff your way out of this. I checked out what the guards said along with the security camera's footage. You're not going to overturn my hypothesis that easily. But suppose there was some other way other than through those through the theater doors. What other way? The other entity that managed to cross the border unharmed. If I point it out, it would open up a whole new possibility. And though I hesitate to bring this out, as long as this entity exists, the impossible road becomes a, becomes a possibility. It looks like you've got some clever idea in mind. I do, and I can show it to you through a single piece of evidence. Tch, fine then. Let's see this piece of evidence that will show me this other route. This piece of evidence will show us another way to move between the two countries. Apparently it's, uh... Oh! Agent Lung, I am sure you are familiar with this unforgettable photo. Heh. <laughs> Supernatural photo, like I said before. Humans can't fly. No, of course not. I understand that perfectly well. Don't start claiming that Sheena somehow grew wings either. I wouldn't dream of claiming that. I wouldn't allow you to make take back what you said either. I'll say it again, it's not humanly possible to fly through the air without wings. So you'd better have a good explanation for this, Mr. Prosecu prosecutor. <laughs> How can I prove who it was that flew through the air in this photo? Wait, not humanly possible. Eureka! Very well. You will have your explanation. Sounds like you have a good idea simmering inside that head of yours. Let's hear it. The face hidden within this photo's blurry trail shadow is... Naturally, the shadow is the third smuggled object, the primitive statue replica. Can't be serious! The Atagarasu, or rather Callisto Yu, dressed as Agent Sheena, was inside the ball. She dressed the replica statue up in clothes and launched it through the air. Ha! <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor! You left out a very crucial bit in your explanation. I knew I did. She launched it through the air. Ha! <laughs> and how exactly did she do that? He's literally bearing his fangs at me. But he has a point. How exactly did it move through the air like that? As long as this remains unsolved, we won't be able to move any closer to the truth. Which reminds me, didn't he say this earlier? I remember that just before Ambassador Alba went to give a speech, he called you into his office, right? So just before the murder, Francisco was called here, right into this very room. If that's the case, then that may be another avenue I can pursue. Agent Long, in order for me to answer that que question, I will need to hear testimony from Miss Von Karma. Oh, you mean uh, the statue of um, the ambassador? What's his name? Alba. Him. He looks like a tree. What are you up to now, pretty boy? Earlier, you mentioned something of interest to me. You said that just before the murder occurred, Miss Von Karma had been in this room because Ambassador Alba had called for her. And for that reason alone, you believe her to be the killer. Yeah, I guess I did say something like that. In that case, I believe it is my duty to ask her what her side of the story is. <laughs> Do you really think a criminal would tell us the honest truth? dare you? As I've said numerous times, there is absolutely no proof that I am the killer. Miles Edgeworth, don't tell me you suspect me too. I don't. However, I can't ignore the fact that you were, were in this room at one point in time. Which is why I would like to hear about your movements in this room. <laughs> Francisca, I feel that I still don't have enough information. Which is why your testimony is incredibly important to the outcome of the case. 
Right. So, what would you like me to talk about? Hmm. I'd like you to please testify to your movements in this room until the murder occurred. Hmm. Alright. Let's try this your way for a change. But if what she has to say turns out to be a waste of time... I'll place her under arrest faster than you can help. No! Hmm. <laughs> as you wish. As I said earlier, I was assigned to guard duty in the Alabastian Embassy. After I saw the steel samurai off on his way towards the amb ambassador's office, I returned to the Rose Garden for a bit and checked up on the security situation. After all the preparations were in place, I was called back by Ambassador Alba to his office. Francisca, I want us to make this clear from the very beginning. So what I wish to confirm is that the only time span which you were in this office was before the murder occurred, is that correct? Yes, of course. I see. You know, the only way that I can see for us to break out of this situation is to ask Francisca about her testimony in more detail. Okay. Statement four. Let's fucking go. Two, three, and four, and press. There we go. <laughs> At that time, the mask, the second body, had yet to be found in this room. Is that correct? That's right. But Ambassador Albert was here. One could hardly miss his rather large presence. Hmm. Hmm. A criminal would say anything to get out of getting arrested. How do we know you're not lying? Well, if you need proof, I'd be happy to oblige you. Seriously? I could keep telling you. When I arrived at this office, Ambassador Alba was already here. He was standing by the flower box on the, on the windowsill watering his plants. I can attest to that. I remember speaking. <clears throat> I remember speaking with a lovely lady around that time here in my office. <laughs> Right then. Add that statement to your testimony, and let's hear some details. So Ambassador Alba was in this room at the time, was he? When I arrived, Ambassador Alba was watering the flowers on the windowsill. For the sake of being thorough, I'd like to ask you something. How did you know that Ambassador Alba was watering his plants at the windowsill? What do you mean by that? The entrance to this room is on this side, however, the window is on the opposite side. If what you say is true, then when you entered the room, his body would have been like a wall. He would have been blocking your view of what he was doing, isn't, is that not, isn't that not correct? I suppose it was a bit hard to see around him, but fortunately for me, Ambassador Albo is not an, Im an immovable wall. I knocked before I entered, and as I did, he turned around to greet me, with a watering can in his hand. So it's only natural to believe he was watering his plants, right? I suppose. After his greeting, we spent a little time talking about his flowers. He had obtained them himself, and is growing them with the utmost care, you know. Yes. The plants in this room, they are... All like my children. The passion flowers in the flower box on the windowsill are growing beautifully too. All four of them are in full bloom. From Karma, what did you just say? What did you say just now? Yeah, I was like, weren't there only two? I said that the flowers are growing, gr gr growing beautifully. What about that statement? Do you not understand? What do I not understand? I do not understand why a certain thing is the way it is. I'd like for you to append that statement to your testimony. Very well. There were four large passion flowers in full bloom in the flower box. Francisca, for some odd reason, your testimony contradicts with this piece of evidence. It does appear that way. Ha, <laughs> I knew it. I knew we couldn't trust your words, sis. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing discrediting Miss Von Karma like this? Yes, sir. If you keep this up, she's gonna get taken away, sir. Ah! All I've done is state what I saw. I have made not a single mistake in my testimony. And for this, I am still under suspicion for murder. Is the number of flowers really all that important at this juncture, Miles? 
the very least it's a contradiction in this enigmatic case. One that I find hard to dismiss as irrelevant. Huh. <laughs> then let's hear it, Mr. Prosecutor. What does the number of flowers have to do with anything? What does it prove? I believe the answer to that will become clear if we were to examine that flower box. How did this contradiction come about? There must be something behind this discrepancy. They're my beloved flowers. I've grown them from the... With, me, the, with the utmost care. So I ask that you please be gentle with them as you examine them, Mr. Edgeworth. Hm. I understand. Hmm, this patch of soil looks as though it has had something removed from it. <laughs> what are you doing, Mr. Prosecutor? Why would you clam up all of a sudden? I'm still here, waiting for an explanation, you know. Did you know, Agent Long, flowers are best appreciated in silence. <laughs> it looks like two things were pulled out of this flower box. The name of these flowers, I believe they're called passion flowers. Despite being called flowers, they're actually a species of vine. They appear to be growing well and are well supported by these plant supports. Edgeworth plant dad confirmed? <laughs> yeah, but no matter how I look at it, it looks like there are only two here to me. You realize, don't you, sis? Your little lie has failed you. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth! Hurry up and shut this man up for me already. Hmm. I suppose I will need to use some evidence to shut him up, won't I? Hmm. I believe I have just the piece of evidence you require. Oh, you do, do you? You have such confidence in the face of your current plights. But I highly doubt it'll last until the end. Hmm. You howl like a wolf, Agent Lung. But we'll see if you have any bite to back up that bark after you see the evidence. Can you stop flirting? Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> the hair sticks. The third of the passion flowers for real can be seen in this piece of evidence. Hair sticks. Sheena, who was supposedly in the ball the entire time, had these hair sticks on her. That look exactly like the plant supports in this flower box. In other words, I believe it can be said that these hair sticks are in actuality support sticks for the passion flowers. Heh, <laughs> so what? Is this really all that important to the case? Of course it is. It means that we've found yet another item that was smuggled between the countries tonight. Think about it logically, Angel Long. These sticks were originally an alabast. But somehow they wound up in Sheena's hands, who was in Babal the whole night. So make no mistake, these sticks were smuggled somehow, just like the knife and statue. Aww. Huh, very well then. I want to hear from you exactly how they wound up in Babal. How did these support sticks find their way to Babal, and why? There must be some reason as to why they ended up there. Huh, so that's why. Agent Lung, if you would please take a look at this and tell me its shape. Hmm, it's just another stick, isn't it? Hmm, huh, so it is. But the shape of the support sticks is what is important. When they are used with something in this room, that's when it all comes into focus. And the object that completes the picture when used with the support sticks is... Do you have any idea? The fan? How the fuck is the fan? How- How did you end up at the fan? Listen, I want to know your reasoning here, right? Eureka! Crossbow it is. That's a crossbow. Wait, you're not really suggesting. 
I am. These hair sticks, or rather, plant support sticks. They make for perfect arrows. I've done it. I found the common thread that connects the two of offices. But this thread is yet to be completely untangled. Even using the arrows, how does this explain how the statues were transported? I mean, that's also a theory, I guess, but how would you get them over there, to the other side, you know? Furthermore, who could it have been who fired this, these sticks as arrows? There must be a common thread that ties all of these things together. The prosecutor, hold up a second. You do realize what happens when you tie a statue to an arrow, right? They don't fly at all. So Babal's statue was draped in the Yatagarasu's clothes and then shot over here. Even if you fired the arrows from this side, they wouldn't go far with the statue tied to them. I don't think I need to tell you that the primitive statues didn't sprout wings. You're a realist after all, aren't you? The primitive statues didn't sprout wings. Hm, of course they didn't. Glad you understand. I feel much better already. I was afraid for a second that you were unaware of that crucial fact. It's only crucial because you're under the belief that the wings that wings are necessary to the to this equation. What? You need to free your mind a bit more, and let it fly like a bird on the wind. The Primitive Statues flew, but not on a wing. Allow me a bit of your time, and I'll explain this mysterious phenomenon to you. Press. Press. There we go. We are in agreement that an arrow by itself would reach the other side, correct? But just the arrow by itself is pretty meaningless, don't you think, Miss Prosecutor? Because the things they wanted to smuggle were a lot bigger than nothing. No, that's not necessarily true. What? What I need right now is not further discussion of my conclusions. It's the launching of my it's the launching of my conclusions. What the shooter wanted to launch with the crossbow was not the statues themselves, but rather Something a crossbow can launch that can be used to move the statues. If it wasn't the statue that was tied to the arrows, then what did the crossbow launch? Wire! Wire! Finally. Finally, we have reached this point in our discussion. For I present to you that that which was carried by the arrow from the crossbow. Heh, <laughs> you get it now, Mr. Prosecutor. I can see exactly what you are trying to say. You're saying that the wire was tied to an arrow and then shot into Mr. Cochin's office. But what if they missed? <laughs> All the way from the fifth floor of the Alabastian Embassy. Down to the third floor of the Babalese Embassy. Oh, I hate it when... Your shirt rides up. Ugh. And your bare skin is just like directly into the chair. If what you're claiming is really what happened, I can see how Alabas' Primadoc statue could be moved. Gravity would be used to move the statue down the wire from the fifth to the third floor. But then, what about Babal's Primadoc statue? Dark shadow in this photo is clearly flying away from the ball. Going in the opposite way of gravity from the third floor of the Babalese Embassy up to the fifth floor of the Alabastian Embassy. How do you explain that? Aha, uh -huh. I think I finally see how the gears behind this whole trick works. Agent Long, the motion you used behind this trick. I wonder if perhaps you have yet to envision how it works in your head. Can I, uh. No, I cannot. Damn it. Motion? What motion? This is the motion that was employed to smuggle the ball's primitive statue. 
a rotary motion. I believe it was done via rotary motion. If the two statues were transported simultaneously. Simultaneously? Get real! The statues would collide somewhere along the way. Did I ever say that there was only one line of wire between the two offices? If you shot an arrow with the two ends of a wire next tied to it, a circular belt can be formed. Long Shi says, don't object and call a success, but it's beyond reason reasonability. Taking into account the tension difference between the two wires. The top one would sag too much to the point where the statues would collide anyway. Agent Long. As you know, the primitive statue is a one-of-a-kind national treasure. And the fact that Babal's statue is a hollow re replica of the real treasure. It would naturally be lighter than the real one. Meaning that my idea is very possible. Long Xi says. Aah! Well, technically it's a, it's a howl, but uh... Ooh! There we go. Nailed it. Here is what I believe happened. Miss Yu and her mystery co-conspirator set themselves up in the two different rooms. The co-conspirator bridged the rooms by shooting the two ends of the wire down, in, down on one arrow. When the two of them covered the statues and proceeded, then the two of them covered the statues and proceeded to transport the, st the statues. After the switch was completed, another arrow was fired carrying the other end of the wire down to Babal, where it was to be disposed of. And to do that, Miss Yu hid it inside the grandfather clock. QED? What was that supposed to mean? QED? QED. Ah, Latin abbreviation for quod erat uh, demonstrandum, which was to be demonstrated. QED may appear, okay. I see. May appear at the conclusion of a text to signify that the author's overall argument has just been proven. So he's like, pretty much like the snap your fingers in the sea formation, but like the, the more like uh, pretentious way. I guess. I love that. I actually love that. He's mic dropping. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um. <laughs> this proves it, right, Agent Long? But I'm not the killer. Not yet, sis. I still haven't had my dessert yet. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? The proof is in the pudding, as it were. Pudding is a nice dessert. So, you think you can do it? Can you prove that what you said is what happened? Because remember, if you can't, I'll be taking a certain someone back home with me as a souvenir. I agree that as long as there is no proof, my hypothesis remains just that. However... What I have laid out is no mere hypothesis, for there is one more piece of evidence. I'm like, huh? One more? This should be interesting. You think you have a piece of evidence that will turn your hypothesis into fact? Well then, let's see it, Mr. Prosecutor. The thing that made it possible to create a circular belt out of a length of wire. I believe that it is right here in this very room. Now then, I believe this is what made the circular belt transportation method possible. Yes, now is the fan. <laughs> You were, like, ahead of the game. That was kind of funny. <laughs> Looks like you dropped another bomb on us again. On us again. The last piece to do... The last piece of the trick are two pulleys. 
precisely. The ceiling fans double as pulleys in this case. But I don't think they would support the weight. <laughs> and thanks to the fact that there is one installed in each of the offices. The ceiling fans made for the perfect pulley set for the wire to run on. Arr! Okay. This must be it. This is how the smugglers bypass impenetrable security. <laughs> ah, you really are something else, Mr. Prosecutor. I bet you figured it all out already, haven't you? You know who the big hotshot that set up this real-life stage show is, is this, don't you? The person who set up this rather large and complex stage show. It needs to be someone who had more knowledge of the existence of a ceiling fan in both the Alabastian and Babalese offices. And that the passion flower support stakes could be used as arrows. The real mastermind behind this case. Well, don't you dare make this wolf wait for his food. Why are you so hesitant, Miles Edgeworth? If you can't if you can't say who it is, why don't you present something like you always do? A single point of the finger here, and this case will explode into an international incident. However, it's already too late for me to stop the forward momentum. It appears that I have no choice now but to rush in. There is a piece of evidence that will point us to who the mysterious mastermind is. And this smuggling could not have been possible without the use of the crossbow. Furthermore, the arrows that were shot by the crossbow were plucked, as it were, from the flower box in this very room. They were planted so long ago that the passion flowers had the time to grow so big that Miss Von Karma didn't even notice the arrows when she visited this room today. On top of all this, the fact that the culprit knew that both offices had feel had feeling sense Ceiling fans tells us that the person has very detailed information on the embassy's layout. So as you may have already guessed, the person I am accusing of hatching this plan is the person who grew the flowers in the flower box with the utmost care. Thus, it can only be you, Quercus Alba. <laughs> no, not ceiling pants. Healing sense. I don't know if it's Quercus or it's Quercus. Nah, Quercus is better. I prefer Quercus. Are you out of your mind, Miles Hedgeworth? I'm certain of what I am saying, and I am sure that he is the culprit. <laughs> Uh, tell me, Prosecutor. What was the Ambassador trying to accomplish by doing all that stuff you just outlined? Why in the world would he need to use a trick like that? I understand your need to doubt me. However, there is one thing that stands out to me as very odd. Just one thing, huh? The one single end result Ambassador Alba sought to obtain. If we were to examine the focus of this complex trick, I believe we will finally find the answer to everything. Everything will become clear once we examine this piece of evidence. I would fully understand the reasoning had the situation been the reverse. However, to go through the trouble of swapping the real Primitive statue for the fake, I sense a very shady reason for such a bizarre action. And who better to ask for that reason than King Primidux himself? I see. Ambassador, we'll be examining that statue now, with or without your permission. Ah, okay. With his sword drawn like that, there is an aura of valor and bravery around King Primidux. It looks so cool standing like that with the sword stuck in the ground in front of him. Maybe I should try and come up with some cool pose with a shuriken or something. I'm seriously beginning to think that her real goal in life is to become a ninja. Mr. Prosecutor, there isn't anything particularly odd about the sword, right? No, not really. I suppose we should examine a different area of the statue now. 
Well, right, there it is. Hmm, this guy kind of looks like the Steel Samurai, don't you think? Maybe it's because they look alike that he was picked to be the Goodwill Ambassador. I suppose that's possible. Hmm? Take a look at this area around the base of his neck. It looks like a gap. Hey, you're right! Maybe it's meant to be some kind of secret. Perhaps it's possible to open the statue from this gap in its construction. What? Hurry up and open it, Miles. All right, here goes. Oh, it really did open up. Hey, what's this thing that fell out? Hmm, I believe a more thorough examination of it is required. What in the... Is this... Hey, is this what I think it is? It's the plate for making counterfeit bills. Somehow, it appears that we've long, at long last arrived at the exit to this complex labyrinth. We finally hold within our hands one of the counterfeit money plates. And the reason why the replica was smuggled into Alabas to begin with. The Permadux statue can only be handled by the ambassador or the secretariat. The replica is nothing more than a hollow shell covered in gold. These two circumstances make the statue the ideal object in which to hide contraband. After receiving the statue containing the counterfeit plate from Sheena, the ambassador had the misfortune of accidentally running into the mask the second. Surprised by the thief, the ambassador raised the replica statue at, at the mask the second, and... And in order to frame the steel samurai of the murder, he covered the samurai sword in blood. Well, Ambassador Alba... You're... Leader of the smuggling ring. My country is a mess. And it's all because of you? You're... You're the one who killed the Moss the Second! Answer us. I never thought... I never thought that you could f would figure things out to this level. However, there is one point I disagree with you on. The head of the smuggling ring was... Mr. Cochin. Quit screwing around, quite. I have no sympathy for someone who would try to pass the guilt on to a dead man. If there is one thing I'm sure of, it's that you are the real ringleader, Quirk as Alba. It's not good to speak with such subjectivity, you know, Agent Long. Subjectivity? My conclusion is anything but, and is the result of logic and investigation. Logic and investigation? Only seconds ago you were ready to arrest Miss Von Karma. I don't think we can give such flip-floppy logic any real weight, do you? <laughs> okay. It looks like you still don't get why I came back. Excuse me? You see, the reason I came back... So that I could sink my fangs into your wrinkly old neck. From the very beginning, my real target has been you. What? Agent Lung, I demand an explanation. Sorry, sis. I didn't mean to put you through all that. I knew you were innocent from the very beginning. You did? I knew that this whole incident had been meticulously planned and prepared for. So naturally, the occupant of this room, Ambassador Alba, seemed the most suspicious. And without the ambassador's permission, we couldn't get in to take another look around. Lung, you absolute genius. I mean, I had the feeling that that was it. Because I could remember something, but I was like, is this... Is that what he's doing, or is he actually just dumb? I don't know. <laughs> but apparently, that was what he was doing. Love that for him. Ah, so that's why you put on this big show to accuse Francisca of the murder. Using Francisca as the bait, you were able to gain us entry to an entry and inv an investigative rights. Yeah, if I hadn't done that, I doubt the ambassador would have given the okay to poke around. So that's what all this was about. Very well, I will forgive you. But in exchange for using me as bait, you will take some responsibility and help us find the truth. 
Agent Lang, for giving me such a great opening. I thank you. You know, I just knew, Mr. Prosecutor, that somehow, if we were able to find some proof by investigating this room, you would be able to figure out the real culprit with your special brand of logic. <laughs> the evidence detectives collect combined with the logic of a prosecutor. That's just as it should be in a prosecutor detective team, right? God, the flirting! Ben's just fucking forgot all about Phoenix! <laughs> If my hoodie could stop, like, increasing the sound level in my headphones, I would appreciate that very much. But, like, I do this and just suddenly now I just turned it off. It's because the dial is on the side here. <laughs> Tch, I don't know about all that. One thing I do know is that I'm itching to see what old, that old man get what's going to him. What's coming to him? Oh, it, you're quite scary when you want to be, aren't you? That's the one I need. I need that one. I need to sound like I'm constipated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were the one who was planning to use me to push all the guilt onto the sis. But unfortunately for you, you misjudged me. Agent Long, I wish for you to stop trying to intimidate me. What we need right now is evidence and proof. I like how he is like fiddling with his beard. It's a, it's a nice little like uh, detail. I wonder if you have what is necessary to prove that I am the head of the smuggling ring. Objection! Don't be such a sore loser. If you really are the head of the smuggling ring, then you should acknowledge your crimes with dignity. Dignity? That is nothing more than a fool's insincere display of strength. If you really wish for me to acknowledge my crimes, then I would like to first see some of this... some of this thing you call evidence. What happened? Did you... did you fall off or something? Are you still there? Huh. Uh -huh. I tell you, I knew nothing, really. I didn't even know that a counterfeit plate was hidden inside that statue. You swapped a real statue that vested in your country with the, the, the authority to rule for a fake. Okay. It doesn't make any sense that you didn't know anything. It doesn't make any sense. Where doesn't it make sense? Can you prove that it doesn't make sense? <laughs> He's really got us. He's... Turned the entire situation around against us. The proof that Interpol has been after which points to this man as a ringleader. If we can somehow find that proof now, then we can see to it that justice is finally served. Is there nothing I can use to break this case wide open? The trump card and the videotape. With those two items, we might be able to finally bring this man down. But... The card is evidence from a case that Mr. Faraday hid it way in secret. Stolen by Detective Bad from the police 
are both illegal evidence. No matter what a protector of the law... No matter what, a protector of the law can't be allowed to use such pieces of evidence. Needless to say, we von Karmas are commanded to achieve nothing but victory. And by any means necessary. The only way to bring someone like that to justice was to do so outside of the courts. That's what we thought at the time. I no longer follow the path of Manfred von Karma. And I won't follow the path of the Ethelgarasu. This leaves me with what? What creed will I believe in? If I want to pursue the truth, then I will sully my hands in illegal illegality. And if I want to pursue justice, then I will lose the truth. What is the law and what is justice? And which path is a prosecutor supposed to follow? choice is one I must make by my own hand here and now. choice. We can choose to prove that Bat gave us, but that would mean presenting illegal, illegal evidence. You'll be given a choice, but we'll be forced to present them either way. Oh, okay, so it's a... I'm a prosecutor, and I can't allow myself to use evidence such as these. Sir Edgeworth, if you don't do something, Ambassador Alba is going to get away with it. Mm -hmm. I know, but... Objection. What are you holding back for? The only thing a von Karma should pursue is perfect proof. If you really do have what it takes to complete our argument, then there is absolutely no reason not to use it. Mm -hmm. She says the reason people judge people is because people are people. People weren't born to be chained to the law. Laws were born to protect the people. You're the only one here right now who can put this guy out to pasture. And that is the only way a second or a third generation of Sheng Fa's people will be born. Oh, okay, I didn't understand the sentence as I was reading it, but I get it now. The only way a second or a third generation of Sheng Fa's people will be born. Can you really still hesitate knowing the fate of a nation rests in your hands? I... There is no limit to the law. Any limit that exists was set there by a man. When a person goes beyond that limit, and the law, too, crosses into new territory. For what reason were laws invented? The answer to that is what I must know sh now show. Ambassador Alba, I wonder if you might recognize this. Oh, I wonder what that card is. I've never seen that before in my life. It's a directives card used by the leader of the ring to relay instructions to his subordinates. Oh, is that what it is? This card was sent to the real culprit behind the KG-8 incident ten years ago. A man by the name of Mr. Manny Cochin. Oh, so why do you have such a card in your possession? Because it was hand-delivered to me. By a certain great thief, the Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu gave that to you? Don't talk nonsense, and let's be serious, Mr. Edgeworth. Do you have any proof that the card contains direct directions from the ringleader? I'll have you know that the card is not the only thing I was given. What? This contains security footage that was shot just before the start of the KG-8 incident. The KG-8 incident? The card and the video. These two pieces of evidence are what will seal your fate. <laughs> very interesting. I must admit I'm very curious now. Very curious indeed in these case-deciding pieces of evidence you've presented. The prey the Atagarasu has been chasing all this time now stands before me. I can't allow this man who has had free reign for ten long years to simply walk away. Now is the time for me to bring to fruition the valiant spirit that was given to me. So what is this interesting thing that you wanted to show me? The trump card and the videotape. 
These two pieces of evidence together make for the ultimate hand. And this is where the real meaning behind Detective Bad's words will be realized. Take the gumshoe. Yes, sir. What you see here is security footage shot just before the KG-8 murder occurred. From this footage, we know that the card is a directive's card from the smuggling ring. This is a section that proves the card was proved to use a related in order. Then I... No, the black card, wait. Ah, oh, black card, okay, I guess. As you can see, Mr. Cochin is... As you can see, Mr. Cochin is holding the card in his right hand. I see. The killer is indeed holding a card with the exact same design on it. But that card and the one you have... Just because they look the same doesn't mean that they are, does it now? Ah, but there is a very easy way for me to prove that they are in fact one and the same. All we have to do is simply take a look at this. This dark red blood, yes, this is your proof. Proof that the orders on this card were played out in that terrible tragedy. The blood belongs to the victim of the KG-8 incident. With a bit of DNA testing, we can easily verify that as fact. If you have no objections, then I'd like for you to take a look at this next piece of footage. This car that passed by in front of the victim's apartment building. It's an official Kodopian government's car. W what You take the gumshoe, if you could please magnify the footage. This area of the footage directly links the smuggling ring with Kodopia. This section will make it all clear to us. You must be very tired, Mr. Regguard. Okay, that's not it, apparently. Oh, I'm, I'm dumb, apparently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your investigation may fall apart. I don't care. Wait! Okay, whatever. It's fine. That was really hard to see, though. The shape of this pocket and the directive's card in it. It tells us that without a doubt, this person in this car is Mr. Cochin. <laughs> the license plate on the car was also captured by the security camera. And with it, we can easily find out who was sitting in this car on that day, ten years ago. Which is why I can say with confidence that you were riding in this car on that day. <laughs> you don't model boy to make it this far. However, about your claim that I was riding in the car at the time, that's going to be mighty difficult to prove. How so? And the Principality of Kodopia no longer exists, so naturally, all records, all records from that time period also no longer exists. Uh, arrogance. What he really means is that is he's already erased all traces of them. Are we finished here, boy? The only weapon I have left to me now is this piece of footage. There must be something here that I can use against him. Now it's that thing, right? What the? Ambassador Alba? Yes, what is it? You were once an army man in the service of Kodopia. And it was you who made the many missions you participated in... ...in successes, correct? Hmm, why are the sudden backhanded praises, boy? Although, to be sure, the brilliant medals on my breast were awarded to me during the era of Kodopia. But now, I am the only one who owns this particular medal. In that case, the only person it could be who is sitting in this car is you. How do you figure that? By the medal captured here in this footage. It is clearly the same exact medal as the one on your chest. <laughs> This is how it will be, but I won't look back. For this is the path that I have chosen. 
ha, ha, ha. You have moved me with devotion. With your devotion to this case, Mr. Badgeworth. Why is he taking such an arrogant stance with me? It's almost looking impossible. Looking possible, isn't it? For the lot of you have to to have come this far. It looks like I just might lose our little game this time. You might lose the game th this time. You don't get another round, Mr. Ambassador. Is that a fact? Very well. I have decided to confess and admit my guilt. Y you're going to confess? And I will accept whatever punishment that may come as a result. The. Regarding the mask, the second's murder, I admit it. I did it out of self-defense. Claiming it was justified self-defense. The mask, the second, attacked me, and I felt that my life was in danger. If I hadn't done what I did, I might be the one you found dead instead of him. <laughs> what a pathetic performance. I'm not giving you one. Well, you two really know how to laugh at inappropriate times. If you wish to claim it was justified self-defense, then we will need some evidence. It's always the evidence with you, isn't it? But if that's what you require, I'll provide it. That man left a mark on me when he attacked. What? I don't particularly want to show it off, but this is proof that it was in self-defense. I am an old man, and sometimes I don't pay enough attention when I should. But the Master Second didn't have a single weapon on his body. Hold on, it's nothing to get worked up over, because I hid the weapon. You hid it? I'm sorry, but as you know, a murder is a murder, even if it's in self-defense. And I couldn't let it become public, seeing as how I am an ambassador. This is the weapon you seek, my special bonsai trimming shears. Oh, it's covered in blood. He was trembling quite badly during our struggle. But that's when he grabbed the shears that were sitting in my office and attacked. So you see, it was an act of self-defense. Is he right, Mr. Edgeworth? Since he has both the wound and the weapon that caused it, it's enough to declare it so. N no way! Oh, which reminds me, I guess there is still one more accusation I need to resolve. Smuggling and counterfeiting. Unfortunately, all of that is my secretary's doing. I had no knowledge it was going it was going on. Stop spewing nonsense. You're trying to throw my investigation under the bus in your dis desperation. If you want to get real honest, everything in this case can be connected to you. The murder of Demasa II was done in self-defense. In my trials, no man escapes his crime alive. Perhaps so, but if you were my opponent in court. However, oh, well, if you were my opponent in court, however, there is one very important fact that I think you may have forgotten. And what is that? Uh, ah! Oh, that's what you mean. It's the territorial. Extraterritorially. That's right. This embassy sets on what is effectively, effectively Alabastian soil. So any trial that is to be held will be held in Alabast. Therefore, the crime I just committed admitted to will never be tried in your courts. Agent Lung, what is Interpol stands on stands on this? Agents investigate. That's our job. The judgment of people who have confessed to a crime. That's the court's job. <laughs> And I have already confessed to all of my crimes, Agent Lang. Furthermore, by the very nature of my position, I have full extraterritorial ter rights. These rights are effective even on your country's soil. Therefore, no matter where a crime may take place, I will never stand trial in one of your courts. That arrogance in your expression. That's nothing like the face of someone who is ready to accept the consequences. Okay, seriously, where did Fleur go? Did Fleur fall asleep? <laughs> Don't tell me you have your own country's judicial judicial system. Wait, what was it? Judicial. Ju ju I searched it up yesterday. And I already forgot. The dictionary. Judicial. Okay. 
Think of dishes. Dish. Tell me you have your own country's judicial system eating right, of your, right out of your hands. These crimes you all speak so seriously of. To me, this has all been nothing more than a game. You may chase me out of this embassy with your accusations, but it's no big deal. Alabasta has numerous other embassies in other countries around the world. All you would accomplish is... You would change the backdrop of our little game. These two layers of protection that extra extraterritorially... Extraterritoriality provides him. This is why he is one of those who cannot be brought to court. You see now, don't you? I live in a whole different world than you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I need to go and fetch your eviction papers. Uh -huh. Is there nothing we can do? Two parts left. Well, I refuse to stop now. So, whether they're here or not, I don't really mind. I can't believe it, sir. Extraterritoriality. Yes, and there is nothing we can really do about that. In the end, we didn't have enough authority to bring him to justice. I can't believe that even though we know he's the boss, we can't lay a finger on him. I know. Mr. Prosecutor, sorry to skip out on you, but I've got some business to take care of. If we can't even give an evil guy like him a slap on the wrist, then what the heck were, lo were laws created for? What good were- what good are they? If the law can't help us, then I'll go as the Atagarasu and take care of this myself. Don't you dare. Mr. Regworth. Sorry, that was a bit too harsh. I know how you feel, sir. We're trying to take on an ambassador after all. And he did tell us earlier to get out of, th out of the theater. This is kind of their country, I guess. But I feel like I've been slapped across the face for just doing my job. What am I going to do? Should I retreat for now and formulate a better plan of attack? Come on, everyone. We can't give up yet. Okay. I want you to think about something for a sec. We've never let up for even a second, and as long as we don't stop investigating, we might find the rotten treasure hidden here. She's, she's right! Come on, Miss Regworth. You're right, Kay. Very well, let us reopen the investigation and see what we can find. Come on, Kay. Right behind you! Okay, then I'll go check out the ball a bit more, sir. And I have something that I need to investigate further in Alabast. Now then, before I gather any more information, I should do a bit of housekeeping. Passion flower data erased for my organizer. Okay, cool. I may not be able to go to bed until at least 5 a.m. tonight, but you know what? Screw it. Then I can start the second investigations game, either tomorrow or on Friday. It depends. Oh, no, wait, they're still awake. Oh my god, did they actually doze off? That's kind of cute.
Ambassador Alpha seemed agitated over something. I wonder why. There are two special circumstances that, are, that surround the Ambassador. First, the Embassy itself has extraterritorial rights. If something happens on Alabastian soil, we are unable to legally prosecute him. Cool, it sounds like embassies are the perfect place to steal whatever you want. I murdered Amos II and run a smuggling operation. I make counterfeit bills like a pills, bills apparently. But I thought all the counterfeiting was done by Mr. Cochin and Babal. Yes, he apparently used the embassy's coupon printing press to do it. <coughs> But it's the same story over there anyway. Babal also has extraterritorial rights. Which brings me to my next point, the ambassador's extraterritorial rights. Those rights are effective even in our own country. Really? No matter what happens, he can never be tried in our courts. He retains some very special rights indeed. Basically, no matter what wrongs he may commit, we can't bring him to trial here. So I guess we really don't stand a chance, do we? Hmm. Might stand a chance if we can somehow nullify either one of his special rights. And by the way, we found out that, uh... Alba, you know, the old man. The ambassador of Alabast. Uh, he was the uh, smuggling ring leader. But because we're not in... Yes, he is guilty. But because we are not in... Uh, or we are in an embassy. We can't prosecute him. Also, uh, Lung only um, claimed that uh, Francisca was the murderer of uh, the Mosque II because he knew he needed to do that to get back into Alba's office. So it was really just like a ploy all the time to get back into that office and investigate more. We love a king. We love, we love a wolf king. We know that the counterfeit bills were printed using the embassy's press. If you get too tired, by the way, let me know and you can we can go to bed if you want. Like, I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> but I'm just like so close to the end now, so I'm gonna power through it these last two hours. But, uh, but the necessary materials, such as Bavali's ink and paper. We like that dude, we stand. Who is that? <laughs> Must have been hidden in a secure location. And what do you think would have happened if the renovation had begun? Well, he probably had to find a better hiding place or get rid of it all. Right, so we can assume that the renovation was the cause of the plate the bill's disposal. And the reason Mr. Cochin was killed and the ringleader of the smuggling operation. Based on what we know, who do you think was the one with the most to gain? Uh... Quarkus. It's the one person who has been erasing all evidence of the smuggling operation. From both embassies, the co-conspirator who is mopping up, Amb Ambassador Alba. Ambassador Alba had a very strong motive to kill Manny Cochin. Agitated Alba, since there's something he doesn't want us to investigate. Mm. The cause of Ambassador Alba's agitation, the rotten treasure we may find. And the motive for killing Mr. Cochin. Miss Yu said it herself that she didn't kill anyone tonight. If we were to take her words at face value, then the reason for the Ambassador's nervousness can only be one thing. He didn't want us to discover the real circumstances under which Mr. Cochin was killed. You mean Ambassador Alba is the real killer? But I thought the two of them were friends. Maybe they were. And what if Mr. Cochin was the one who first betrayed their friendship? 
I get it. Wasn't Mr. Cochin pushing really hard for Mr. Palaino to be ambassador after a reunification? Yes, and that was the real reason why he wanted to steal Alaba's Primitive statue. So Mr. Cochin hired Damascus II to go steal it for him. But when Ambassador Alba found out that what he was up to, he killed Mr. Cochin? And it's definitely a possibility at this point. Those two really were thinking of no one but themselves. But the question now is, how did he do it? Ambassador Alba was an alabast. But Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babal, right? Right. And that is what we must solve next. Interesting. Examine the photo near the flower wreath. And this was taken just before the two amb ambassadors gave their case to the steel samurai. Wait, is it just my imagination? Or is there something in this picture that I've seen before? Oh, here! It appears to be a bouquet of Persian cyclamens and roses. Oh, he definitely knows his flower stuff. Wow, you even know the exact species. I never would have figured you were an expert on flowers. Mm -hmm. It's all because of those flowers that old lady sends me every month. No! She sends them every month! But, like, does that mean that he does the research on them, or does it say, like, what the flowers are? Because I don't believe, like, they normally do that when you, like, gift someone flowers, right? It doesn't say, like, here are the, the X and Y and C flowers. Just look at me. Just look at me. I sound like some sort of botanist. It's okay! Be the botanist you want to be! Yeah, they don't say what species, exactly. So, um, what exactly is this yellow flower here? Hmm, that one. I'm not sure. What? You don't know? As far as I can recall, I've never seen a flower like this before. But I feel as though I've seen this shape somewhere before. The juice! Is this spot somewhere? Yeah, 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 guitar pick. Where is the guitar pick when I need it? There it is, pick. Could this piece of evidence be related to this photo somehow? Huh? Well... Nope, I don't think it's related at all. Wait, no, what? Is that not it? Ah, oh, I need to do the alabastian knife. That's dumb. Bal's national symbol is the butterfly, and Alabast's is the flower. It would appear that someone is employing the old hide a tree in a forest trick. Oh, it's the knife, uh, dumbass! Look here, it's missing the thing. Oh, Edgeworth, you glorious motherfucker. <laughs> so this was in... The bouquet, was it? Interesting. What are you mumbling to yourself about? Wait, what? The handle on this knife? Ah! Yes, it's the handle that was supposed to be on the blade that killed Mr. Cochin. And the weapon that killed him was carried through the Theatrum Neutralis. And this in the very bouquet Ambassador Alba was carrying. Hmm, the flower motif. It looks like one of the flower petals, petals is missing. Come on, take a look at the weapon itself! It's missing the exact same petal! And the knife in this photo is most definitely the same as this murder weapon. I believe we now understand why Ambassador Alba was so nervous and agitated. It must have something to do with where Mr. Cochin was killed. A place where the Alabastian ambassador was likely to meet the Babalese Mr. Cochin. The place where Ambassador Alba happened to have committed the murder is... Theatrum Neutralis? No.
But it has to be, right? The only place that makes sense is here, at the Theatrum Neutralis. What? Here? Yeah, this is the only place they meet, yeah. The Goodwill event was being held here today, correct? So the only place that the both of them would have been... That both of them would have been in is here. But if that's the case, then everything changes. And this theater isn't actually Alabastian land. So that it wipes out one of those extraterritorial rights, you ask. Ugh. It makes logical sense, in which case, and this is a reason for us to investigate further. So what should we check out? Let's see. I believe we should check the immigration records for both Alabas and Babal post-haste. Babal's records should be easy to obtain. However, the problem will be Alabas. I wonder if they would allow us to see their records despite the order of the vacate. I'm already one step ahead of you, Miles Edgeworth. Francisca. I have here the security footage from both Alabast and Babal. You would do well to take a look at its contents. You move fast. A phone karma strives to be perfect in every way. It's not in my nature to keep on retreating like this. I took the liberty of looking over the Babal investigation reports, reports as well. From now on, you will make no excuse to back down or say that we can't solve this case. Mm -hmm. Sorry about earlier. We won't be beaten. Because my cute little subordinate is going to try his very best, isn't he? She called him cute. I love that, honestly. Since she patronized me enough already for a lifetime. I don't care. She called you cute. I think that's cute, okay? Doggy? <laughs> so this video contains footage from Alibus in immigration screening area it's meant edgy wait could i not pet the dog i can swear i have like a fucking video on on twitter that i pet the dog <laughs> she's a cute on my mind with the dog <laughs> i really hope there's something in there that we can use I guess five times you see. Hmm. Doesn't something about this lump's shape strike you as odd? Huh? Isn't it supposed to be this shape? No, and there is clearly something odd about the bulge. If only we had the push card itself, and we could compare and confirm my hunch. Next, let us check the footage from the ball's security camera. We hope it shows us something good. There wasn't a single sign of a suspicious person or anything. That right there is a contradiction. Huh? Did I miss something? You didn't miss anything. Because there was nothing to miss. However, what is missing is the image of Mr. Cochin entering his own country. Wasn't his body found in Babal? It would appear that the true face of our final puzzle has finally revealed itself. He knows his stuff. Oh, he for sure does. Ambassador Alba. What was the voice I gave him? I gave him like this fucking dumbass voice. I already forgot. I thought I asked for you to- for you and your group to vacate the premises, Mr. Edgeworth. I think that was that. Actually, I thought I should let you know that this theater sits on my country's soil. You've had your fun, and I've enjoyed our little game. I dare say that you've even achieved a new high score. However, once you've recovered the score, that same game can never be replayed again. Recorded the score. That same game. Well, you can technically play the game again and get a new high score, but you know. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Your game is done. And it's game over. No. 
where do you think you're going at this time of night? After admitting to my crime, I was overcome with regret. So I am heading to the airport now to return home. I am afraid I can't let you do that. There are still too many issues we need to discuss with you. You can't stop me, Mr. Edgeworth, and you know it. Mm. Please, may I have a little bit of your time, Ambassador Alba? Ambassador Palaino. Even just a teeny tiny bit of is fine with me. The already strained relationship between our countries is in a precarious situation, you know. Very well. If you insist, I will play just one more round with them and see what they want. Not that they'll get any farther. Ambassador Palaino. Mr. Edgeworth. All I wish for is the normalization of relationships between our two countries. But there is one person standing in the way of that dream. I... I believe in you. You'll do what's right. Thank you for your vote of com confidence. Now then, what was it you wanted to ask me about? I do have a flight to catch after all. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to limit you to just one question. It's so luscious. That's more than enough, because I only have one question anyway. I want to hear your alibi about how you couldn't have killed Mr. Manny Cochin. Oh, I see. You seem to have a good good hand this time around. This should be fun. This really is the very last chance we have to bring him down. I won't allow even a, an atom-sized contradiction to slip by. Yeah, basically. Also, he claims that uh, he killed uh, the the mask second in self defense because uh, he was stabbed. Allegedly, at least he says so. But that face tells me that nah, man, this bitch fucking stabbed himself. <laughs> Frankly, I still don't understand why I'm being placed under suspicion here. Under your hypothetical scenario, Mr. Coach and, and I were fellow smugglers. But to get to the point, I was in Alabas the whole time. So it's simply not possible for me to have killed him in Babal. That is my alibi. That looks like a pencil stab one! Apparently it was done with like some like, um, uh, scissors. Do I have those? I don't have those. It's like some bonsai trimming sister sisters. Scissors. So that is your alibi. That is correct. It's simply not possible for me to have committed a crime in Babal. Now that we've cleared that up, I'd appreciate it if you would move out of my way. I said, hold it! What is it this time? I thought I told you I'd only allow one question. Hmm. You did. But you still have yet to really answer my one question. What? Until you tell us the truth, I will refuse to budge an inch from where I'm standing. Hmm. Very well. I'll play with you just a little longer. Miles Edgeworth, as my subordinate and representative of this country's prosecutors. You are forbidden to lose. Of course, that is something I've, under uh, I've understood from the start. That guy is the one who ordered my father killed, isn't he? Yes, I believe so. The goal of the first Yatagarasu was to capture was the capture of the smuggling ring's leader. My father and Uncle Bad. Their legacy will live on. Through me. So that's why we just gotta catch him, okay? We will, I promise. Now, Ambassador Alba, let's have the truth now. Have at the truth now, shall we? Eh, eh, eh. No matter how many times you ask, my answer remains the same. I gave him that voice because he went through a personality change. He went from being this old man to... that. <laughs> okay, press statement two. In your hypothetical scenario, Mr. Coach and I were fellow smugglers. It's not a hypothesis. Earlier, we proved it to be what happened. The smug bastard. <laughs> well, let's leave that to one side for now. Because it doesn't change the fact that I have no motive. Oh, so you really had no reason to kill Mr. Cochin. 
If you want to suppose I had one, then why not? I'll indulge you. After all, this is nothing more than a silly game to me. Even if that's how you see things, I'd appreciate it if you would make if you would take me seriously. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm suppo I'm, I suppose you are in a bit of a pickle. Very well. The game is no fun if the playing field isn't level. Therefore, I formally claim that I had no motive to kill. Now let's see you disprove it. How can he stand there looking proud when he knows he's he killed another human being? I'm not going to stand by and just watch him get away with his crimes. In that case, what motive would I would I would I have had to kill my conspirator? And where the fuck is the note? This note. If you want to know, I believe you did have a motive to kill. It was because Mr. Cochin had betrayed you. You had your own reason, too. Namely, you wanted to pin the smuggling all on him. Evil begets evil, and because you were trying to test each other, it turned into this mess. I don't believe this! You have a bad penchant for telling tall tales, Mr. Prosecutor. Why is that kind of good like with his objection? OBJECTION! <laughs> Why the fail his voice? I hate that! I just gave him that because I was like, that's the voice I've never given anyone before. <laughs> And if you're not, then I suppose you have some proof to support your argument. I never use guesswork in moving my cases forward. It has been proven that this note was written by Mr. Cochin's hand. Shall we take a look at it? <laughs> you are no official voice actor for Alba. <laughs> the content of the note is a request calling for the theft of Alba's Primadux statue. <laughs> By killing him and pushing all of the guilt for the smuggling onto him, you walk, you walk away spotless. I believe you understand what I'm driving at. You had more than a few reasons to kill him. OBJECTION! Now well, you're finished with your hypothesizing. No, this game is not in the anime. Excuse me? It may be, though. I don't know. I don't know if like they have a plan to continue the anime after the second season that came out last year. But though, to be fair, the first season came out in, like, 2016. So... Who knows? This would be good anime. Let's suppose I did have a motive. Even so, a motive or a thought alone can't kill. Isn't that right? I didn't expect him to resort to playing the semantics game with me. It appears that this is where the real battle will begin. Apparently this man will never shut up. Oh my fucking god. Where am I even? Okay, here. Mm. Now then, if you will excuse me. Wait. What? I told you at the very beginning, didn't I? You only get one question. Uh -huh. Ambassador Alba, if you could please give us just a little bit more of your time. It doesn't matter what kind of man Manny, wa Manny was, he was my subordinate. Which is why I would like for us to figure out the real cause of his death. That is something for Babal to figure out, and something to which I have no relation to. Now he's even turning down a request from Ambassador Palaino. I'm sorry, but it seems that now even my voice falls on deaf ears. There is no need for you to apologize, Ambassador Palaino. <laughs> We must find some way to stop him from leaving. It seems there are no further objections. In that case, please allow me to return home. Hold it right there, Ambassador Alba. Okay? Like I said, Mr. Edgeworth, the Atagarasu's legacy will live on through me. Yes, but how do you suggest we stop him from leaving? You just leave that to me. Ambassador Alba, do you recognize this? No, and why should I recognize that tattered old organizer? Wait, where have I seen that before? That is a clue my father Burn Faraday left for us. Did you say Burn Faraday? Mr. Faraday's organizer, don't tell me this is the one from the second KG-8 incident. The one in which he wrote about the Athagarus' key. 
Yes, this organizer belonged to the prosecutor you ha you had Miss Yu kill seven years ago. Huh, I have no idea what you are talking about. You say that like it was related to me. Inside this organizer, he wrote up every detail of every evil thing you did. What an amusing little girl you are, but that sort of trickery won't work on me. If you won't believe me, then take a look at this. And what is that toy there? That's... This thievery device was used by the Yatagarasu, or rather, by my father. Seven years ago, he used this when he snuck into this embassy. What? And these two pieces of evidence that hold information the Yatagarasu dug up on you. If you go home now, I won't hesitate to send it out to Alabas right behind you. Little girl, get to the point. I want you to go up against Mr. Edgeworth one more time. If you win, then I'll hand over these two pieces of evidence. I'm yet I got a sir. I read the thorn in my side. Okay, does that organizer really contain any information on his dirty dealings? It's nothing case-breaking, really. But then it was just a bluff. Even if it was, we still can't let all the info my father and Uncle Bad found go to waste. Plus, just the existence of Little Thief is troublesome enough for him. And those two pieces aren't the keepsakes of your father. It's okay. I believe in Miss Redgeworth. He'll come out on top in the end. Okay. When the going gets tough, someone get someone's gotta be there to put the wind back in your sails. After all this time, you're still quite the feisty one. I applaud your powerful nature. I refuse to lose this too. Ambassador Alba, you won't be returning home until you give us further testimony. How dare you all, barring a person like me. Ambassador Alba, your testimony if you please. Uh -huh. Alright, but this is the absolute last. Well, looking at the guide here, I can tell it's not the fucking last game. <laughs> <laughs> then, even if you use all the power in, of Ambassador Palaino's office, you won't stop me. Well, I can't let this opportunity Kay has created for me to go to waste. The last time I met Mr. Cochin was here at the Theatrum Neutralis. After that, I was in Alabas the rest of the time, as I stated earlier. In any case, I did not see that Mr. Cochin again after that. So you see, there is no time span in which I could have killed him. Wouldn't you agree? Now, since your people were practically begging, I'll allow you to question me. What an arrogant old man. Yes, but no matter. We can't allow this chance to escape us. I will warn you, though. You've reached the end of my patience. Waste my time with any inane questions, and you will be punished. That's like nothing. <laughs> so any needless pressing or presenting will cost more to our case. In that case, the only thing you can do is present the correct evidence, understood? Of course. I don't intend to let him intimidate me. I know Mr. Cochin was killed before he returned to Babal. In which case, there is only one statement to which I need to present the evidence. This is barely more than usual! <laughs> exactly! Anyways, it's, it's the commemorative photo. Come on, just fucking present! Go over here, go here, here, and down here. There we go. Perfect. I'd like you to take a look at this picture. Well, it's a rather nice picture, isn't it? It was to commemorate the restoration of relations between our nations. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's commemorative, all right. One that captures the proof I need to show that this was you whom it, who committed to the murder. Come again. This is the knife that killed Mr. Cochin. I see you recognize it as well. You should. As well you should. For it was you who brought it to this theater. You hid it among the flowers you were to give to the Steel Samurai. Meaning that you killed Manny Cochin here at the theater. <laughs> it's time for me to catch my flight. We're not through yet. It's game over for you, Mr. Redforth. But I thank you for the entertainment. 
Mm -hmm. No matter how passionately you orate, the end result will still be the same. I won't be returning to this country ever again. That's right. This man is an ambassador, and he has extraterritorial rights. No matter how hard we chase after him, we won't be able to have him tried in court. Yes, that's exactly the face you should be making. The face of a worthless cur. <laughs> now then, ladies and gentlemen, I must bid you farewell. I... The courts. Is there no one who can lay a finger on this man? Is this really the end? Yeah, boy! Oh, yes, let's fucking go! He didn't long. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Prosecutor. Get out of my way! My plane is scheduled to take off soon! Sorry, but you're not going anywhere, Mr. Alba. I'm through playing games with you people, we stand a savior! You can't touch me! If you do, it would spark an international incident, Agent Long. Sorry, but no, it wouldn't. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Good job holding the fort down here until I got back. Hmm? So, Mr. Alba, your diplomatic immun immunity has just been revoked. What do you mean, revoked? Spare me this nonsense. And let me through. Long she says, before aiming for the throat, chew the neck shield off first. Interpol headquarters and the Imperial household of the Kingdom of Alabast. Took a while to get things rolling, but they finally moved on it. The Imperial household. You! What have you done? You have been relieved of your duties as ambassador, Mr. Alba. Oh. Oh. What? Effective today. Effective right now. And you have Mr. Prosecutor's videotape to thank for this. The video that we got to go to suit protects it. You can't be arrested simply because you're an ambassador. In that case, I thought I'd strip you of that title. Long, you fucking beautiful bastard. <laughs> you underestimated me, a descendant of the founder of the of the attainment philosophy, Lang Ji. Four thousand years and deeply entrenched connections and networks around the world have really paid off. That can't be! I don't believe this! My ambassadorship has been revoked! <laughs> looks like you're finally coming to grips with your new standing. Woohoo! Looks like he's turned docile again. He's probably in shock from the loss of his shield. Huh, what a shame. I had so wanted to use my whip on him. Why is this happening to me? I'm just a hard-working, honest ambassador. Do you really think you can still pull that on us now? We've already ripped away the, the mask and, the, and seen you for who you really are, Mr. Alba. Oh, he's about to go Super Saiyan again. He fucking did this already. Okay, sure, we get it. No! I won't be stopped now! He still intends to fight us. So what if I'm no longer an ambassador? You still don't have any evidence on me. The fact remains that you cannot arrest me. <laughs> I expect no less from you, the boss of the smuggling ring. Darn Super Saiyan transformation. The rest, rest is up to you, Mr. Prosecutor. Understood. You say that I killed Mr. Cochin in the theater, but even if it's true that there was a knife in my bouquet, I left that bouquet in the theater. So anyone could have taken it out from there and used it, right? Besides, the claim that he was killed here itself is, is odd. After all, wasn't his body discovered in Babal? Are you claiming that I carried his body all the way over there? Hmm, preposterous. Tell me the one to prove whether it's preposterous or not. Uh. Ex-Ambassador Alba, are you ready? I love how he's just using, like, Ex-Ambassador, just like to, like, rub it in that he's no longer the Ambassador. Because this is no game. This is war. 
I feel like the investigations game are like kind of a bit more um what's the word I'm looking for? Like um uh, I literally just had the fucking word like um political in nature. Like there was a lot more like politics going on in the game. It used to be important. <laughs> And I killed Mr. Cochin in his theater. In the theater, theater using a knife that was stuck in my bouquet. And I left the bouquet in the theater. Anyone could have taken the knife from there. Besides, Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babal, right? And there is no way for me to have transported his body from the theater to Babal. Look, don't you think you've had enough fun with me? You've already stolen my ambassadorship from me. Would you have me surrender too? You have no plans to ever return to this country, isn't that right? Do you know that a bunch of your subordinates are seeking asylum because of you? Ha ha ha, as if I care. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, put this guy out of the embassy and we can finally end everything. I know, and I will give it my all to see that he leaves in handcuffs. Without the title of ambassador, he is just another witness. Yes, just another witness. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's get this guy. Case gloves bother me because they, they they end like way too soon. They're not down at the wrist. They're like a tiny bit above and they bother me so much. Like you have no idea how much they frustrate me. <laughs> get him good. I wonder if they understand that all I can do is present evidence or the testimony. They must be super uncomfortable. Either that, or they just look like they end before the wrist because of, like, the the fold at the bottom of them. Okay. Statement four. Let's fucking go. There's no way for me. Okay. Besides Mr. Koshin, yes, next one. There's no way for me. Press the push card. Push card. Push card. Actually, I do believe there was a way to transport the body out of the out of the out of, out of the theater. Perhaps you should give this a look. What is that supposed to be? It's footage from a security camera that captured the state of the immigration area. Should I congratulate you on getting your hands on it? Just letting you know that we're not the only ones watching your every movement. Hm. Thank you for this warning. Now, if you could take a good look at the section here. This lump here inside this push cart. Do you know what's causing it? Or should I? Because I don't. Hm. Huh. In that case, allow me to enlighten you. This is the cause of the unnatural lump under the clo cloth in the push cart. Oh. What is the meaning of showing me th that? It's to say that the unnatural bulge in the push cart is Mr. Cochin's body. You had the steel samurai wheel his body away from the real crime scene. <laughs> what a guess. But I wonder if you have any evidence to support it. I admit that for now it is but a hypo hypothesis, however. <laughs> if you can't prove it, then I'm afraid I must be on my way. I don't have any more time to play with you people. Sorry I took so long, Miss Redford, sir. My god, Gumshoe, this is fucking insane. I'm loving this case, honestly. Like, yes, fucking let's go! Gummy? Stick to Gumshoe, is that the Steel Samurai's push cart? Yes, sir. I found it in the open air stage area. So that's where you went. The detective spirit that Pops left me with. I thought I'd follow my gut and go with it, sir. So, Miss Redworth, is this worth anything to the case? Yes, it just might play a major role in solving this case, Detective. But something isn't right. I thought that the entire samurai family was an alibost. Where exactly in the open air stage area did you find this pushcart? I found it just lying there at the edge of the stage, sir. Oh? Well, let's leave that for now and examine the inside, Detective. Yes, sir. Oh, no, look at this, would you? Mm -mm. Hmm. It's blood. This must be Mr. Cochin's blood. 
which only goes to prove that Mr. Cochin's body was indeed transported by this pushcart. I believe you understand what this means, correct? You killed Mr. Cochin at this theater, and then placed his body inside the pushcart. And then... You forced the steel samurai to unwittingly move the body for you. I forced him to move the body into Alabast! What nonsense! Why would I bother to do such a thing? You were scheduled to make a speech in Alabast, meaning it was difficult for you to make a stop in Babal. However, if you... What if you move the body to Alabast? Because it was your embassy, you could keep an eye on it and tamper with the evidence. And then you smuggled it out of Alabast. No! If I can show you how you move the body from Alabast to Babal, then I win. But you can't. The security between the two countries is incredibly tight. I'll be the one to judge whether I whether I can or cannot prove it. And so I ask you to provide us with testimony regarding your movements after you return to Alabast. Okay, this is the final one for this chapter. <laughs> this is the final chapter. The final testimony for this chapter. I mean, there's still like a lot left, but this is the final testimony. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, have you figured it out? Do you know how the body was moved? To be honest, I have nothing to support my hypothesis at this time. However, I don't believe I've made a mistake in my logic up to this point. Which means... There is no question that can't be unanswered, right? The primitive statue was smuggled successfully through a brief flight through the air. So why shouldn't there be an answer as to how the body was moved? Which means that there must be a logic flaw somewhere I can exploit. After I returned for Alabaster, I had my picture taken with the steel samurai shaken hands. And just as I was about to start my speech, the Athagarasu appeared. I feared for the national treasures, so I raced back to my office. Is that all? Yes, not all. Objection! It looks like you left out a few things. Such as the murder of Damascus II. Furthermore, you left out the part about meeting with me in your office. Ah, those trifling matters. I don't believe. My need to speak of those things again. I do so hate to waste time. What? You. It's not every life precious. <laughs> do you really need me to answer that for you? People like you cannot be allowed to wander freely through society. <laughs> then you'd better try hard, because I doubt you'll find a single contradiction. He's really full of himself, isn't he? Yes, he is. How can he be so confident at a time like this? <laughs> Come, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask whatever you like. He really is a bastard. <sighs> okay, I have to press everything apparently. Hold it. Okay. So why was it only with the steel samurai? I thought the pink princess was also around. The pink princess was suffering from a bad hip at the time. And the doctors recommended that she rest. Wow, so you do have a soft side after all. And the pain of a bad hip. I suppose none of you can really understand how it feels. Oh, so you tend to strain your back as well, huh? But isn't it just because you're normally all hunched over? You did need to keep up the act no matter what, I suppose. Huh. And the point of this is not to discuss my back problems. For about 15 minutes after our handshake, I was in my office preparing for the speech. And then... And then the Atagarasu appeared. But the Atagarasu was just a, just a trick that you had set up. Ha <laughs> ha A most amusing joke. And how do you propose that I set it up? If you really want to know, I can explain it in detail for you. You arranged the spotlights in the Rose Garden so that when you were to take the stage, the audience would see the Yathagarasu's shadow. Oh, that's an interesting tale. Sadly, it has nothing to do with me. Who? What's it going to take for you to fess up to anything? Mm -hmm. Very well then, let's move on to a different question. 
after the Atagarasu appeared, what was the state of the Rose Garden? Everyone took refuge inside the rep embassy. I even helped with the effort. And then, once everyone was inside, well... Appear for the National Treasures, yes, okay. And what happened after you returned to your office? I don't want to keep on repeating this. However, upon my return, I had that stroke of bad luck and bumped into Mask Man. I don't want to keep on repeating this either. Either, either. But his name was Demask II. Huh. Who cares what he was called? By the time he got to the primitive statue that he was supposed to steal, it had already been swapped for the fake. Talk about an unlucky man. Being bludgeoned to death with a fake statue. Heh heh heh. Karma is really letting her whip fly now. Ugh. I think the scary part is her silence while she's doing it. She must be at the limit of her patience as well. The physical attacks are mean meaningless here. Only evidence will suffice. <laughs> I, I can't find a single flaw in this argument. At this rate, I won't be able to prove that he is actually guilty of anything. Are we finished here? Miles Edgeworth, can you not come up with, the, with how the body was moved to Babal? Sir! Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> Even after proving so much, is he going to get away with it? <laughs> this is the end. It appears that we made it just in time. It would be a great honor if you would allow us to be your allies in battle. Evil Magistrate, it's time for you to pay. It's the Steel Samurai? No, you're mistaken, for I am Steel Samurai Daddy, married man of New Old Tokyo. And this is Pink Princess Mommy. Magipool! Oh! The two people that I wanted to see the least. Larry! What are you doing here? I'm gonna show your gratitude, Edgy. We just wanted to help. Yeesh! I'm gonna get the bad guy with a single. Go away! <laughs> Like, just go away. Get the fuck out of here. I don't want to fucking see you again. Get your stupid, ugly mug out of here. How can you be so mean to us, Edgy Boo? All three of us came to lend a hand, and this is how you treat us. Well, isn't this grand? And I see you managed to find the Iron Infant. Just not. But, but, does that really matter right now? Hey. Is it just me, or is the Iron Infant completely soaked? Hmm, oh yeah. I found him in Babal, but he was in the middle of the pool. Wait, wait a second. Larry, go back to what you just said. Huh? Oh, um, it appears that we made it. Not that far back. Something about finding the Everett Infant in Babal. He found it in the pool. I don't recall there being one in Babal. Oh, that! Well, I was in Alabas the whole time. So I have no idea how the Iron Infant found up in Babal. I thought I had lost him in the rose garden. And I guess maybe this cute kid can swim, huh? Wait, what? Larry, you lost the iron infant in the rose garden. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. When I found him in... That's enough, Larry. The iron infant that Larry lost managed to move between the two countries. Furthermore, the iron infant was found soaked in the middle of a pool. This is what I've been looking for. It's another smuggling route between the countries. The key to the route the Iron Infant took to travel from Alabas to Babal is... Bilateral symmetry, let's fucking go! Oh, that's right. This embassy was built with bilateral symmetry in mind. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir! There is a location I wish for you to examine post-haste. That is where I believe the route to route used to smuggle Mr. Cochin's body lies. Does something like that really exist, sir? An embassy built on bilateral symmetry, meaning that this is where we need to examine. Take 
Yes, sir, I'll be back before you know it. It's too late. It doesn't matter what you do now. What you do, it's all a waste of time. You will stay here. With us. And wait. This is Edgeworth. It's Redworth! It's here, sir! There is a reservoir here, just like in the Rose Garden. And just as I suspected. What is it? The two sides of this embassy are mirror images of each other. Which means that there is also a pool at the corresponding location on the Bubbly side. Mr. Coach's body was moved into Babal through the pool in Alabas. Voiding the topic with a vague answer like that is unbecoming of a prosecutor. If you don't mind, I'd like to see more physical proof if you have any. The iron infant is positively soaked in water. Why do you think that is? It's because he was fished out of a pool, and not just any pool. It was the Babalese one. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that what must be true. The water reservoirs and the two courtyards are connected. Objection. And where is your proof that the two sides are connected? Co connected. Hmm. The proof is right there before your eyes. The half-drowned iron infant. Or the this blasted doll! Stredworth, I'm back. Hey. Tell me, you guys figured everything out without me. We did, thanks to this hero of Justice's son. Even if he is just a doll, he managed to help foil the villain. Villain. Mr. Prosecutor, look, I don't want to say this, but... It's kind of unlikely that the body just happened to have passed on through to Babal. This guy's a doll, and he's small, so I can believe it made it, but... He has a point. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yes, that's right. I'm glad someone here understands. Mr. Edgeworth, are you going to next propose that a dead body can swim through a pipe? See, Mr. Prosecutor, our chase after this man is far from over. Agent Long. Why is he helping Mr. Albaugh now? He's not. He realized the flaw in my argument and is helping to move the logic along. In which case, I should return the favor and find an answer. And another thing. Mr. Cochin's body was found in his office in Babal. So what happened to his body after it was transported to the open-air stage? Huh. Mr. Alba had an accomplice in the ball, remember? You mean... Sheena, right? With her there, you can see how it was possible to move the body up to the office. Are you seriously claiming that she swam through the connecting pipe with the body? He's right! Sheena would drown if she did that. It's hard to imagine that she swam through the connecting pipe. It looks like your hypothesis about how the body was moved is still only half-baked. In the end, it's all just the befuddled musings of an accusatory man. Now then, I believe you should give up and allow me passage. Because from the start, there was no feasible method of transporting the body. What? Mr. Prosecutor. No, Mr. Prosecutor. Recall Sheena's movements. Mm-hmm was happening in the embassy around the time Miss Sheena was in the ball. Oh, if only there was a way to get rid of the water in the pool. Get rid of the water. Ha! Huh, that's it! Now I believe this time we really are done, right? Objection. Hmm. Unfortunately for you, it's far from over, Babal. Over Babal? Miss Al- Mr. Alba. You are a most persistent man. I don't, I don't know why I read Babal. These names, these 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 names are a bit too close for my liking. It's Babal. It's uh, Alab Alabast Alba. <laughs> the, they're a bit too close for my liking.
You're a most persistent man. Are you saying that you have thought of a way to move the body through the water? Move the body through the water? That is completely unre unrelated to how it was done. Excuse me! The reason I say that is because there wasn't any water there at the time. What do you mean there wasn't any water? Just what it sounds like. Tonight's events made it possible to drain the water, allowing the body to be moved. Uh... What is the meaning of this? What is that supposed to prove? Yes, what is this supposed to be, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Me? Was it wrong? Oh, fire's in the ball, dumbass. Yeah, we get it, we get it, we get it, we get it. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Sorry, it's way easier to read the actual Ace Attorney, like, guides, but once it, once you get the investigations, it's just like a wall of text. And like, some, uh, like, highlighted stuff. Or I guess, uh, bolded stuff. Pyres. This. That's what I meant. Tonight, the Atagarasu set fire to a variety of locations in the Babalese Embassy. In order to put the fires out, much of the reservoir's water was used. Of course, when the water was used, the reservoir's water levels went down. If enough water was drained, the connecting pipe could be used to traverse the border. Hmm. So what? Yeah, it is, uh, it is kind of hard sometimes, that, which is why I have to, like, stop and, like, actually read what's, what's, what it says sometimes. Huh. And the water levels went down. The reservoirs were connected. Does any of this matter? You can't prove any of this. Hold on, wait, let me just actually, uh, show you where is it that. I can send you... Oh, I just got that. Oh, that's funny, I guess. That's not what I wanted. I guess I can do this then. Nope, wrong one. That's... Ah. Oh, let me just send you over Discord. Yeah. There we go. This is what it looks like. You can't prove any of this. That is a wall of text. It is. Hmm. Pretending to be ignorant won't work with me. We both know what kind of a situation we're in right now. But I kind of need it because if not, I'm gonna have to spend like fucking three hours on each chapter. And that's fucking ridiculous. I'm not doing that. Even in a the game, there comes a critical game's changing moment. A moment in which you hit a wall that you must overcome in order to beat the game. I haven't lost yet. I found the route you used to smuggle the body. And that route will lead you to lead to your defeat. Even if all the water was used by the firefighting effort. Still can't really call that a smuggling route. Hmm. Huh. I know that. <laughs> I should have figured that you would notice. Hey, Mr. Alba, how deep are those pools anyway? <laughs> I'll have you know, those pools are extremely deep. And there are no ladders or footholds along the walls e either. It would be difficult for Sheena to get hold of, to hold the body and climb out of the pool. Hmm. <laughs> ladders or footholds along the walls. There was no need for such things. What do you mean? One were to use a certain something, they could go up or down in the pool at will. Oh, it looks like you've got the answer already. Well, I don't. F I fucking don't. Wait, this is the- Oh, this is from the previous one. Oh, okay. What are you waiting for, Mr. Prosecutor? Enlighten us already. And the way in which Miss Sheena and the body were able to rise up to ground level. If there was a way to control the water level, then that would be the way the body was moved. Oh, then it's the fountain spouts that I- Okay. This was used so that the body and Miss Sheena could- move up and down in the pool. 
Mr. Alba used the fountain spouts, in a matter of speaking. He used the fountain spouts. How so? The water level in the pools can be controlled by opening and closing the spouts. Machina and the body were lifted upward by their buoyancy in water. The fires. Fire on the Babalee's side and the firefighting effort. These were set in motion, all for the sake of smuggling Mr. Cochin's body. <laughs> Shall I show you where the final destination of my train of logic leads? First, Mr. Alba closed the fountain spouts in, the, in advance, in preparation of things to come. Then he took the pushcart that was brought to the rose garden and pushed it along with the iron infant and Mr. Cochin's body into the pool. At this time, Miss Sheena was busy conveniently starting the first fire in Babal. She then made for the open air stages pool to wait for the firefighting effort to begin. When the firefighters used the water in that pool, the water level went down. And by the time the fire was put out, the pipe between the two pools was exposed. And this is when she pushed the pushcart from Alabas to into Babal. Once that was accomplished, Mr. Alba simply opened the fountain spouts once more. The water level rose up to its original level, along with Miss Sheena and the body. After that, Miss Sheena used the pushcart to carry the body up to the Secretariat's office. There was an elevator in the embassy after all, so you see. Even with her small frame, she could have easily transported Mr. Cochin's body. And that wraps up my thorough explanation of how the body was moved. <coughs> Well, ex-ambassador Alba, what do you think? You're not so untouchable without your precious extraterritorial rights to protect you, are you? I knew you could do it, Miss Redworth. We need to fight back. You accuse me of moving the body across country lines. But when you get down to the nitty-gritty, you don't have what it takes to indict me. Nitty-gritty? What does the old man want now? Proof. I believe is what he seeks. Yes, proof. Without any. Who is to say whether or not any of what you said really happened? He wants proof. What are we what are we going to do, Mr. Edgeworth? There's no need to worry. I've had all the proof we need all along. The body wasn't the only thing to go through the pool's connecting pipe tonight. Just as just just as Detective Gumshoe found the pushcart in the open air stage area. So too did I find one other item there. And that piece of evidence is what will prove the pools were the smuggling route. This was another thing that was smuggled over to Babal's open-air stage area. Uh, Now is the pick. And what exactly is this? Hm. You have no idea, do you? This little piece that I found on this... On the Babalese side will be your undoing. My guitar pick! Or would you care to explain how... That is going to do me in, as it were. Monsieur Ch Chagrin, perhaps. But this is not a guitar pick. Oh, what? This is something I found at the open air stage, which was transported with the body. I naturally assume that you would recognize it, since you took a picture with it, after all. But since you don't, allow me to fill you in on what I found it. What I found at the stage actually belongs to. Alabastian knife! Let us take a good look at the murder weapon that was used to kill Manny Cochin. On the handle of this knife, there is a beautifully blooming flower. However, it would appear that it's missing a single petal. Well, let's see what happens when we try to fit this pick into that open slot. It's a perfect fit! I assume that the petal must have fallen off of the flower during Mr. Cochin's murder. And then, it was accidentally placed into the pushcart along with Mr. Cochin's body. <laughs> That's an interesting story. Nothing more. Hm. Well, I assure you, it's more than just a story. Oh, 
last part doesn't seem that long. Oh my god. I mean, I'm gonna sit there for over 10 hours, but I don't fucking care. I just assumed that the pick was way bigger than that. <laughs> I get what you mean. It's more than just a story. Because for some odd reason, this flower pet was wet when I found it. Oh, well, you're right. It was wet, do you say? Yes, and the only place it could have gotten wet from is the open-air staged pool. That's right, he was, like, so confused. I'm like, he's like, why is it wet? There is nothing here that, like, is wet. Like, how... Hello? <laughs> now I ask you, how did a part of the weapon which was smuggled into the theater wind up in the open-air stage area of the Babalese side of the embassy? I don't think I need to waste any words explaining this, as this petal explains it all for me. It proves that someone went from the Rose Garden's pool on through into Babal. Impossible! The people of Zheng Fa have been waiting to see you face to face. Mr. Alba, I'll tell everyone back home we'll be there soon. You should be happy. Nay, this, my. Why? It's a little late to be asking that question. You should have known from the very beginning, when you took your first life. No matter how much, how you may plot, or how you may try to cover it all up. You can never hide from your crime and what you've done. Because we're here to see it to it that justice is served to people like you. You can call what you've given a perfect argument. You know, I don't think this guy is going to ever admit to his wrongdoings, Mr. Edgeworth. Because he values himself above all else. People who can't be negotiated with or people who refuse to admit when they've lost. I don't believe those kinds of people really exist because everyone breaks eventually. You're right. In that case, I have no choice but to use all of the evidence I have. I'll use it all until he breaks under the weight of his, cr his, cr his cr crimes. <laughs> Mr. Alba, I request that you testify once more. This really will be the end of the line. Here we go. Let's chapter, let's chapter, let's chapter, let's chapter. Yes, let's go. I wasn't planning on streaming for this long, but fuck it. It's fun. I'm having a great time. Mr. Alba, I request that you testify once more. As if there's anything else for me to testify about. Hmm, I still have yet to fully prove that it was Mr. Alba who murdered Mr. Cochin. Ten hours already. You know, almost six minutes away. Well, I would like to hear about your movements before the murder occurred. I wonder if you could tell us about what you did here at the Theatrum Neutralis. Very well. I suppose I could tell you about that. <laughs> because about all I did was watch the Steel Samurai stage show. Hmm, huh, elaborating on that, even alone, is good enough for me. The only way for me to place this man under arrest, under arrest, is to pinpoint the exact location of where the murder took place, and that is the key to this investigation. I watched from the last row. The stage was well lit, but it was dark after the audience. I swear I was there in the audience, but it's hard to prove that, I suppose. I do remember the content of the show very well, though. Is that not- is that proof enough for you? Those moving scenes were seared into this old man's heart. I'll never forget them. So you were in the theater proper. I'm watching the Steel Samurai stage show, were you? Of course I was. I have a great fondness for the Steel Samurai. <laughs> Yeah, I was pretty cool up there, wasn't I? I'm not the one who was cool, it's the Steel Samurai who is cool! <laughs> oh my god, you remembered! Because Larry. Yeah, and the Steel Samurai's special fi finishing move today was really something, huh? Hmm? Hey, Edgy! Who is she? This is super cute girl, a 17 year old getaway! <laughs> She's been standing here this whole time, and only now he notices her. Her name is Kay Faraday, and she's helping me in my investigation. Sorry, I didn't get to introduce myself earlier, but better late than never. Yeah, so Kay, I'm Larry Butts! 
silence in the peanut gallery. There's no time for such trivialities at a time like this. Trivialities. Mr. Prosecutor, this is the final battle. You got that? I know. This is the end. For that man there. <laughs> now that's the kind of thing I like to hear. I think I'll give trusting you a try, Mr. Prosecutor. Or rather, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, we on a fucking last name basis now. Okay. Okay. I leave this critical battle up to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Have no fear. I will finish the job. This really is the end game. The time has come to expose every last one of Mr. Alba's lies. <laughs> I'm starting to shake my people ship them. <laughs> I don't, but I can see it. I don't even know where I'm at. Where I'm at at this point, I'm like intrigued, but like, but I'm like, but Phoenix though. <laughs> I'm torn. That's that's what's up right now. Though I guess this is like, we don't really hear from Lang like or long after after the investigation game. So like, I guess for now it's just like a fun thing. Considering Phoenix isn't in these games, this really is the end game. The time is come to expose every last one of Mr. Alba's lies. Statement 3. I need to press. Snare in the audience? Okay, I do remember the contents of the show very well. Okay. Hmm. Well, I remember the contents of the show as well myself. That's nice. That's nice. Miles Edgeworth! Don't allow yourself to be riled up by him at this important juncture. <laughs> I wasn't planning to let him. Well, if you ask me, I think I'm the biggest seal samurai expert around here. And didn't you think that climactic change of today's show was just totally awesome? Yes, I remember that well. And that. <laughs> Thank you so much! Futaba Sakura 404 for the follow. My god, that was... I did not expect that. <laughs> it was the Alba voice, wasn't it? It was the Alba voice. It's okay to say it was the Alba voice. <laughs> yes, I remember that well. And that spectacular special move. The way you delivered the final blow against the evil magistrate. Early summer vein jab. Oh, that seed will live on in my heart forever. Is that how it went? I totally forgot about that. It was the Alba voice. Nice. <laughs> How can you forget your own special moves? It's the special attack that the Steel Samurai uses when he's using the Samurai Spear. Yes, and today was the first time they showed it off, was it not? If I hadn't watched the show, then how could I answer you with the name of the move? I suppose you are correct, but if you could, please elaborate on this point for me. One of the scenes was of his his never before seen early submarine jab move. Objection. I am playing through all the games by the way. <laughs> well except for Digact and Saibon, I guess, but I am playing through all the games. And the special moves today was the early summer rain jab. Is that your final answer? You little irritating gnat. Do you think you can trip me up by asking the same question over and over? It was not my intention. Your testimony is more than sufficient. However, I believe it would be wise for you to take a look at this. The samurai spear. What about it? The spear actually never made it on stage today. E excuse me! <laughs> Fortunately for you, tonight's steel samurai happened to be a goof of a young man with, with an abundance of useless hot-bloodedness. Having said that, said useless man bent the spear during his rehearsal this evening. Okay, do you remember what the steel, steel samurai special move was tonight? It was the steel samurai sushi slash. <laughs> Correct. Because he couldn't use the spear, a last-minute change was made. Had you really been watching the show, you would have known what move that would have known the move that was used. 
Crook is Alba. You didn't watch a s even a single minute of the Steel Samurai stage show tonight, did you? Aha. So if he wasn't watching the show tonight, then it opened up opens up the possibility that he was busy killing Mr. Cochin instead. So where were you during the show? I demand an answer now. <laughs> Just what is so funny? You're so sloppy. I'm sorry your conclusions. I still insist that I watch the show, or most of it, in any case. What do you mean by most of it? Now you see, during the show I left my seat for a spell to visit the bathroom. I assure that was when that dramatic scene was played out on stage. <laughs> That's the lousiest lame excuse I've ever heard in my life, pal. Uh huh? Just because he got the name of the move wrong. We can't really use that as proof that he didn't watch the show at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my Twitter is the uh, exact same as my uh, Twitch username. Sorry, I it's it's like four a.m. So sorry if like words don't really come to me really fast. So it's Rainbow Dream, but with a C instead of an O. As a fan of the Steel Samurai, I had wanted to watch the entire show. Honest. As a Steel Samurai fan. <laughs> Edward is like, do you, do you fucking dare? <laughs> you wanna go up against me? You wanna know- we wanna bet which one of us knows the most Steel Samurai trivia? Let's fucking go, bitch! <laughs> for someone who wasn't even in his seat for the climax of the show. You have no right to call yourself a Steel Samurai fan, ever! <laughs> Let's have a trivial battle right here, right now. Who was that just now? Be I, young lady. Larry, what are you doing? Interrupting me like that? Gee, just hold on for a second. I beg. I may never accept this old man as a steel samurai fan, but I totally think he's a steel sa samaniac. What exactly is a steel samaniac, pal? I believe he means to steel steel means to say steel samurai maniac. Yeah, and trust me, I know a real fan when I see one because I'm the steel samurai. I will never acknowledge you as a steel- as a true steel samurai. Why are you getting so worked up over, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> it appears that the real steel samurai recognizes me as a fan. Yes, well, he should, for I am a fan. It's not as though I missed the entire show. It was a most amazing show filled with the spirit of the young and the young at heart. Huh, the sarcasm dripping, dripping from his long wooden nose couldn't run any thicker. Getting the name of the move wrong only proves that he didn't watch the last scene. What I really need here is something more definitive. Something that links Mr. Alba directly to the murder of Ma Mr. Manny Cochin. You know what, Gramps? You're really something else. I'm honored to receive such praise from the Steel Samurai, but what is it for? Well, I was just wondering how you found out about the early summer rain job. That move is a bit of a secret that only a small portion of the staff know about. Wait, it was a secret. Larry, wait, what did you just say? Huh? Did I say something stupid again? Did you say that the early summer rain jab was actually a secret? Well, maybe I shouldn't have said secret. It's more like we only decided on the name of the move right before the start of the show. Right before? Yeah, the stage director was going nuts because we were supposed to debut the move. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> About five minutes before the show, we threw it up on the dressing room's whiteboard. Early summer rain jab. That's kind of how we decided the name of the move. 
By that time, I'd already bent the spear, so I guess the whole thing was kind of pointless. All of you steel samurai actors are the same. The director has my complete sympathy. So basically, because we changed the move to the sushi slash, we kind of pretended that the early samurai jab didn't exist at all. I mean, it'd be bad if someone found out we'd changed the move, so we made it a secret. So basically, a gag order was issued for the publicity's sake. It almost makes the early summer rain jab sound like a lost art. Yeah, which is why I think most of the staff haven't even heard of the move. Hold those lips of yours still! What the heck, old man? I've done nothing but listen, and from what I can tell, it's all very unrelated to the case. It's also very tedious and a pointless exercise in wasting time, much like a kid's show. Mr. Alba, I believe the one who should be quiet now is you. How dare you! I suspect that you've already noticed exactly what the very severe implications of this are in this man's testimony. Ha! So now you're trying to bully me, huh? There are no implications to be read into a behind-the-scenes story of a kid's show. Don't even think about trying to slither your way out of this, Quirkus Alba. You were the one who said it yourself that the name of the move was Early Summer Rain Jab. Oh, no worries, dude. I'm like almost done with this game, so I'll either start the, the, the second investigations game tomorrow or on Friday. I hope to see you again. That name was only decided upon right before the show was about to start. So? Just what are you driving at? The name of the move you told us was never used in the show or said aloud. Now then, would you care to tell us about how you found out the name of that move? Because I can only think of one way you, you could have known. Quirker Salva, this is the only way you could have known the name of the special move. You saw it. You knew the name because you saw it. You saw it on the dressing room's whiteboard. The staff members who knew who knew were keeping it a secret. So you couldn't have simply gone up to the staff member and asked. Which means that the only other option left is that you saw it on the whiteboard. So that means that Mr. Alba was in the waiting room at some point, right? What's the big deal, sir? I don't see what it means. There is another piece of evidence that has a great deal to do with the, with the dressing room. So we can't afford to let this slide. This is related to both the dressing room and to Mr. Cochin's murder. Well, it's the... Pushcart. The pushcart that was used to move the body was right there in the dressing room. During the show, the pushcart awaited its turn to be pushed on stage in the dressing room. And it was finally pushed there, along with the iron infant, in the last scene of the show. And then, right after the show ended, it went into Alabast, along with the Steel Samurai. Which means that the only time the killer could have placed the body inside the pushcart was when the pushcart was in the dressing room backstage. So basically, the killer has to be someone who visited the dressing room during the show. Precisely. Oh, but wait! What if, and this is just a what if, what if the murder didn't take place in the dressing room? What do you mean, Kay? I have to admit, she brings up a valid possibility. During the show, the dressing room was supposed to be devoid of people. Anyone going into the private dressing room would stand out like a sore thumb. But despite that, the killer still managed to move the body with the pushcart. Correct, and it's because of the setup of the theater's dressing room. That it would be the ideal location for the murder of Manny Cochin. Quirkus Alba, during the show, you went down to the dressing room, and I want to know why. Yes. Yes, I was there. I went into the dressing room. I knew it. I'm placing you under arrest right now, pal. You got that? Arrest. Not so fast. What is it now? <laughs> Don't I deserve a chance to explain myself. Explain? What is there to explain? I believe I told you earlier that I went to the bathroom. Well, I got lost when I did. 
I wanted to ask for directions, but when I opened the dressing room door, no one was inside. And that's when I saw the name of the move on the whiteboard. You punk, you're still trying to get out of this. Do you really think you can get away at this point? Miss Wedgeworth, isn't there anything you can do to stop him? Mm -hmm. I don't have enough evidence on hand to do anything. I don't have the airtight evidence I need to put this man away for good. But if that's what I need, then perhaps... Agent Lung, I believe an investigation of the dressing room is in question is in order. It's possible that we may find new evidence there. Yeah, if Mr. G Mr. Edgeworth pokes around in there, I'm sure he'll find some new facts, pal. Ooh, and if we use Little Thief, we may even learn something from the recreation. We don't need to do any of that. What? Wolfie? How could you? I'm not saying this to be mean. It's just that we've already searched there. My men really are something else. And they found nothing. There's only one thing I can say to you, sis. And it's not... It's that they f And it's that they found nothing. That's it. I guess you're right. If they found something, they would have reported it to us. <laughs> they couldn't find anything because there was nothing there to find. And if there is no info to feed into Little Thief, then I can't do much help e Much to help either. This is the end. The murder took place in this theater, which is not protected under extraterritorial rights. And the fact that it was Mr. Elba himself to have committed the murder. If I can't pr prove both statements to be true, Mr. Elba walks away a free man. Because there's no other course of action left to us. It would appear that your hand of cards has turned out to be a bust. Now if you will excuse me, because of you people, I missed my flight. I must make haste to arrange for a new one. Who is it this time? Hold it right there, you whippersnappers! Uh -uh. There's Larry and now you! What is with that scary mobster-like scowl on your face, Edgy Boo? Don't treat me like I'm some sort of nuisance. I've been meaning to say this, but all of you keep talking about things I don't get at all. You're all leaving this lady and that's dust and I'm about to cry in. Someone has an objection. I mean... <laughs> I do thank them, though. Why did you have to speak upright at this instant? But you know what, Mr. Pooh? Cheer up. Because I'm about to give you the most wonderful thing. The most wonderful thing? From you? It's so super special that I w couldn't give it... Away to just anyone, you know. Oh, my special presence of love to my sweet Ajipu. Are you ready? Is this? It, it's. It's box of those samurai dogs, right? Yes. Oh, Ajipu, here, go on and eat one, and you'll feel as right as tr as rain. Are we three here? Oh, why did everyone get so quiet all of a sudden? Ajipu! Tell me you understand the depths of this lady's love for you. I'm not one to ho hand out snacks willy-nilly, you know. No, sir. The thought occurred to me that maybe it would be good if I... Oh, my God. Miss Redworth! Can you do anything about her? There is no power on earth that can force that woman into silence. <laughs> but I'm so sick and tired of it. All you people do is look down on me. Even this box of samurai dogs played me for a fool. I, it had a special design on its fan, like the Japanese flag, so I thought it was special. But when I ate one, it tasted just like all, like the, like all the rest. Oh, it made me so mad. I had a special box with a Hinomaru-like fan on it. I've never heard of such a piece of merchandise existing before. However, there it is. The red rising sun on this fan is filled in. It, is it possible? Could it be? Hold on, wait. Do I not have, like, a... The other one? Or did I throw that away? No, I still have it. Oh, interesting. There is no red on that. 
after the show, the samurai dogs were piled up on the dressing room floor. However, there is no such thing as a rising sun dog. This contradiction of facts between something that should not exist and yet does. And the rays from this rising sun may be just what, what we needed to point us in the right direction. Absent. The studio bigwigs basically told us to play delivery boys. We were supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy people and tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the pushcart just to move them all. I believe you understand what this means, correct? You killed Mr. Cochin at this theater and then placed his body inside the pushcart. And then, you forced the steel samurai to unwittingly move the body for you. It's time to piece the final piece of the pieces of this logic puzzle together. Yes, let's go. No matter how fragile or small the connections may be, once we found them all, the way to the truth will be revealed. No, that's not it. I'm dumb. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, we get it. It's fine. Body in the push cart. And... Samurai dogs. The killer used the push cart to transport the body. Which means that they had to remove the samurai dogs from within first. Therefore, the samurai dogs that were piled up on the dressing room floor were most likely taken out of the pushcart by the killer. None which should not exist in this box of samurai dogs with a Hinomaru on it. If this red rising sun was filled in when the killer was busy removing dogs from the pushcart, and it's proof that the murder took place in the dressing room. As long as this red substance turns out to be what I believe it to be. <laughs> Wendy Obag. I thank you. What you have given to me is truly something very special. Hey, Mr. Regworth, are you, are you sure you're feeling okay, sir? Mr. Alba, as I suspected, you killed Mr. Cochin in the dressing room. How many times must I listen to you repeat yourself? Haven't you figured it out yet? Your words are meaningless, worthless, and powerless. The only way I'm going to continue to cooperate with some definitive is with some definitive evidence. Huh. That arrogance, that self-confidence. You believe that you've erased every piece of evidence that could incriminate you. However, there remains one piece here, and it is and it is where we'll put you away for good. Huh. You're bluffing. Oh, huh. Mr. Prosecutor, sounds like you finally found them. You finally found the fangs we need to go after this guy's jugular. So tell us, what about that box of samurai dogs is going to put that old man away? The trace evidence that will bring him down. Why, it's here, of course. In this box of samurai dogs with the rising sun fan on it, and this should never have existed. So I want you all to take a good look at this red spot. It's a single drop of blood. Huh? What? Blood, you say? Agent Long, I'd like this blood analyzed post haste. I gotta admit, I'm a bit surprised. I can't believe we found blood in a place like this. Hey you, get this down to the lab pronto. Why was there bl blood on the box, that box to begin with? If you think about the flow of the crime, I think the reason will become obvious. Larry, you said that you transported the samurai dogs with the pushcart, correct? Oh, um, yeah, you have a great memory, Edgy. That pushcart was a bit too big for my son, you know what I mean? So to make sure everyone could see him, I had to pile some stuff in. I cannot believe there's still people running tests at like 2 a.m. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> the law waits for no one. <laughs> I figured the samurai dogs were there, so I used them to fill up the cart. If what Larry says is true, 
And what were the boxes doing on the floor? I see. The killer took them out in order to place the body in the pushcart. Exactly. And that is when I believe the victim's blood found its way onto that box. But when my men investigated that room, not a single box of samurai dogs was in there. Because embassy staff members had already confiscated them. Yes, no doubt they hide the evidence of the murder. It's a good thing Miss Olbag managed to steal that one box before they got to them, huh? Looks like Miss Olbag also managed to put this great thief to shame. What a scandalous way of putting that! I didn't steal, I received it from myself! Quirgus Alba, I'd say this was one very fatal oversight on your part. <laughs> I'm sorry to rain on your little love fest, however... How can he be so self-confident in a no-win situation for him like this? God, he just fucking does not give up, does he? I mean, I'm almost there. Uh... Even if that blood turns out to belong to Mr. Cochin, then what? <laughs> so, Miss Redworth, it sounds like he's not ready to call it quits yet, huh? The sole piece of evidence that was left at the, at the scene of the crime. That alone has shed light on a new fact. At the very least, we now have proof that the murder occurred in the dressing room. Man, you say that like it means something. Huh? Excuse me, sirs. Report. What were the results for the analysis? Sir, the, uh, the analysis came back and confirmed that the red substance is blood. I knew it. With this quirk is Alba. Mr. Edgeworth, I wonder if you might humor my question. Your question? The one from before, or have you forgotten? Even if that is Mr. Cochin's blood, what difference would that make? Like we already told you, it proves that the crime scene was a dressing room. But it doesn't prove that I am your killer, does it? <laughs> that's... That's... <laughs> he has a very good point. The blood on that box doesn't prove that Mr. Alba is the killer. Then, this evidence, it's meaningless. Can't be. You were so close, sir. <laughs> I want to smack that smug look off of his face. Come on, there's got to be something we can do. I finally found a solid piece of evidence. There must be something I can expose with it. Ah! I can't th I can't think of a single thing. <laughs> now if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Who was that? It's too late. I won't allow anyone to stop me now. It wasn't me, pal. It wasn't me this time either. It wasn't me either. It was me. Why did you? Um, because I haven't finished reporting everything to you yet, sir. There's more. What? Hurry up and spit it out. Y yes, sir. That blood I mentioned. It's not the same blood type as the victim's blood. What? No. What? What? What do you mean it's not the same type? You mean it's not the victim's blood? If it isn't his, then who the hell's is it? I don't know, sir. All I know is that it's not the same blood type as the victim's, sir. What should we do now, Miss Redworth? I have no idea what, what's what anymore. Neither do I. <laughs> My, what an amusing turn of events. That blood drop proved something to be true, all right. Namely, my words. And which one of your words would that be? The ones where I said that your words are meaningless, worthless, and powerless. That blood has nothing to do with the murder investigation whatsoever. Need I remind you that the blood got onto that box long before I, it entered my embassy? Wh what sort of nonsense? Yeah, it's blood, pal. There's no way it's not related to the murder. So you would like to believe. But 
What if someone preparing the samurai dogs had a small nosebleed? What then? Guess that's possible. Damn it. Have we been wasting our time on a ra red herring? Lang just, re Lang just really said, damn. He just really said, damn it. Like. The blood doesn't belong to anyone connected to the case. That should be a that should be clue enough. Rokazalba, you bastard! Silence! Don't you ever address me with such a filthy word again. I've wasted enough time here with you. And you have your answers. Now let me through. No, but this one isn't that age rated though. I believe this is only like 12 plus. Alba, it doesn't matter where you run off to. You'll never escape me. Someday, I'll have the satisfaction of sinking my fangs into you. You'll see. And all of Interpol will, see be will be behind me, working to see you. See to it that it th that, that day comes. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you know what your words sound like to me? They sound like the whinings of a pathetic loser of a mutt. Oh. Is this really the extent of all, of all that we can do? Sorry, hit the wrong button. Is the blood really from someone completely unrelated to the case? Or is there another possibility? Someone else other than the victim? Just when I thought I had him backed into a corner, it is I who has been backed into one. In a situation like this, what would that man do? <laughs> What would he, who can turn any desperate situation around, do? Turn it around. That's it. I must turn my way of thinking around. It's not whose blood is this. It's whose blood could get onto the box like this. And if we think about it that way... Whom's that, G? Who, who, who are you? Who, do, who, who are you talking about? If the blood got onto the box when the body was being placed in, into the pushcart... And the owner of said blood must have been in the dressing room at the time. And there is only one person that could be. Well, I must praise you for trying so hard. It's because of you, Kates, that I was removed from center stage. I will be forced to live out the rest of my life in the shadows, unfortunately. But it's not a total loss. As the underworld will allow me more freedom than you'll ever know. Freedom like what the raven feels as it flies through the dark night sky. You can't lay a finger on me. Not now. Or ever. The arm of the law is powerless before me. Objection. Hmm. Powerless, is it? I wouldn't be so sure about that if I were you. What do you mean? Allow me to describe you in one word. Pitiful. Pitiful. How so? Quirkus Alba. Your wings were clipped long ago. And for someone who is trying to fly away on them without noticing that fact. Pitiful is the perfect word to describe you. Ha! Mere words. What do you mean by his wings are clipped, Miss, Ed Miss Edgeworth? Just what you think it means, Kay. We had already caught him in our trap a while back. With an incredibly powerful definitive piece of evidence. Hey, hey, Earth to Mr. Prosecutor. Care to speak in English? What are you talking about? What piece of evidence? The piece I speak of is, of course, this drop of blood. But we know it's not from the victim. I don't see how it remains re relevant to this case at all. Miss Von Karma, I believe that it's exactly why it's very important. I believe that is exactly why it's very important to the case. And the part that is the most important is the fact that it's not the victim's blood. You're looking a little pale. Good. Then I believe you are already aware of what I mean. You know who the blood belongs to. Hmm. Of course I do. The piece, this piece of evidence is the irrefutable proof that will stop the killer in his tracks. The blood that soiled this box of samurai dogs belongs to this person. The blood of the rising sun on this box belongs to you, Quirkus Alba. What? Why is his blood on the box of samurai dogs? 
He's not even a victim. The blood fell onto the box when Mr. Cochin's body was being loaded into the pushcart. At that time, the only two people in the dressing room were the victim and his killer. That's what you mean. The blood doesn't belong to the victim. Then there is only one other person it could belong to. Yes, and that person is the murderer himself. That's the only logical conclusion. And Mr. Cochin was the one who was stabbed, sir. Why would Mr. Alba have been the one who was bleeding? And what if during the murder, Mr. Cochin had fought back? You mean if, you mean if before Mr. Alba could kill him, Mr. Cochin managed to wound Mr. Alba? Yes, and I believe we have a piece of evidence that, prove, that proves that he was bleeding then. And what is the piece of evidence that shows that Mr. Alba was probably bleeding at the time? The wound. Mr. Alba, you bear on your body a great wound. That was from when Damascus II attacked me with a pair of scissors. And that happened way after he was in the dressing room. Ah, but is that what really happened? You can manufacture a weapon by smearing blood on it, so I can't just accept that as fact. Shall we try 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 a test, Mr. Alba, and see if the shape of your wound matches the scissors? Objection. Really are something else, Mr. Redworth. You don't let a single thing slip you by, no matter how insignificant the possibility. Huh. You want to talk, Mr. Alba. You've managed to give the law the slip for ten years as the smuggling ring's leader. No matter the danger, you can hide every last ounce of fear and anxiety from everyone. You truly are a one-of-a-kind criminal. <laughs> I am the master of my fear. However, to think that a person such as you could miss such a large thing. I believe I've overlooked something. You said that my wound was caused by Mr. Cochin. And that it was caused here in one of the theater's dressing, room, dressing rooms, right? Yes, that is correct. I'd like to point out that it's simply not possible. My wound is a stab wound, and one that could only have come from a blade. I wonder where you will propose that such a weapon came from. This theater was packed with security guards. It would have been impossible for anyone to come into this area with a weapon of any sort. Just as Mr. Albert was able to bring in the alabastian knife and a bouquet. There must have been some other way to sneak in a weapon of some sort. Ah, but as long as you can't prove what that other way is, all your all your talk about Mr. Coach and stopping me is pure nonsense. So if that other way does exist, you'd better hurry and tell me now. With pleasure. Wait, what? This piece of evidence shows us how Mr. Cochin brought a weapon into this, the into this theater. The Key Beach! Among law enforcement, this piece is known as the Atagarasu's Key. The Key! It's the key that my father stole from here seven years ago. And it is very unique in that it is both a key and a knife. Meaning that under the guise of a key, it could have easily been brought into the theater. <laughs> You couldn't dispose of the knife that stabbed you. Therefore, you wiped off the blood and placed it back in Mr. Cochin's pocket. After all, the key itself opens the safe in his office. And inside that safe, there was a document about Mr. about Kodopian paper signed by Mr. Cochin. In order to make it look like Mr. Cochin died as the leader of the smuggling ring, you had to make it so that the police were the ones who opened that office safe. Hmm. All that hard work to save yourself only served to destroy you in the end. Shall we try matching this knife's blade with your wound, Mr. S Mr. Quirkus Alba? And that is what some may call the coup de gras. Coup de gras. Impossible! You, you can't take me down, swine, all of you, especially Manny Cochin. This is all because of that man's betrayal. He sought to steal control of the smuggling ring from me by removing me as ambassador. Which is why he deserved to die while bearing the guilt of for all of my crimes for me. That's why I sent out the Vietagarasu's card and how this incident was born. Manny was supposed to be the smuggling ring's leader who was killed by the Vietagarasu. But I had yet another reason. Yet another story that was supposed to play out. Manny's death was supposed to bring everything to a close. 
And I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling pos prosecutors. <laughs> Mr. Balba, I'm afraid there is one more question I forgot to ask. In this country, Sir Alabast, in which country's court would you like to face first? Either way, it's game over for you. <laughs> what is this Scooby Doo? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was way too funny. Defendant lobby number two. Interesting. Funny. Who? Oh, this is it. The big day. It's Mr. Alba's trial today. And next week, he's scheduled to stand trial in his own country of Alabas. Francisca is heading that one. I suspect she'll be serving a full course of whiplashes at it. I'm going to face Miss Von Karma in court right after facing you, sir. Oh, I don't even want to think of what that would be like. I caught a glimpse of Mr. Alba as he was being escorted to into the courthouse. And boy, he looked about as glum as I do the day before I get my monthly paycheck. You know, I have been thinking. That flight attendant and even Mr. Portsman were all Mr. Alba's secret agents. Correct. That smuggling ring was a common thread between all of the incidents. Camille Meal was to provide support during smuggling ops, using her job as an attendant. And Mr. Portsman was to manipulate trials related to the ring to end in their favor. Oh, uh, I fly airlines and even the prosecutor's office. No one was safe from the smuggling ring, huh, sir? I suspect there are even more members of this ring spread throughout the world. Yeah, it sounds like such a big op that I can't even begin to imagine what it's like. Hmm? What is it, detective? Oh, nothing. It's just... Oh, come to think of it. Mr. Ernest Amano's trial is also scheduled for later today, sir. I am aware of that. Mr. Amano has been working with the smuggling ring now for over ten years. He used the Amano group's various connections worldwide to assist the ring. But all of that has come to an end as his conglomerate is now undergoing harsh scrutiny. I owe Mr. Amano a debt of gratitude, but he must pay his debt to society. Well, with the arrest of both Mr. Alba and Mr. Amano, I guess that about wraps up the KG-8 incident as well, huh? I suppose so. The real killer in the KG-8 incident ten years ago was Manny Kocha. And seven years ago, the killer in the second KG-8 incident was Mac Rell. Those two facts are the unshakable truth. However, it seems that a lot of effort was put into hiding these and other truths from us. And I will expose it all at the trials today. You're solving cases left and right today, aren't you, sir? CCU and dead man. Perhaps now these two brave souls who tried to make the truth known can rest in peace. And by the way, I received some gifts from Ambassador Palaino. Shrimp, crab, beef. I don't need any of these. So I'm giving them to you. What? Seriously, sir? But wait, actually, I don't think I want them anymore. The way you're holding them. Don't tell me they're just coupons, sir. Detective Gumshoe, have you not read the paper recently? Ever since the two countries became Kodopia again, its economy has changed. Really? And it seems that Ambassador Palaino has reaped a few benefits of his own from it. He has been announced as the official ambassador of the newly reu reunified Kodopia. But what a pity, who this? Even though... It's a female voice, I know that for a fact. Even though every item he sent is treasure, you don't seem all that interested. Well, if you don't, you don't want them, I can give them to my lovely assistant, Kay. Who Wait, that's not what I said. So, um, Mr. Bedgeworth, please let me have them, sir. Actually, come to think of it, where is Kay? How come she's still not here? Oh, it was Kay trying to, like, make an, uh, an impression of Edgeworth, I see. Hey, you've got to be more alert than that. I can't believe you didn't notice. I was even mimicking Mr. Edgeworth's voice for a bit. I totally didn't notice you or realize that voice was you. 
Huang Shi says, ferocious love blooms with each new spring. Agent Long, a pleasant surprise to see you here. It's been a long time since I set foot in the courthouse, and I wasn't going to miss watching the guy who screwed up my country finally get what's coming to him. Well then, something else. I want to see you in action in court. Sir? <laughs> Is that so, Agent Long? You flushed out all of the counterfeit bills, so Zheng Fa is finally at peace again. And it's all thanks to you, so I just want to say thanks. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day old Wolfie says thanks to Miss Regworth. And I should be the one thanking you, Agent Long. If you hadn't negated Mr. Alba's extraterritorial rights, I would not have been able to bring him to trial. I believe the victory belongs to the both of us in this case. Tch. Shared victory, huh? Look, don't get me wrong. I'll still never forgive you, prosecutors. And I have zero interest in that truth thing you talk about in court. I've always done things my own way, and that's not about to change. You got that? Huh, I see. Well, I believe you should follow your own creed when you do your job. Yeah, and if there's ever someone your pr precious truth can't catch, feel free to sit around and cry about it all you want. But as for me... I'm gonna get that person no matter what. <laughs> Alright. It's about time for the trial to start. I will see you later. We'll be watching a performance from the gallery. I'm looking forward to this. I prepared a whole ton of ticker tape for today's victory, sir. I'll help throw some around when Mr. Edgeworth wins. Oh my god, it's a confetti! <laughs> Hope you got enough, because I'm gonna go call my men up as well. A modest amount of ticker tape goes a long way. The scene shifts to the courtroom, and the final act of this long tale begins. The legend of the great thief Yatagarasu is a story of those who chose to dedicate their lives to pursue the truth. Prosecutors are those who, those who seek a guilty verdict for the defendants they meet, and to that end, you have no choice but to win by any means necessary. That creed was forced on me since I was very young. However, I no longer think that is all we prosecutors are. And that is because... Even though I've only been away from the courtroom for a short time, I feel as though it's been a lifetime since I've set foot in one. And today, more than any other day, I feel the fight within me rising. Oh, hell yeah. That's it! We finished the game! I am really in Mr. Edgeworth's steps for the other day. Thanks to him, I'm still free to serve in the friendly blue skies. I'll so about my suitcases. I've been selling them on the internet, and they've become a real sensation. Thanks to the praise and the art, the art world has lavished on my work as being truly postmodern. The airline has chosen me to design their new line of iFly jumbo jets. Just think, someday you will be able to take a ride in my pink-walled, yellow-seated jet. I don't remember the voice I gave him. If yeah, of course. Edgeworth, how that rudeness of a rude man. Hmm, because of him, my time and money is wasted. But more importantly, -er, my have received a most fantastic treasure re recently, the primitive statue of the Principality of Codopia. It weighs a bit light in my hands, but the Ambassador Palaino was most generous. We finally caught Agent Hicks killer, and I was able to witness Mr. Alba's teary eyes. It feels good to finally bring everything to a close. I received another AF offer from Interpol to work another case in cooperation with them. However, the Cordopian courts await. Cordopia's air is supposed to be very fresh, so my whip sh should find new vigor there.
Ghost's little patrolman has been fired as of today, sir. I thought I was safe since the f since we found the gun I had dropped. But I hadn't noticed that I had dropped my police badge, too. I guess what really broke the camel's back was that I couldn't find my badge. A little life was suddenly tripped into a dark black hole, sir. I think I'll go to the courthouse and file a complaint with Ruffles Man. Ruffles? Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Ruffles Man. I was actually hoping to talk with Miss Ratchworth a bit more than I did. But I've got to get going and return to Europe. I've still got a long way to go and a lot of stuff to study there. Next time I help Miss Ratchworth on a case, I'm going to do it as a real forensic scientist. I'm sure he's going to need all the help I can give him, scientifically. Because the kidnapping was staged, I was let off easy. But I won't be going outside much anytime soon, but that's really okay. The only person I've ever trapped in is this cage of love. The guard down at the detention center. Well, when he's on guard duty. He has such a cold look in his eyes, just like that prosecutor. Oh my god. Ah, stop it, Lauren! How will you ever learn to stop being a prisoner of love? <laughs> oh my god. It appears there are all sorts of drama that takes place outside of the courtroom. Since we judges are here day in and day out, I've only heard a few rumors, but... Apparently, Mr. Edgeworth teamed up with a thief and became a detective. Maybe I should team up with a bailiff and try to become a lawyer or something. <laughs> Why would I love that game, honestly? <laughs> it would just be a mess. I barely escaped death yet again! Yeah, but boy, but we're lucky to have Miss Regworth help us out, huh? Yeah, but because I lost the key, I got fired from my security guard job. Don't let it get you down, Maggie. You still got me. You're right, sir. I won't be sad. I'm going to pick myself up and get through this. I wonder what my next job should be. Oh, this is actually kind of fun! Come to Codopia for your summer vacation. We have coupons aplenty. Right now, our embassy is proud to present our Let's Investigate a Murder Show. Although recreating that particular case has created a few small fires of its own, and then we had a few problems with the fire marshals, but the next event will be great. It will be an attraction entitled Capture the Atagarasu. Of course, I hope to in this case help in creating our latest attraction. That's kind of cute. I like that. believe that Mindy ditched me and went to Japan! At least he didn't go to France, I guess, but it's okay, because that's how I met Miharu. We're planning to go to Paris soon and start a business. We're going to sell blue ocean dogs. They'll sell like hotcake hot dogs for, for sure. A blue hot dog in a blue bun, I guarantee it'll turn your tongue and your face blue. I know I'm not really the type to work a lot, or at all really, but... So I noticed that I really haven't seen that guy in the blue suit at all recently. I wonder what's up. Well, nice on me meat. I'm gonna make him eat one of my dogs. 
the guy in the blue suit. They really fucking refer to him as that. I wonder actually why they don't mention his name in these games at all. I'd not like to eat a blue hot dog. Today I gave testimony in court today. As a member of the Atagarasu. Yo, Mr. Bad, you look well as all things considered. By the way, have you noticed that elements within the ring have begun moving? They're probably fighting over who, sh who should succeed, over who should be the next boss. Although, to be honest, I wish I could forget it I'd ever heard of that smuggling ring. Longji says, thoroughly bites the poisonous snake from head to tail. No one runs afoul in the law and escapes this wolf's fangs. I'll get you all yet. Ah, youth. When did I become so old, I wonder? I've begun noticing the gray hairs in my beard more. I'm thinking of retiring my mirror. Your entire color scheme is gray! <laughs> Oh, old bag, I see. I was a pink princess and a pink badger while in the span of two days. Talk about busy. But it's alright, because I got a letter from my beloved Ejipu. What did it say? Please take care of your hip. And when you wish to speak, first take off your headpiece. What does he mean by that last statement? It's not like I enjoy being under my headpiece every time I see him. Okay. Good for you, Olbag. I don't believe we will see any more of Olbag from now on. I can't recall, anyways. Can I finally inspect the damn chess table, please? <laughs> well, I feel so much better now that the trial's over. And as always, your legal prowess was top notch, sir. Yeah, nothing beat the look on Mr. Alba's face when you revealed the ring's secrets. I was amazed. You were like a totally different person when you step into the courtroom. Sir Edgeworth is always ten times fiercer in court. Based on the information Mr. Alba offered up, they've begun large-scale operations. To clean up the rest of the ring, which I'm happy to leave to Francisca and Agent Lung. So what are your plans now, okay? Huh? Oh, well, we've taken care of the creep who killed my father, so I'm not sure. Hey, I know! Maybe I'll just keep on being Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Are you still trying to steal my job, pal? Just kidding, just kidding. I can't steal something so important to you, Gummy. Huh, <sighs> that's a relief. Okay. Yes? Even after all that's happened, are you still planning to become a great thief? Of course. But I don't want to tarnish the legend of the noble Yatagarasu. So I'm going to hold off on doing anything until I can... Until I make a tight three-person team of my own. A three-person team? A three-person team of young beauties, the same age as me, if possible. With those criteria, I highly doubt you'll find the two other people you need. My father chose to fight for the truth. I think that's what was so noble about him. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, the only things I will ever steal are the truths that have been hidden away. I'm going to work extra hard to make the world to make a world where the Atagarasu isn't needed. Hmm. Let's both strive for such a future. Well, I guess it's time for me to get going. I see. Okay, keep your chin up and stay strong, okay? And don't be a stranger. Don't worry, I'll be back. I'll be sure to break the lock on the window and sneak in. If you could, I'd appreciate it if you came in through the building's front door. It's okay, Mr. Edgeworth. The lock on my window at home has been broken for forever. One last thing before I go. Let's take a group picture. Just the three of us. Yeah, a commemorative photo. Every big case has to end with one. No. Hey, why not? Don't tell me you're a camera shy, Mr. Edgeworth. Of course not, Detective. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm taking the picture now. Hey, come back here! Sir Edgeworth, you can't run away from this, sir. Ah, uh, hey! Detective Gumshoe! So stop that! 
I can't be seen doing that. Okay, I'm totally taking it now. Say cheese! And thus, the long tale of the KG-8 incident came to a close. It saw the demise of a smuggling ring and the birth of a little great thief. But there is little, little time to rest and relax. For I am eager to tackle the investigation into a new case. The reason for my eagerness is... My want to pursue the truth. And... My want to believe in the strength of those who use the power of the law for good. As someone who has chosen to live my life as a prosecutor. That is my new creed. I'm gonna cry, like... Oh my god, that's it! That's it! Game over! Well, not game over, but like, the game is over. That's what I mean. So, uh, next up... We have- wait, why am I doing that? I'm dumb. I can literally just do this. Next up... We have this. Which is completely fan-translated. Prosecutor's Path. Interesting. <laughs> You're crying. <laughs> oh my god. I am excited. I am very excited. Looks fancy. Ooh. I just accidentally closed like everything. Well, I didn't close anything, but... Oh my god. Prosecutor's Path. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I am glad that I just finished it tonight. Even though I sat here for 11 hours. <laughs> It was worth it. It's like 5 30 a.m. though. <laughs> God, look at my fucking eyes. I'm so tired. <laughs> 11 hours. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did go by quite quickly. Like, uh, it did, I didn't feel like it took as long as it did, like, yesterday. I felt like that took forever. I also had to, like, take a break in that, though. So, I, like, that might be a part of it. Also, I was just, like, really fucking tired. Like, I was fucking... My eyes were, like, in pain at some point, And I just kind of, like, sat there like this. <laughs> but it's okay. If I get, like, way too uncomfortable, of course, I will just, like, be like, uh... I think I'm gonna stop it. But I was so into this case and I just wanted to get to the end and I was like, we're so close. I mean, I, I fell asleep kind of tired, tired, a late too. That's what I meant. Uh, let me see, actually, what is, how long is the first next cage? Cage? Case. Apparently I'm st still not fucking awake. <laughs> Gekten Kenji. Okay, it's only two two chapters. And then is it the inherited or the imprisoned? <sighs> imprisoned. Okay, that one's a bit longer. Mm, I might be able to do all of those, actually. No, th the first cases are, are usually like two episodes.
<sighs> yeah. They're all gonna be pretty connected. But I'm like, I should I do that tomorrow or should I do it on Friday? Because I kind of want to just like get through this game like as fast as possible. You know, like considering, not that I have like a lot of time, but well, I do have time. But like considering I'm not really streaming on the other channel as much nowadays because I have this annoying boss to deal with. And I'm not really like busy with like other streams that I have to do and I really should stream on there again soon but it's fine my sister that's not possible <laughs> I don't think that's possible because I need like one uh, two three four Five days, maybe? But I will definitely finish it, like, next week. <laughs> and just finishing it in five days is, is it, it, it's, it's really fast, in general. I would need to split, like, the last... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's longer, but, like, the third... The third case or the third episode is like nine parts <laughs> nine chapters so i'm gonna have to split that like into two episodes alone maybe start the like the the fourth case i'm not or episode i mean i don't know and get like halfway in that but that would be a really long one wait actually if i do if i start this again tomorrow and i plan for a really long one on Friday. I feel like that's probably like the best way to do this. Then I can like get through like as much as possible, you know? I'm not gonna be able to sit through the entire thing, but I can like go through it like until I get tired or maybe I'll go through the entire thing. Who fucking knows? I have no idea, but yeah. Now we're on to like some more like recent uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like experience for me, I guess. Because this game is like the most recent one I played. Well Actually it's Apollo Justice, but I'm still not finished with that. And I'm like, when I'm like almost finished with this, I might just fucking leave Apollo Justice alone so that I don't remember the last case at the very least. <laughs> <clears throat> Why am I sitting here with your phones? I don't need them. I mean, it's gonna be a bit quiet for me, but I don't care about that. Oh my god. 11 hours! It's gonna take forever to upload it to YouTube, but it's fine. Huh. It's gonna be amazing. You know what? I fuck it. I'm gonna start this tomorrow. And I don't care. I'm starting it tomorrow. I haven't heard anything about any plans I have either. So. Yeah. I should go to bed and uh, get up in the morning and. Uh, yeah! We're. Oh, from what I remember, in the first case, we actually get to meet uh, um, someone we have already met in the previous AC30 game. So, yet more uh, familiar faces to come. First meeting starts at 9. AM?
<sighs> Damn. I could never. I have like, I have like an alarm on my phone to get up at like 10 and then another one at 11. Which is when I'm supposed to take my meds, but God knows I fucking never get up that early. <laughs> there are like like some days that I I may get up that early. But yeah. Oh my God. I'm like I'm so torn because I like I want to like spend so much um, a lot more time on this but at the same time I just want to like get through it <laughs> not because I'm like oh I'm so done with it but like I'm just like so into it I would just want to like get to like certain parts <laughs> of certain games also because when I get to like a certain part I can like start sharing certain videos with you <laughs> I want you to feel the pain I felt with Apollo Justice I have never felt so betrayed. Fuck. That's all I'm gonna say. I made like fucking Instagram videos where I was just crying. Like five of them. There were like five parts where I was just crying. I was just... <laughs> and that was only in the uh, second... Yeah, that was only in like the second episode of the game too. So... <laughs> I can say that there is a large gap between, like, even even the last uh, Investigations game and Apollo Justice. There are, like, a seven-year gap or something. Something like that. So things happen. I don't believe Edgeworth is in Apollo Justice. But there will be a new prosecutor with good shit. <laughs> Actually, we already kind of had a hint to him in the first Investigations game. We're gonna find out, but that's not yet. I don't know why I'm just like hyping up until Apollo Justice for some reason. Yeah, don't, don't Google any more stuff. <laughs> if you have any questions, go through me, you know. Anyways, that was the longest stream in a while, I think. The no spoiler round. <laughs> yeah. Um, have I? I mean, I believe I've had a... Why? Why do I open my fucking YouTube and the first thing I see is Miles Edgeworth SNM edit? <laughs> Oh my god. Fuck out of here. Okay, anyways. Um Let's see. Well, I have some uh, No, I don't believe I've had an Oh, actually, there's one that was almost 12 hours. So, this is only the second longest stream I've had with Ace Attorney. Me, you too. 
I don't know. I probably started it earlier, so that's probably why, but yeah. Also, you really fell asleep. <laughs> that's kind of cute. I'm not gonna lie. It's okay. You could have just let me know if you were so tired. <laughs> I am interested in this as an edit now, but I'm also scared. <laughs> Listen, I just I just love cursed stuff. That's really all there is to it. It's not any deeper than that. Wait, Apollo Justice is real height. Okay, cool. <laughs> Aw. Okay. Anyways, we should both get to bed now, so at least you can get like three hours of sleep and I guess it's something. And uh yeah. I obviously hope to see you again tomorrow. Or I guess later today, that would actually be. We can get this show on the road. Sleep well, my guy. <laughs> Good night. See you later.